So we, we need to cut it down. We need to kind of haul it out of here. So we'll cut it into some. Hey! hey! Good morning, hello. Hey. Rafe, what'd you call it? So it was a full spring, and now it's idiot's winter. Idiot's winter. It's upon us. Idiot's winter's here. Yeah. Back to the 30s. Ah, 28 degrees, huh? Mm-hmm. Wind, uh, wind chill of 15. And we're back to reality, folks. Yep. This is the way it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. I was having such a great afternoon yesterday, like painting in my garage and good podcast on. Oh, yeah, good podcast. You know, tank huh? top. Yeah. Woke up this morning. Winter tornadoes. Okay, Yeah, I cool. was uh, running errands. I had a sweatshirt on. I went, ooh, hot. Hot. Yeah. There was snow on the car this morning. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Nice little dusting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not and, by me. And some people's trash all down the street. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I almost had a tarp in my backyard. It, was a, it almost made it over the fence. Yeah, yesterday was a tire trampoline down day. <laughs> yeah. Nafton. Dang. Those things will uh, take flight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they always shift yards and over. Yeah, them. those things will take flight easily. <laughs> you know, a gust of wind underneath those things. And yeah, what do you have to? Gone. Three? You got three now, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. All of a sudden, you hear and the witch music from Wizard of Oz. Trampoline City. Yeah, there's a fellow named Steve that lives in Overland, and he showed me his new trampoline, so that's probably in someone nice. else's yard already. It's probably in Breckenridge Steve Hills yeah. at this point. And happy birthday, by the way. Uh, yeah, you ever see those videos of those poor kids that get, uh, they're in the bounce houses, and they don't tether those things down right? Yeah. The kids have died. We hey. played a show in, um, it was basically like Point Fest in, in Washington, D.C., and they had, uh, I think the point actually has one of these things too. It's like a, it's like a big inflatable wall that you post like the schedule on. You know what oh, I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that thing cut loose <laughs> in, in a in a windstorm and destroyed a whole bunch of people. And somebody got seriously hurt. Oh, really? It pinned them up against the barricade or like a fence that was next to oh, one of the stages. Man. Dude, it was serious, serious business because uh, just a wind gust came, snapped the cables, and yeah, I'll put it's a couple, a weapon. Uh, put a couple plastic stakes in the ground. It's fine. Yeah, Everything's it's fine. It'll it's fine. It'll hold. It'll hold. You see the way I angled the stakes so it's not mm-hmm. so the wind can't rip them out. <sighs> if you're a camper, you know you got to put the stakes in kind of at an angle. You're right. You're right. It's this way the wind don't get them. But a couple <laughs> plastic stakes, we're fine. The bounce house would be, hey, kids, come on, have a good time. Yeah, it's a good time. Bounce houses by design are just an injury waiting to happen. What? No. Oh, how many times have you been in a bounce house as a kid and just knocked heads with First somebody? First of all, <laughs> you're right, but an injury waiting to happen equals fun. So, like, what are you talking about? You, you're going you're to take it away because it's a, it's an injury waiting to happen? Everything you do that's no, fun I as know. a kid I, is an I'm injury waiting saying. to happen. Look yeah. at the, I'm, I'm This bicycle saying. is an injury waiting to happen. Yep. I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying. Nah, dude, those are Like, great. when you slam your head into another kid's head, mm-hmm. oh, that feeling. Yeah, but, dude, I'm telling you. When your brain rattles. So now they got, now they I got. I can taste metal. Now they got the trampoline parks. They got sl- <laughs> Slide City or whatever, and they got all these different things. Dude, if we had just had a bounce house as a kid, like, that came just, like, what, seven years too late for us? They were around when we were little. Well, not in my neighborhood. No, you'd have I to go to one. you'd have to go to like a, a town fair or something like that. No, I, I like yeah. okay, so like these these like play type of places that have the bouncy houses and oh, slides. Yeah, those. The only thing what, I remember, Joe's? yeah, yeah. The the first one that I ever remember, at least in this area that I had ever heard of, was Discover was Discovery Zone. Is yeah, that Discovery Zones ruled. But I yeah, but like they had slides and stuff. But they, they came were... in and I was too old. It was like I was just too old, and they're like, oh, where was this five mm. years ago? And then everything just got progressively cooler after that. Mm-hmm. Well, they got the uh, the trampoline parks now. I know, and they're incredible. My what son's was it, got Bounce them. You? What was it? There's a bunch of them. There's Bounce You. What was the one that just flying closed? Flying Spider. There's a... Uh, um, the one that closed in the valley. That's now the, the slide place. That used to be called Sky Zone. Sky Zone. Now it's called yeah, Slick Sky City. Zone. But Sky Zone's still around, I, th- I think. I think that's a franchise. Most of them are franchises. Ray, what was the last time Calcet. you jumped up and down on a trampoline? Oh, Recently? Like the Man Show. Yeah. yeah, when I was on The Man Show. When I was a juggie. <laughs> In the late 90s. Times Different were times. Weird. Jimmy Kimmel and I. Uh, I don't know. I think I probably, I think I was giving some good, like, double bounce ups to some kids at a party. Oh, yeah? Not too long ago. Yeah, super bounce. But I was more the, yeah, I was doing the super bounce. I wasn't getting too airborne. Yeah, you were providing the super bounce. Yeah. For the uh, for the tiny kids. My cousins did gymnastics growing up and had one of them uh, 
not the, not the round trampolines in the backyard, but like a Olympic, like the rectangular ones. Oh, really? The ones they use wow. really. with like the target in the middle, like yeah. the uh, yeah, they were the good in the middle. And then I'd go to their house and I'd try to like jump on it with them, and they were like they were going like you know double somersault, fifteen feet. You get double bounced on one of those, dude. <laughs> You're a cosmonaut. <laughs> it's over. Yeah, you, hit, you hit lower orbit. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Things are awesome. I got launched off that thing. We're lucky we didn't get hurt because I got launched like off of it because I didn't know how to. They knew how to like jump and like center themselves and use their center of gravity. Yeah. I was just like, they do years it old. properly. Yeah, I was just like, he's ragdolling. I was ragdolling through the air. Yeah, as, they've as, got as, super trampolines at uh, at uh, Flying Spider. Well, listen, as a forty something. You know, you're like, oh, cool, trampolines. I think the last time my kids went to Sky Zone. All right, I'll hop in there with you. Yeah. Oh. And you go, oh, my knees. Yeah, your knees. And, knees. and in four minutes, you're exhausted and you're yeah. sweating. I'm sweating. I'm exhausted. I go, all right, I'm done. I wasted an hour. Dude, it's so fun, though. The dodgeball games, those are fun. Uh, I was against doctor's orders. I was teaching my son how to do a backflip um, eh, probably, eh, I guess, about a, about a year ago. But he was going every other day. We were going, we got a membership. Well, it's good to be small and... Youthful, they got light. The, they got those super trampolines, though, where you can jump off the walls. So they just, you know, they, they go up, they jump yeah. off the wall, they land on their back, they backflip, they go over to this one, and back up on the wall. Dude, it's incredible. That'd be fun. My, uh, my buddy growing up had a trampoline, and it was, it was a bigger one. Mm -hmm. And all the springs were rusted. Yep. And there were no, <laughs> there were no cages. There, there was no, you know, now you buy a trampoline. There's no cover on all the springs. All these wuss little kids. Yeah. Yeah. Have the uh, have the netting around so you don't jump out. Oh no! No, no, oh, man. That's there was inherent. Fun. There was inherent danger. Yeah, Johnny Venus had a tree that we used to climb climb to the top. Now there was an apartment complex behind his house that was three stories tall, and at the top of this tree you could see over that. So you're over three stories up on this in this in this tree, under the tree a trampoline. You mm -hmm. know, just in case. Right. Just in case one of us falls, we'll yeah. land on the trampoline. It's all good. Love it. No, right. and that's right. I said wuss little kids. <laughs> Somebody's like, well, why don't you get a trampoline for your backyard for your kids? You see, here's why I won't. <laughs> Let's hear this. Here's why I will not. Does it, does, it's is called it, fun. It is, it, is it one it's word that starts? No, it's because all the kids will come it's over and a, it's a liability. It's not, yes. Yeah, is, there, is, is it one word that starts with an I? It starts with an L. Insurance. Lawsuit. Yeah, oh, lawsuit. Insurance. <laughs> lawsuit. I thought it was insurance. Yep. You know, my kids, you know, break a leg, fall out, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, you learn that lesson in your 20s when you... Or whenever you get your first home and the insurance agent says, do you have a trampoline in your backyard? And you're like, why do you need to know that? Like, oh, we need to know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, go, oh. We, yeah, we were doing our homeowner's policy with business. Tracy Bibb. Do you have a trampoline? No. <laughs> Don't get one. Right. Okay, done. Done. Yeah, serious business. You ever, you ever let your dogs get up on the trampoline? Like no. when you were kids? <clears throat> They love it. My cousin's yeah. dog would always get up there with us, and we'd be bounce like we'd be bouncing the dog with us. I'd be you know? afraid of breaking the dog's legs. Oh my god, he loved it. It was a golden <laughs> retriever. Yeah, our dogs loved super getting bouncing. up there too. They would just jump up there on their own and do the and they just would jump by themselves. Attack you, and then you're jumping yeah. on the dog. No, nah, I was always afraid of like the dogs, like you know, hurting themselves. Sure. Yeah. It's not double I care dogs. more about the dogs than the neighbor kids, honestly. I get it. Yeah, we played some great games. That uh, popcorn game, you know, when you have to ball up and, oh, yeah. and everybody's trying oh, to bounce you around. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Whoever goes down to be the colonel, you, you basically just like, I hope you wanted your oh, nose to look different when oh, you got Oh, that's up. fun. No, I'm worried about little, uh, you know, little Thatcher up the street coming down. Right. Breaking his arm. Next thing you know, it's on me. It was at it was on my trampoline at my house. We would have never sued back in the nineties. Like if I would have gotten hurt, no lawsuit. Yeah. Just It'd be like I you dummy, like that's on you. You know? What happened to that? When did everybody start suing everybody? What happened? I don't know. We had a a, a kid uh, in our neighborhood fall off somebody else's deck and his his tooth went through his lip. Mm. Ugh. No lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, my buddy on our oh. trampoline. Oh he, god, and you could see you could see the white. So he landed like on his face, uh, and his tooth went through his hurts lip. Me. Yeah, Blah. yeah. My buddy Joey, he, uh, we were kids. We were jumping, and we always jump from our clubhouse onto the trampoline. But one day he bit down and split his tongue. Bam. Bam. Oh yeah, yeah. dude! <laughs> Blood everywhere, but uh, no lawsuit. Nah. Yeah. yeah, we just put ice on it, took him to the ER, and that was it. There were plenty of times we actually uh, took the trampoline, put it over by the 
but it, it, like kind of on the side of the roof, and we would jump off the roof onto the trampoline into the pool. Yep. Real safe. Genius. Oh, yeah. That's a <laughs> great that was move. The best. Real safe. Listen, with the amount of things, especially, <laughs> you know, me, and I'm sure, you know, I've heard of your stories, Moon, too, and Scott and you guys. You know, out in the we were wild. farmland and, yeah, we were wild you know, Ray, if you were a wild child, here and learn stories. Sure. Climbing coal mines, dude. You know, wild kids. Yep. <clears throat> I busted well, open. Uh, they didn't sue. My grandpa I, My grandpa just replaced it. It was a pool for a trampoline handshake swap because I we were playing wiffle ball in the field by my friend's above ground pool. And uh, you know when you're a little kid, you just do dumb stuff. There was like a brick, half of a brick, like in the field of play. And they're like, we'll use that for third base. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And I like, tossed it over here, and I put it under my chin and spun around like a shot put. Yeah. You know, just like a goofy kid would. And when I pushed the half a brick off, I was way off, and it hit the bottom of an above-ground pool right where the brackets were at. Yeah. And I swear to God to this day, I swear <laughs> to God, in slow motion, I watched all the rivets be like, poof, 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 oh, my start God. popping off, and the pool laid Split open. Split open. Oh. And I swear... To God, for at least four seconds, the water stayed in cylindrical form. Because <laughs> I was just, it was like slow motion to me. It was like the pool came open, yeah. I swear the water stayed for a second where you could like see through it like the abyss. Like a oh, Roadrunner yeah. cartoon? Yeah, dude, like T Terminator 2, like <laughs> liquid Alex metal. Mack. Liquid metal. Yeah. And then it just, it rushed out so fast. And then it, so much water is more than you think is in one of those pools. Kids feet. Legs just getting taken out. Everybody in the field, <laughs> everybody's going sideways. It's a Southern Illinois tsunami. I was. Yep. I ran away and hid in a culvert, and then they looked for me for two hours because I was like, my my parents are gonna kill me. Because <laughs> you, when you're a kid, you're like, this is it. This yeah. is the one. Everything. Is the, I am gonna get skinned yeah. alive for this. Everything's the biggest deal. And my grandpa found me hiding in a culvert, and he picked me up, and then he's just he smoothed it over, and then instead of getting a new pool, they gave him like cash or something. And then he got a trampoline. The kid swapped it. Instead so, of putting in a new pool, they just cleared it out, put a trampoline where the pool was. and bet you they had more fun on the trampoline, out, right? Yeah. Guess it all worked out. <laughs> all Traded worked his pool out. for a tramp. <laughs> Upgrade. No lawsuit, though. How much trouble did you get in? It wasn't good. My grandpa did smooth it out for me, though. I'll give Bill some credit on that one. He, I was at his house, so that helped. I was at my grandparents' house when I did it, so... There was a buffer between me and my parents. Right. And he was like, there was a little bit of, of a mishap today. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> what was it? Like, did he fall down on his bike? Like, I completely annihilated the neighbor's pool. You know, like, that's a tough one to get over on your yeah. parents. But uh, I think I got ground. I mean, I did get in hey, trouble. listen, but. if half a brick could, could bust open a pool. It, it had to hit in the perfect place, too. I, like, you could give me a thousand tries, and I don't think I could do it. It was just one of those one in a millions. One in a millions, dude. One in a million. Hey, listen, that would have busted open anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank God nobody was in the pool. Right? Right? Uh, yeah. You we were, were all in the pool. Yeah, well, you yeah, know, af afterwards. Afterwards. Yeah. But listen, we're lucky. We, we, we emerged from our childhood pretty much unscathed. Mm -hmm. Most of us, yes. Yep. I mean, yes, there are some, there's some emotional damage. Lots of psychological issues later, <laughs> but physically, <laughs> we're okay. Physically, <laughs> physically, we're okay. And we have the stories. And we have the stories. Two, 219 stitches in my face. Wow. And in like, your face? Yeah, in like eight. Where was this eight at or nine on your different, face? Oh, all over. Uh, two, two scars here, one up here, one underneath my eye. I never thought, man. Oh, dude, I was, did a good job. I was wild. <clears throat> I was wild. Well, actually, my parents were investigated twice at the hospital because I was in there so often. It was like every six months, like I was in there. Summer, summer would come along, I'd run through a thorn bush and tear open my eye, this, this whole part of my face. And then we'd have to go in and you have to wait for like a plastic surgeon that can do the, 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 the stitches right. so they don't look gnarly, you know. So you'd sit there and wait, and while they do that, they go, hey, we're going to take mom and dad over here just to talk to them a little bit. Well, yeah, it was like right. child services. It was like, hey, this guy, this kid's been in. He a was lot. just in here for a sledding oh, accident. Was good on them. Like hey, sledding yeah, accident. Right. Good on them. Yeah. No, no, no. It was good. They right. did the right thing. For sure. I was in the hospital all the time. They didn't. Uh, I, did, you, I didn't even cry when I was, oh, my God. There's one where uh, the last thing. We were going out sledding. Remember that ice storm in like uh, 91, 93, somewhere around there? Sure. Dude, it was pure ice. Turned the whole city ice. It was the greatest sledding of all time. And I only enjoyed half of the season because, uh, 
we're, me and Kevin were about to go outside, and the last thing my mom said was, don't you come back here bleeding. <laughs> yeah, please. And I, we went out, and dude, it was, uh, I mean, successful. We were flying down his street. We were doing everything. One more. We got to go. The sun's going down. What, you know, last run. And the last run, you always push extra. I mean, little, you know, you're, you're cooking the afterburners. You're going just extra fast just because it's the last one for the day, maybe for the weekend. And I flew down, and I, I got air, and I was on a saucer, and I hit this tree, put my hands and my legs out. Both of them split, and I hit, like, mm. Wiley e. Coyote style right in my forehead and all I, I felt the trickle and i was like oh no oh no 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 and i look like this and i go, I go oh my god what do i do what do i do i'm, I'm bleeding yeah. everywhere my friend is in shock because he's looking at me i look like i just yeah, got those attacked. head wounds those head wounds dude it's just gushing and it's all here it's in my eyes i'm trying to get it out of my eyes i'm uh. going oh god what do i do what do i do you think it's fine <laughs> yeah. and, yeah. Like, dude it's not fine dude and he's like it's not fine you, you look can't terrifying. and he's like you can't go in my house you can't go in my house. And I was like, I just let me go get cleaned up. And he's like, no, you can't. And he <laughs> he goes inside. And I'm like, oh, God, what do I do? He left you bleeding. So, so I'm. your face in the snow. I got to walk home like two, two, three blocks. And I'm just walking. And I'm, go, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm thinking, well, you're, it'll, you're, do, it'll dry. It'll stop bleeding by yeah, the time I get there. Yeah, you're trying to will it to stop bleeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, it's fine. It's, yeah. it's going to be fine. And, dude, I opened the door to my, my, my house. I opened the front door. And I looked down, and my I made eye contact with my mom, and she looks at me, and she goes, "Oh <laughs> my gosh!" <laughs> she did not say that. She looked at me, and I just all I said was, "I'm sorry." And my dad yelled, "Get in the car!" Because I was in trouble again, man. Right to the doctor. Right to the hospital. If you have brothers, half your childhood <laughs> is convincing somebody to try to walk something off. Yeah, like, yeah. please. You're fine. You're fine. If you go in the house, the day is ruined. Oh, They'd yeah. be like bone poking uh, through skin, and yeah. you'd be like, no, it's not. I honestly, dude, it's you're not fine. that bad. Dude, I was you're fine. so no, sad. Come on. You're fine. Rub some yeah. dirt on it. I didn't yeah. care about the you're pain. Fine. Don't tell mom. I didn't care about anything. I was so, and this is the this this is the exact sentence that, that shapes the entire childhood for me. <clears throat> I was so upset because I knew my sledding season was over. I was so, I was like, this is, I mean, I have been blessed with the greatest sledding yeah, of all it. time, and this you is blew it. it. They're not going to let it. me outside Your negligence. Anymore. Oh, yeah. I was so upset. Yeah, listen, there are days where my son will go out, and I'll uh, look out the window, and he's walking down to the to the lake with, like, a ladder and a garden hoe, and I'm like, what are you, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> ah, just don't get hurt. That's, you know, that's it. Yeah. Like, don't, just don't get hurt. I don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. It's I got not even no for his, time. It's not even for his own, like you know, safety. <laughs> right. Ah, like, oh, man, I don't want to. Just don't get hurt. I got right. No time. No ladders care. today, buddy. <laughs> 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 what are you doing with the garden hoe? I didn't even know we had one of those. Oh man. No. Do you guys? Um. You guys? Do you guys believe in luck? Yeah. You believe in luck. It's part of success. Oh yeah, but but I believe you can set yourself up for. For luck, good and bad. Good and bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You create opportunity, right? Isn't isn't luck uh, just a timing and well, what do they say? Opportunity and preparation. Yeah, opportunity and preparation equals luck. Yeah, I believe in luck. I believe I'm a lucky person. Yeah. We all believe we're lucky people. Definitely. I mean, yeah. I guess the same meaning is like fortunate or blessed. So right here it right. is. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Mm-hmm. One in five adults believe they are unlucky. That's sad. Yeah, I know a lot of these people. I, and I know a lot of people that have really bad luck. Like one of my best friends has had some of the worst luck throughout her life, her entire lifetime. And, it, and it's not, you know, some people are like, oh, just get your crap together. What are you doing? It's not even like that. Like she's just had sequences of bad luck. And dude, she is one of the most resilient human beings because of that like right. learned how made to her stronger made her stronger but man i wish she wouldn't have had to because like she's had a really bad luck life life or just life. like a bad luck streak no dude like since we were probably was dealt 13, a bad hand dealt a bad hand just bad luck across the board i knew a dude that seemingly had bad luck all the time and he got uh the word lucky tattooed across his stomach mm. and it got infected Changed everything you no, got the word lucky it, it, it tattooed across the stomach no, and it got get, infected. It didn't get infected. But like, I, I, I swear, he, I, I think the story was, because he got it before I really knew him, but like he, he got it because he had kind of this like infamous streak of, of bad luck all the time. I, 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 
I don't know. Can you manifest bad luck? Yeah, for you can oh, cause yeah. a lot of your own problems. Right. Sure. Most. It's the old another old saying is like most people are self-made. Only successful folks admit it. That happens a lot. I got a lot of friends like that with like, uh, oh woe is me, and then they tell me the story, and I'm like, I, I'm catching a common denominator in some of this, man. Like you've. But they're like into not, you know what I mean? Well, like their behavior puts them in situations where the luck runs bad. Well, there's also the friends that you, whenever you talk to them, they, t they talk to you about their unlucky mm -hmm. moments. Right. And they never take responsibility. And, no, for and their it's part and it's it. it's anything good happen to you? <laughs> like, yeah. Like you seem to thrive and you seem to feed off this. Yeah. Yeah, I think it gives some people a buzz. It's kind of a. I guess so. Yeah. yeah do you, do you think that bad luck comes in threes? No. I yeah. mean, deaths come in threes. I mean, luck is, luck. I mean, by by definition, is it not the randomness? So how can you say that it always comes in three if it's uh, if it's random, right? I don't know. I feel like that's a bad thing to to believe. Because mm -hmm. if two bad things happen to you, you're waiting for the you're third. waiting for that third. Yeah, and you'll find it, and you're gonna find oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've only heard the death thing. I've never heard bad luck. Come I've in heard threes. bad luck comes in threes. They say that luck is the silent partner of success. We've all, and listen, we've all had the unlucky moments. Uh, you know, step in a dog poop. That's pretty unlucky. Yeah. And Doc Martens, the worst. Because it gets all up in the grooves. Uh, oh, my gosh. My Doc Martens have been in the garage for about a year and a half. I, because of dog crap? Because I stepped in poo. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I, and I cleaned them. But I was like, I, I don't feel like this got clean enough to come back in the house. My first pair of combat boots, like steel toe combat boots, Doc Martens in the 90s. Stepped in my Labrador's crap pile and just threw them out. Because I was like, there, I hosed them down, tried to get the smell out. Yeah, wow. Impossible. You are when they totally get right. in the grooves, I, I told you, the last time I really stepped in it, it was outside Shaw Park and Clayton. I just threw the shoes out right yeah. there. That's <laughs> hilarious. Well, I, threw, I threw the shoes right out in the park and, and drove home in my socks. It's terrible. Because I forgot what kind of shoes they were, but they had the thin, the wavy grooves mm -hmm. and there was no getting those out nope. you'd have to get a toothpick yep you have to literally toothbrush and brush through uh, them and who wants to do that nobody nobody yeah I'm, i think just growing up with way too many animals in our house i got used to stepping that in the yard where you clean them off and it's like whatever because it didn't really bother me now it's like yeah toot how about you know going somewhere nice you got a nice shirt on nice dress on and you know you're spilling something on yourself. Yeah, that's why I wear black all the time. I spill stuff on myself nonstop. Yeah. And it's just, it absorbs the stain. So that's why I'm goth every day. <laughs> mm. It's for real. <laughs> I wore a white shirt to work a couple weeks ago or whatever. Bad move. Bad move. Coffee everywhere. You know, pen. I got like an ink pen. So I I'm think, I've, ink pen I think I have grease stains on 90% of my shirts and sweatshirts at home. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. Because I'm a pig. Me too. That's why. Why is it grease? <laughs> I don't know, either from cooking or sp or dropping oh, something, yeah. like, uh, you know, All eating oil and, changes you're and doing. missing my, you know, you know, or like uh, cooking oil or, you know, something greasy eating. Mm -hmm. it always got to go on the shirt. <laughs> always. Uh, hitting every red light, that's uh, that's unlucky. Mm. That'll happen, you know, coming to work every once in a while out here. Some of these lights on Olive out by the radio station. They seem to last uh, five minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm You know, the old five-minute reds. Flat tire. Unlucky. Yeah. Last time you got a flat. Ooh, it's been a minute. Yeah, thank God. It's definitely Actually, been a minute. Actually, last time I got a flat, I was in Glendale, uh, so by, like, Kirkwood, Webster, and I went to the quick trip off of Big Ben and 44 right there, and I was filling up my, my tires and I was like, damn it. And there was like a nail in my tire. Oh, right. And a guy in a Camaro and his girlfriend came over and they're like, hey, are you learned? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I got to nail my tire. And I was just talking to him. And he goes, well, I have a Sam's Club membership. He's like, you want me to go over there with you and we'll get you a new tire. And I'm like, Holy all right, smokes. cool. So I got to use this dude's Sam's Club membership. I bought my own tire and stuff. But like, that was really lucky. Usually they could just, yeah, pull, the, dude. They could pull, just pull the nail out and patch it. That's great. Well, I, it was too big. I don't know what the problem was, but. Anyway, I thought that was like the, that, was that was very nice. That's lucky. Very nice. That was very lucky. an unlucky moment turned into a lucky moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a we, we had a nail in our tire uh, not long ago, but it didn't go flat, and it just happened to be, for some reason, however we had to park, the wheels were kind of turned a little bit, and you could see the nail, and that I thought was lucky. 
Because yeah. we would have gone until sure. it would, mm-hmm. you know. And those those slow itself. leaks, you go, why is my tire pressure slowly, yeah. you know, slowly going down? And they could usually pull that nail out and hopefully, you know, patch it up for Throw you. some gum bucks. in there and fix it up. Yeah, 30 bucks. When was the last time I got a flat rave? And I hate to even say this out loud. It's been a long time. It's been Tina's, a while for me, too. Tina's car blew on our way to Kansas City years ago, and it was cold. It was like Christmas. We were going home. She blew one on the side of uh, the interstate on the way to KC, Ooh. and that one sucked. That was like bitter cold. And you were you were with her? I was with her. I think with man, it's, but it's been a long time. I think it was like the first time I met her parents. So that was probably like seven years ago, seven or eight years ago. So you had a show. That was the last uh, time I had to get out on the side of the road, get a jack, jack up a car, put was on she a tire. On? I don't. Think so. <laughs> oh, come on. Trust me, we're all turned on. The minute mm-hmm. the jack comes out and we don't have to do it, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a good, Lift the last one I had was 2016 on my way up to Springfield, Illinois, and I was in one of the big Sprinter vans, those Mercedes Sprinter vans, and it was loaded with all this medical equipment. Flying up 55, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the tire just, one of the tires just exploded in the yeah. back. And then I was trying to stop, but it took forever to get it to slow down or anything. And once I managed to get it pulled over, um, I go out there to look and it's, you know, ah, the flat tire, this is so awful. And I'm like, what's that weird fluid? And so I looked and the brake line got cut. Say what? Yeah, it severed the brake line as well. Oh, so when the tire exploded, it cut the brake line. I'm kind of hosed here. I'll be late to surgery today. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. But I didn't man. flip it. How about that? Yeah, I'm glad you're all right. Uh, Joe, I was like, where are you going where it's only 30 bucks to patch up a tire? <laughs> <laughs> right, isn't that how much it is? Yeah, thirty bucks. Know, maybe in place. ninety-two. I don't know. It was, maybe that was the last time I got my tire patched up. No, they pull. It's not that expensive. They pull the nail out, mm-hmm. and they put a they put a plug in the hole. Yeah, that's if you're very lucky, though. Like if it's the if it's yeah. you know, not in a sidewall or something right. like that. All right, do you think being uh, crapped on by a bird is good luck? My grandma says it is. Yeah, I've heard it is. It dep- if it's like an ostrich, I would say no. You know that I have like a thing. Like I, f- I, f- I fear very few things, but when birds fly over me, I hate it. I really, I really hate it. I well, move, have you ever move been crapped on? Yes, yes. And and <laughs> everybody that makes fun of me every time they see me do that kind of weird thing, and I get weird if birds are flying over me. You just haven't been crapped on yet, and you wait. You just wait until a seagull does it, because it's the gooeyest, nastiest, splattiest oh, yeah, green yeah. Yeah. goop, and it just goes. And it echoes through your skull, and it's the worst. I uh, so last nasty. time I got crapped on, I was playing street hockey, <laughs> and I was goalie. Bird crapped on my shoulder. I was Patrick Waugh that day. Woo. So it was good luck. Good luck, indeed. Party It's on. so nasty. If yeah, it, it, it depends a, on what kind of bird. Oh, this must have been a pigeon. If it's a big full bird that had a heck of a breakfast, dude, it's just the grossest. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this uh, this guy in this next story here, I would say, would be uh, would be an unlucky person. Uh, headline, a uh, woman stabs boyfriend's penis with scissors after learning how many lovers he's had. <gasps> Why do you care? That's, Who cares? That's, it's uh, of the past. This woman cared. How many lovers did he have? Many? Well, how many? Is too many? How, how many, many is, is too, scissors worth? How many is being stabbed in the penis worth? Like, uh, I don't think, it, no, there's no number there. I, good for you. You've had many lovers. Okay. A jealous woman stabbed her boyfriend's penis with a pair of broken scissors, broken scissors, right out of the garbage, oh. after he confessed to having nearly 50 past lovers. Good for him. The couple were enjoying a romantic date at a cafe. They were in uh, Manila in the Philippines. Conversation that night took a turn. Took a turn, and after hearing about the boyfriend's long list of exes, the woman stayed calm for a couple seconds before flying into a rage. <laughs> Let it sink in. Just by one, huh? I, I, 50. I get huh. like, okay, if you are lied to, that's weird. Don't lie about your past lovers. Just own it up and say, yeah, I've had 50 lovers. It's okay. Good for you. Why Not would that lie. ever come up in a conversation? You don't ask? You didn't ask no, your wife? never. How many lovers she had? No. Before you... Oh. Nothing good could come of that, uh, having that information. Why? That's just an intimate curiosity. Nothing good could Why? Because you're, you're ashamed of your lovers? I don't think it's weird that you <laughs> don't know, but I, th- I bet you you're in the minority. <clears throat> Riz. Don't you think? Yeah. 
everybody I know, like every guy I've ever slept with, I'm like, hey, how many people have you slept with? That was like a preliminary thing. I didn't want to, and it's okay if, it, if they were like, hey, I've slept with 50 people. All right, cool. Have you got an STD test? Like, oh, responsible <laughs> sexual behavior. Uh, yeah. uh, please fill out this questionnaire. All right, well, hey, listen, we're going to get it on. <laughs> This is a tip, man. <laughs> oh, you forgot to sign. Right, we're gonna get it on. Um, <laughs> hey, before we before we get at it, uh, just gonna have when you. Who was fill your out, last STD test? Gonna have you fill out this uh, this paperwork here, and you have a clipboard. No. I'm gonna need you to sign this NDA that you can't talk to your best girlfriends about the size of my wang. Mm -hmm. I know what you're saying. What is and this? I, and I think that's a reasonable thought. But I think, Laren, uh, I, I think we're in the in the majority. And do know and do have that conversation because it's a window. Because even though, like, yeah, if, of course, the past doesn't doesn't matter to to that degree. Uh, it's it's a window into who this person is. Right. I'll be honest with you. It never come up in the. Oh, 20, ask her tonight. The, no, we're not. Oh, come not on. Doing that. Nice dinner. She just texted me. You want to know? Yeah. I'm not What'd doing she that. Say? Yeah, he, I'll tell you right now. I think he's fifty. No, no, Where are the scissors? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're well past the line. You don't. Yeah. It, it, it's no. It's a it's no. A no. It's a no. Oh, man, I had to know. Like, Tim, I was like, how many people have you slept with? And, he, you know, he wanted to know for my number as well. And that was one of the, the great secrets that we get to know about each other. So I mean, I, I don't think it's, I'm not keeping it a secret. Yeah, we've talked about it on the show. I don't think seminars. my wife yeah. is keeping it as a secret either. Just I'd be interested in it. People should tweet at us if they talk to their, their partners about that. Like, whether you're let's married put, or dating. Let's or, do a Twitter poll. Yeah, do you, do you talk numbers of people that you've slept with before, not even before engaging, just it comes up eventually. I mean, I get maybe the preliminary question about how, what was your last test? Nobody's doing that because nobody's as psycho as I am. But like <laughs> that, uh, but getting to the number, I think is a very common thing. A common thing? I do, yeah. Common is I bet the you worst. about 50 50. Nah. 70. 70 30. 70, 70 30. don't know, 30 know. No. 75% <laughs> 70, of people know. Their partner, their having partner. this information will do nothing I think positive. I think long mean? term, I bet a lot of people know. Long term, like I don't think a ton of people are having the preliminary conversation. I think that's probably a minority. But I think if you're in a relationship a long time, eventually it might come up, and sometimes you don't want to know. And that's okay. Just depends too. on who you are. But I think it comes up eventually, where it's like, do you want to know? I'll tell you if you want to know. You sound like you're really eager to tell me. I didn't bring it up, and you just yeah. keep saying, I mean, you, you want to know? know? Are you no, asking I'm saying like it's come up. In, in like, the getting to know you conversation, Learn? Uh, no. I, it, if, you it, were the, if you were in the, in the uh, you know, dating pool now, uh -huh. would this be a first, you know? No, no, no. This is like a, oh, I might have sex with this person. Yeah, yeah, you're starting to get I'm, serious. It's starting to get serious. Like, it's an intimacy thing. I want to know. And, and honestly, and, they, and you could lie. You could. How am I to trust what that number is? You know what they say. And there, and there they lies that we don't need to know the number because what they what? always say. Men they lies. Say, they say it's a multiple subtract. of threes. Yeah, yeah. Guys say it three times more than than they actually have, and, and women, women say three times Less. fewer. Yep. So I mean, yeah, you have. To, that's like the first level of trust into a new endeavor. Oh yeah, but the kids, know. the kids are calling it body counts these days. Body right? counts. That's right what I. That's, body that's, count. <laughs> that's what I. Body count. That's what I put in the. Uh, in the uh, in the poll, the poll is: Do you have the conversation with someone you're dating about their body count? Oh, yeah. can I think you put it's a body cool count in quotes because I don't love it. Oh no, we can't no, edit it's on up, Twitter. Because oh, no. okay. when I think body count, I think iced tea. That's it. Yeah. it, can't, it can't but that's kind of cool to think about. Uh, I don't know. Why is that such a weird thing to know? I guess is my my pushback. I, if you're, are you ashamed or? Like, no, I'm not ashamed. Okay. I, I'm I'm not ashamed, and I wouldn't be ashamed of hearing my my wife's number just we don't it, first of all it's never come up mm -hmm. why would it come up uh and uh it's information that could be uh used eventually maybe as uh <laughs> as a weapon nah well that's immature if that's being and like that. who you look who you looking at what is me that? <laughs> 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 Hey, at least you know yourself, uh, any, man. Yeah, any, listen, know any thyself. number thrown out there can and will possibly in the future be used as a weapon. <laughs> will be used against you uh, in a court of race. You know, now, we're, now we're talking, you know, especially if you're dating somebody or getting to know somebody, now we're in the back of our heads going, is this person lying? Is he inflating? Is he, is he, is he 
Is he inflating his number? Is he not telling me the, the you know, the amount because he's ashamed? <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. See, now, now too many things are going through my head. Well, that's what, that's just a part of a person, though. I mean, your sexual activity is a part of your, who you are. So, yeah, if you've been getting out there and you've been hoeing it up, man, more power to you. But, like, own it, I guess. What You can't say, oh, I've been sleeping with 50 people and I'm ashamed of it. No, you had a really good time. And hopefully you were practicing safely. That's the way to do it, man. Or if you didn't have sex with many people, own that, too. It's okay. Yeah, I was more responsible. I don't want to put myself out there as much. There's really no wrong there. Am I? Am I have I? zero game. No, thanks. <laughs> I think it's uh, the older you get to, it's like less important. I think that's something that when you're younger, it's like... You put more emphasis on it. Yeah, yeah because yeah, yeah. you're insecure about like your experience. You're like, oh, we're, you know, you've been with like one person and then you start dating someone new and they're like, oh, I've been with 35 people. You're going to be like, it's intimidating. And I think you, I think you get in your head more, like you get to our age. If you're not back on the market at our age, just assume... Everybody's got, everybody's a grizzled vet at this point, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, if I, if I, if my wife had, had this conversation now, it, it wouldn't make, it, it wouldn't make a difference. He has been dating since you were like 14 years old or something, yeah. right? <laughs> she was uh, 19 or 20 and I was, you know, just turned 21. Mm-hmm. You know, if we haven't had the conversation by now, what, uh. What's the point? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> Seems like you're doing just fine. Would you want to know the number before you got intimate? Is that a, is that a, prereq a prerequisite to know that number? Uh, no. I mean, no. Not for me. Is there a number too high? Depends. Dep it depends on the scenario. Is there a number that's too high that we go, whoa, man, <laughs> slutting it up, huh? <laughs> what if it was 500? I mean, I would have big expectations then. I'd be like, <laughs> you've learned some things. Yeah. You're, you need to show me what you've learned on your journey. <laughs> and here's some penicillin. Yeah, and here, let me go get some shots really fast. <laughs> Man, I feel like there's, I couldn't tell you what the number is, but I would say, yeah, there's got to be a number that's too high. Right? Yeah. I mean, I would think so. Just because, again, it's, it's, somewhat of a, it's somewhat of a window into, into the past. So even if somebody was like, ah, well, my number is... 837, and I regret most of those. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a conversation there. But 837, you still go, whew. My Lord. Where do I go from here? Well, I would start doing <laughs> I was math. not prepared for that. I would do age math. I'd be like, all right. Because especially, like, now, like, you know, I'm almost, I'm 30, I'll be 39 in a month. And, like, okay, I would start, if that person, if I were in the dating scene, like, I would start dividing. And I'd be like, okay, how many people a month is that? Right. You know what I'm saying? So I would I would have that <laughs> thought, but then I would also hope that they were safe and, like, have yeah, that yeah. conversation. I would, mainly I'm more, um, it's not the number, it's the, hey, were you practicing safely? I really do, I'm big on that. So for so. me, I think, and I'll, I'll fully admit this, that it, it's, it has nothing to do with judgment or any of that. It has to do with, okay, well, if I'm doing the math... And you've now slept with three people per day since you were 18. Right. Man. Um, how Holy does that make girl. me special? You know no, what I'm and like, no doubles. For, for me, no doubles. like I'm willing to admit, like it would be a security issue for me at that point. At, at some Am point. Am I just a number? You, you just go Am like. Am I going to be just a <laughs> you notch go, on that? You, surely you're tired of this by now. Post. And there's no way I can be special to you. Or, yes. you, or it's lining you up to know what your role in this is. Where you're going, oh, this isn't going to be serious. Right, right. And maybe I'm wrong. Well, I'm just saying as somebody that does not have even double digits in my body count number um i would i would feel i would have some things to reconcile in my brain before well, i was able to move 50 on. 50 was the breaking point for this woman welcome back to puritanical podcast everybody <laughs> <laughs> what single single digit guy no just <laughs> the way everybody's talking about it i don't know man i'm not judging on the past i got enough i got skeletons in my closet if i like somebody and i care about them and i think they're cool like that's not going to be a that's not going to be a disqualifier for me yeah, I'm not yeah, saying it don't matter. <clears throat> yeah, I'd just be like, I'd just be like, yeah, I actually, I would feel weirder now if I if I was in the dating scene and I got with someone and they're like, you know, in our age bracket, like I've been with one person, I'd probably feel weirder about that. Where I'm just like, you need to get out there, get out there and show your oats a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you know, go like, some fun. hey, go have some fun. Because I'd be like, I need you to know some, like we're gonna get weird fast. <laughs> <laughs> You're not ready. <laughs> how weird I'm going to get. Yeah. You've been with one person.
So it's like I, I almost need the number to be a little bit. You gotta have a few in your pocket at that point, you know. No, no scissors need to come out ever. By the way, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Like, can we go back to this original point? Like these rusty scissors. This woman is stabbing the man's d. Like that's ridiculous. <laughs> No. In a cafe. In a cafe. There's no way in reality that this needs to happen. So, again, so so boyfriend says slept with 50 people, had 50 what they, you know, love us. Right. His body count was 50. She stayed calm for a second and then flew into a rage. <laughs> Happened to be a pair of broken scissors in a garbage can nearby. I guess wow. just at the top. Unlucky for this dude. Yeah. Unlucky for this dude. Well, it's kind of lucky. He lives in a town where people don't throw things on the street. They put them in a trash can. So she grabs the scissors, and she just repeatedly jabs the, jabs the scissors oh, man. in a stabbing motion yeah. into the guy's groin before running off. So, again, it's not about judgment. But let's say, and somebody brought this up on Twitter. Let's say, uh, okay, it's 50, but 25 of them were in one night, and they're all your friends. That's okay. All her it's friends? All okay. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I guess, like, as long as you're being transparent, like, if you're hiding stuff, why? Like, what is the shame yeah, yeah. or the insecurity there? Like, why can't you just own what you have done? My point here is, <laughs> well, you people, run the some, risk of this. Some people regret what they've done. Yeah, but that woman is okay a psychopath. You run the risk of this happening. Dude, this happened in uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the uh, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie thing. Remember, it was like, they're like in the van, and they're... Uh, they're in some gun battle or something on the road, of course, and they're talking about their numbers. And she and he says, "What's yours?" And she, she says something like, "300, blah blah." And he goes, "300." And she goes, "Well, some of them are two or three at a time." Ah. And, oh yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. See, you run the risk of this happening. Mm. So this guy, she runs off after stabbing the guy repeatedly in the groin. He gets up. He's hobbling across the the pavement of the cafe. They said blood is running down his legs. Oh my the local police captain says the victim was noticed by pedestrians. Lucky, they, Luckily, there was an officer patrolling the area, so police were able to call an ambulance from right away. We conducted investigations, tracked down the suspect, which is his live-in girlfriend. Wow. The lady was upset when she discovered the number of past lovers that her new boyfriend had. Uh, she didn't expect it to be nearly 50, so she reacted strongly. She intentionally stabbed him in his private parts because of this. This poor dude was in so much pain. Paramedics get there. He was awake. They say he lost a lot of blood. At first, they're like, sir, would you like to press charges? He goes, yes. And then he changed his mind. Quote, out of love for her. Wow. He doesn't want to press anything right now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> out of love for her. I think these two are going to make it, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think they should take a stab at it. Uh, Off to a great start. I think these two are going to make it. He doesn't want to press charges. Maybe he lied to her when they started dating and said, ah, oh, whatever, and then owned up to it later, and that's where all this heated passion came in. And maybe that's why he feels bad, and he's like, I'm not going to press like, listen, I got a confession to make. It wasn't fine. I'm not a virgin. I know. The number's 50. Stab, 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 stab. <laughs> I know, but I love her. Wow. But I love her. Maybe out of love for her. She was getting the poison out, maybe. So, yeah. Yeah. That could happen if you have that conversation. What's the poll at, by the way? Uh, the poll is currently uh, actually in your favor. It's 63.2% no. Okay, well, we'll leave that up. Yeah. Let's see what, uh, you know, what happens. I'm curious to see what the racial listeners Me too. have to say. Follow us on Twitter. Um, on a lighter note, uh, is this just a money grab, or do you think this is actually okay advice? Uh, the CEO of Kellogg's, this was a big story yesterday. Oh, okay. You see this, Scott? You yeah, story? I saw this. It's pretty smart. This dude's getting some heat. The CEO of Kellogg's. You know, the, the cereal. The cereal company. This guy's getting some heat uh, over some comments. His advice on how you could save some money. <coughs> By feeding your kids cereal for dinner. Here is the CEO of Kellogg's talking about it. Some of the things that we're doing is first messaging. we got to reach the consumer where they are. So we're advertising about cereal for dinner. If you think about the cost of cereal for a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's going to be much more affordable. The price of a bowl of cereal with, with milk and with fruit is less than a dollar. So you can imagine why a consumer under pressure might find that to be a good place to go. Okay, listen, food prices are up these days. Yeah. We've all been in the grocery store and been like, whoa, man. Mm-hmm. 
You know how much avocados are? It seems to be a more reasonable dinner than it is a breakfast. So, but people have been tearing in, tearing into this dude. His his, his name is uh, Gary Pilnick. People have been tearing into old Gare after he made those comments on CNBC. Quote, if you think about cereal for your family versus what they might otherwise do, that's going to be much more affordable. And he's not wrong. You know, as you mentioned, a bowl of cereal can cost less than a buck, especially if you, you know, skip the Kellogg's and go generic. But obviously things like Fruit Loops and Apple Jacks aren't exactly health foods. You know, even one of the CNBC hosts said that telling people to eat Frosted Flakes for supper might land the wrong way with consumers. Yeah, it's girl dinner. Mm -hmm. That trend of girl dinner yeah. where you're eating something ridiculous. That's what this is. But he didn't think so because he's, you know, it's already something plenty of Americans do, cereal for dinner. He said he expects it to become an even bigger trend as more and more people find themselves under pressure financially. Kellogg's is already pushing the idea in ads. In fact, there's a recent one where Tony the Tiger gets a family of four to chant cereal dinner over and over again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not manipulative or anything. I wonder why they don't uh, also say, hey, you should learn how to garden and do your own little gardens. Even if you have a, you're in an apartment, you don't have a yard, here's how to do it out of the window. Here's how to do this and that. And here's how to go and uh, buy meat cheaply. Oh, but that would require effort. Okay. Learning okay. things. Scott, yeah, convenience is worth it. Yeah, I live in a New York City apartment. It's 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 300 square feet. I'm going to start a garden. You know, he has to be an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the cereal for dinner commercial. When I say cereal, you say dinner. Cereal. Dinner. Cereal. Dinner. cereal. Dinner. Chicken. You can uh, have the night off, chicken. Oh, okay, I'll go marinate. Cereal. Dinner. Cereal. Dinner. I'll go marinate. I'll go marinate. Mirror, mirror, mirror. I don't know, cereal for dinner. Is that going to be a thing? I don't know. I mean, I think it already is. I, I used to do that all the time. Yeah, you got a single parent. You got, you're doing cereal dinners already. This is yeah. nothing new. Yeah, this seems like a single guy thing. Hmm. Yeah. Right? This seems like a, like a single guy thing. This is every Tuesday yeah. at my house. We call it Fend for Yourself Night because Tim has basketball and I got banned. <laughs> So we're not around. And so we just eat whatever. And yeah, I'm eating cereal for dinner on Tuesdays. You okay with it? How about a family of four, cereal for dinner? As long as, you know, everything in moderation. It doesn't seem, you know, like a balanced dinner. No, it well, doesn't. But you're, but you're feeding it to him for breakfast. Yeah. And if that's the most important meal of the day, well, then why are we Is all up really in arms? Is that really true, though? I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I'm just saying, like, why, I was, uh, you why, know. why are you up in arms about him talking about dinner, but not him talking about having this for breakfast? Because it ain't right. People put more emphasis on dinner. No, well, you know, breakfast is the on the go. Kids are going to school. People are going to work. I'm just saying, if, yeah, so, put, if it's okay some, for one, how can it not be okay for the other? Because dinner, I guess, is supposed to be, you know, the meal where cook, a little veg, mm. it's protein. We do breakfast for dinner, right? Everybody does that. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to while. have waffles. Yeah. This is just the same. It's just cereal. I don't know the last time I had cereal in the morning, if I'm being honest. That's like a nighttime treat. It's a comfort food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have a problem. I mean, who cares? All right, well, let's be honest. You know, after a tough day, would you rather have a gourmet meal like the ones on those cooking shows or cereal or, you know, uh, you know, uh, mac and cheese out of a box? Comfort foods? Comfort food over gourmet food. What are you, what are you doing? I'm a comfort food girl. Through and through. Doesn't matter what it is. Mac and shells and cheese or grandma's tortellini soup. Give me give me both forever. More than, you know, going to Bull Rush, which I love too, where everything is gorgeous and the best flavors I've ever had in my life. That's a special That's a thing. treat. Yeah, that's a treat. That's a treat. I think I enjoy that more when it is a treat. Mm -hmm. When it's an unusual thing. You know, a new survey asked people if they had to pick a lane, would they rather have the gourmet food or comfort food for the rest of their lives? For the rest of your life. I'm going comfort food. Same. And 70% uh, 70 of people said they prefer comfort food. And they didn't, they didn't really define each, but it sounds like comfort food was more like chicken wings and pasta and pizza and burgers, while gourmet food was, you know, more like the stuff you get at a fancy restaurant. You know, like a scallop with a piece of asparagus and a streak of sauce over the top. That's, I mean, that's got its place. <laughs> Pan-seared scallops, so good. And, th and that's got its place. 
But if I just want a bowl of spaghetti with red sauce, that's... In your bed shirtless? In hey. my bed shirtless? Fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. So many people growing up enjoyed, you know, unusual food combos. I don't know. Did you guys talk about unusual food combos when I was out the other day? <sighs> no, I don't think so. Ago? But I'm always thinking about unusual yeah. food combos. And they didn't realize how like how unusual stuff was when they were growing up but you know when you mentioned it to somebody i did because my parents hated hated when i would blend the stuff because i was the uh eat to live rather than live to eat right guy. where you just kind of mix everything dude up. i hated hot i had i hated having food in front of me and i have to sit here and wait for it to cool off to be able to eat it so anything like anytime it was like a hamburger helper or whatever you know it was always steaming hot so stupid so i always get applesauce Right. And just whoosh, just blend it all in. Huh. It cools it off. Eat it. Goodbye. I'm back playing again. And my parents used to have to put the cereal boxes in front of my plate so they wouldn't have to hit watch what I was mixing. <laughs> it was so gross. Did you have any weird food combos growing up, Rafe? I'm trying to think if I had anything that was, like, super bizarre. I'm sure that... I mean, I, I made the... I don't think it's weird, but we did, like, the spaghetti homemade butter bread Hot Pocket. I'll what is that? that? Oh, what? It's like a piece of white bread. You put, if you have mastacholi or, or spaghetti, you put a little butter on the bread, and then you just put the pasta on it, you fold it up and pinch the sides, and then you what? just eat it like a little <laughs> white trash I like that. <laughs> okay, I guess we did have weird combos. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. Hey, that was like a... That was that's, a, a that's a white trash calzone. A white trash hot pocket, that's right. <laughs> Where you like couldn't crimp. afford hot pockets when they first came out. Where you so like so the own. white Wonder Bread, you just crimp, and those are very crimpable. Yeah, you, like crimp you just them, crimp, the, crimp the crimp. I was side. like a little chef, dude. Make a little, put my little crimps. Made my like it was kind of like a pasta uncrustable. What and you go voila? Yeah, and then you just like turn it to the side, eat it like a taco full of uh, pasta. It's really good. I still do it to this day. Doesn't sound like a bad thing. It's pretty mm -hmm. good. Doesn't sound like a bad thing. Uh, Lauren, any unusual food combos? You know what I used to like? Um, cream cheese and jelly sandwich. Does, hmm. Is that that unusual? It's like a no, bagel. That, that's really Sounds good. pretty good. So it was like cream cheese, like, as, you, as you put on a bagel, on a piece of white bread, and you put jelly on it. Yeah. yeah. I've done that in the past whenever I couldn't get afford the bagel or whatever, but you had the cream cheese somehow, so you're like, all right. <laughs> Work around. I don't think, nothing's standing out in my brain. I don't think I'd lived i don't know somebody like, said ketchup sandwiches just ketchup oh. and white bread yeah. does like barbecue sauce on macaroni too. count macaroni and cheese i still do that yeah I do you do. i dip in my shells and cheese in my barbecue sauce like if mm. i have salmon oh mm. man I love i've done barbecue. like the, yeah i've done the weird combos when you just didn't have ketchup sandwiches is just being poor <laughs> like that i don't think anyone was like gotta have it yeah I mean, I've done, like, the syrup sandwich and stuff like that. A syrup sandwich? What is that? Just like you go to someone's house, they don't have any, like, lunch meat. They had, like, some, you know, they had, like, some maple syrup or something in the cabinet. You just put it syrup on bread. Syrup and white bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We used to Sweet. do the mayonnaise and cheese on bread. Yeah. Very fancy. Mayonnaise and cheese? All right, that, yeah. that doesn't, I mean, that, that doesn't seem that bad. Well, we had also microwave it, and <laughs> I don't know how healthy Ugh. that is mixed in. But just uh, classy. Kid meal right there. We you, man, did uh, applesauce is the is the magic ingredient. You can put it on anything. Yeah, it is a delight. <laughs> I've uh, I've been to a friend's house and it was like the scene out of the guy out of the Goodfellas at the end when Henry Hill is in uh, witness protection and he goes right after I got here I ordered some spaghetti with marinara sauce and I got egg noodles and ketchup. Egg noodles and ketchup. Oh, Blech. gosh. I've been to a friend's house, and they're like, oh, we're having spaghetti tonight. Okay. <laughs> like, this is noodles and ketchup. That's real? That's called skeddy, isn't it? Somebody does that? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a thing. That's the honey boo-boo thing. Oh, man. Remember she called oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, it, that was on honey boo-boo, yeah, but that was that's a real... Whoa. Yeah, but she puts butter in it, right? Wasn't that butter? I don't know. Yeah. The butter noodles, I can see that, but ketchup. That, no, butter noodles is fine. Yeah. Like, that's a thing, but but egg noodles and ketchup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what about Eggo waffles with melted sharp cheddar cheese on top? No. Doesn't sound bad. Doesn't sound bad. <laughs> Doesn't sound bad. Savoring that could sweet. work. Doesn't sound bad. Waffle and cheese. Waffle and cheese. 
What about uh, grape jelly on grilled cheese? Also sounds hmm. okay. I mean, it's just Doesn't sugar sound on terrible. cheese. It's not yeah. going to be bad. It's like a Monte Cristo. A lot of the Monte Cristos come with like a raspberry jelly. It's yeah. Good. Uh, what about uh, spaghetti with canned beans? Also hmm. doesn't sound terrible. Nah. Spaghetti with canned, no, canned okay. beans. I can see that. Yeah. Still with the red sauce? No, just... Uh, just beans and noodles? Like bushes? Yeah. Good old bushes, baked beans? Or maybe just a can of like red beans or something. I don't I know. You need to season that up a little bit, but... Yeah, uh, yeah. Chili with cinnamon rolls. Yeah, Whoa. I've had that. Yeah, I'm into that. I've had Sounds that. so good. What? That is a great... Because that used to be also on a school lunch. We'd get... <coughs> they do the chili and cinnamon roll. Really? Yeah. Wow, not here. I love cinnamon rolls, dude. You guys got... You need to go yeah. to hillbilly schools, man. <laughs> 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 pays off <laughs> and uh, if you're poor you get to you know the free lunch every day so I got to eat all the school lunches it was great that's still a nice like Sunday morning treat some days oh. to just like make cinnamon some, rolls pop some cinnamon rolls in the oven you ever make them homemade scratch no done that a, a couple baker. times we, we've done it a couple times but I'm still cool with just popping them in our Sunday morning treat because we didn't have cinnamon rolls we had just pecan swirls you know yeah. they, they come in the bag that the, works the, the tin the, you can unroll the them <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to make two of them last. Here, here's your two. Yeah, but I like the uh, you know the pop the pop the can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't do that. You know what I'm talking about. You pop the can. Yeah, no, it was and all. You have at the at the end of it. You have the frosting. Yes. Yeah. Prepackaged store bought. That's that's how my house operated. Yeah, you know, probably the canned ones were cheaper. I would even think. Yeah, yeah. I would this, imagine this was once every other Sunday or something. You get the pecan twists or pecan, pecan swirls. Yes. Is that what they're called? Yes. Was it a treat? We're like, yes. Oh, my gosh, dude. It was like that's what you waited for Sunday for. Uh, somebody said coffee and a cracker. So you take a plate, you line it with saltines, you pour over coffee until they're softened. Then you add some sugar to taste and eat them like, uh, I'm sorry, eat them with deli ham. Whoa. Somebody said it's like poor man's country ham biscuits and red-eye gravy. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That sounds gross. Yeah. <laughs> Soggy cracker. But energetic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had that. <laughs> Let's try that. That sounds fun. Oh, I've Pe seen those. Pecan spin wheels. This is what we I doing. never saw those as a breakfast item. I, I thought <laughs> it was like a snack. They're Dude. great. Pop them in the mic for about 10 seconds. Just get them a little bit. Yep. And then you unroll them. Comes as an eight count right now, sold for three ninety nine. So I'm sure in the 80s and it's 90s. It's probably like 90 cents. And the cool thing about those is you, if you unrolled it, that middle piece. Oh, that middle piece. Oh, was yeah, just, that middle. Oh. That's where all the gooey goodness was. <laughs> if you were willing to sacrifice a few dry, about a half a foot of dry pecan swirl. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was. Just it got was, to that middle. The hunk. golden, you know, the golden valley of the Himalayas. Right yeah, there, it, was, yeah it was fruit by the foot. <laughs> yeah, and, the, so and once good. you took this dry piece that glued it all together right here, you you have that one bite and you go, it's all gonna be gravy from here. Yeah, that's when, the worst part, right? Well, yeah, once you finish that first bite, you go, here we go, baby, here as we go. As soon as you go deeper, it's, yeah, the deeper <laughs> you go, the better it is. Mm, uh, American cheese wrapped around a banana? No, absolutely not. Well, I'm out on that. Yeah, No, bananas are way too good. American cheese, cheese on banana. Wrapped around a banana. I'm trying to think. No way. Anybody have any cheese? I'll try that right now. No. I do have cheese. I have spreadable spicy beer cheese in our fridge, but... Yeah. You do? I do. Mm. My aunt used to make good. something called a chuffin, and I can't find it anywhere online, but it was just like an English muffin with some kind of... Cheese on it? It was like a spread, almost like a pimento spread, but it was like... Home, I don't know if it was like part cream cheese, part sharp cheddar, or something like that, and then pop them in like a toaster oven and let it all, like the cheese all melt, mm. put some dill pickles on it. Yeah, it reminds me... My Those mom are good. Every once That's in a while, not weird. It was just good. She would do the uh, strawberry cream cheese on sandwiches, and that'd be like a snack in the afternoon. Yeah, it's almost like my cream that cheese and great. jelly. Yeah, I forgot about that until he just was talking about chocolate that. Chocolate chips on Totina's pizza rolls. Whoa. Nah. Chocolate? I bet it's good. No, you're just being immature. Yeah, but you're wasting good chocolate. Wait, did she make cruffins or chuffins? Because here's a cruffin. It's a croissant and a muffin. Ooh. Nah. Oh, okay. Peanut butter, Miracle Whip, and banana sandwich. That sounds gross. Ugh. No, you're, that's you're out. Anything miracle? Yeah. Cool. No, no, that uh, I've had that. I mean, this guy. Yeah, yeah. He's he's anti mayonnaise because it's because I, I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's trendy to hate I mayonnaise. Don't, no. 
You yeah. know that's... I, <laughs> that's so man, cool, man. man. What, do you hate clowns, too? Damn it. <laughs> you know I've been an OG mayo hater. Yeah, okay. <laughs> OG mayo hater. Leading the pack. <laughs> I've been a mayo hater for a long. Before was cool. Before kids. was cool. Oh, before man. was cool, <laughs> kids. How about honey and pizza rolls? Here's something that I do. Yeah, I've had yes, that. That's good. Yes, yes. <clears throat> I do. do uh, hot sauce too, when I make my tuna salad, I put um, oh, what are those little things called? Capers. I put capers in my tuna salad. No. They're little briny little. Th- I don't think I've ever. They're like that. itty bitty little flower olives. I don't like. I don't like uh, tuna salad. Oh well. It's it's a mayo thing. It is a mayo thing. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's also a canned tuna thing. I I love it. So what do you tuna. get at a gas station then? Right. You're supposed to get the tuna sandwich. And- oh, like the prepackaged tuna. Oh, like instead of relish, you put a caper, like a bunch of them, and you got a little pop. Of- Ooh, I've never done the a caper. little briny, a little briny goodness. Yeah. You eat the ma- you eat tuna sa- tuna sandwiches at a at a, at a gas station. I haven't in a while, but that, definitely whenever I used to. We were on the road all the time and all that. That I would get that egg sandwich, whatever. I had no issues with that it. That would probably be the last thing I would eat there. Like everything well, would have the, to, everything would date, have to be gone. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and I would have to be like like starving. Like five <laughs> minutes away from death. Yeah. Due to starvation to eat that. You that's get that problem, with some but that's chips just me. And you're in business. That's like the only pescatarian option when you go to gas stations is like a tuna sandwich. And you just yeah. gotta hey, I'm gonna risk it. Yeah, but you no. look at the date and have a bag of Doritos and be on your way. Mm. Yeah, an Arizona tea and a bag of chips. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, Arizona iced tea, bag Palmer. of chips, you're fine. <laughs> I'll leave the tuna. The old road meal. All right. Let's do this. All right, that's brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill. St. Louis is home for Blues Hockey from Arnold, Missouri. Jake Bierman is our team member today. Yeah, Jake. Uh, Jekylls uh, has been a rich listener since the very beginning, has uh, followed the show while living in Kansas City, Florida, and now back home in St. Louis. Welcome home. Listens to the show on his way to work every morning during the commute, checks out the podcast to catch up on anything that was missed, and loves uh, the chemistry between all five members here. Uh, let me see. Favorite moment, uh, favorite moments. Whenever I lose my cool, uh, he appreciates Moon's personality, learns comedy, raves incredibly witty and funny jokes. And loves King Scott's hair. Nice. Thank you. Jake Bierman from Arnold is our Team Riz member of the day. Gets a super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up. 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. All right. We will take a break. We'll come back with Crab on Celebrities. It is 710. It is Wednesday. It's the Riz Show presented by the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.racewaye.com. We have a right-hand shoulder block due to a crash 70 eastbound at Missouri 79. Severe delays now there, 70 eastbound at Veterans Memorial Parkway uh, and uh, Mid-Rivers Mall Drive exits. Your point forecast today is going to be cold, windy, high of 39. Right now it is 26 at the point studio. All right, learn what he got for us. Could there be more Van Halen books coming our way? Ronnie Radke, what the hell is going on with you? Rafe gets his second chance at Willie's bus. And who did OnlyFans save this week? Uh huh. All right, we got that. We got your crappy birthdays. We got the porno birthday. All that and more next. And your crab on somebody. Stay there. All right, so here we are backstage, uh, way back Point Fest, and we are absolutely thrilled. Myself, uh, Mr. Jeff Burton. Thank you. It's thrilling to be here with you. Oh, you're talking about that. <laughs> right, <Sorry>. right, right. <laughs> noodles and peanut. Gentlemen, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming back. You guys get along like me and Noodles get along. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I can see that. Sure. It's yeah. pretty, it's, I mean, like, we have known each other for a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, like, kind of the there same, are, right? there are, I mean, he was at my bachelor party, for goodness yeah. sake. So, you know what I mean? February day tomorrow. Uh, you know, February is a month for love. And when was the last time you gave your carpet? The love and attention it really, really deserves. Now, have you gotten down on your hands and knees and adored how clean and refreshed that carpet was? Or are you scared of what you might see or what you might smell? Not only is your carpet one of the biggest uh, investments in your home, it's also the biggest air filter in your home. 
If your carpet has not been professionally cleaned, you are breathing unhealthy levels of dirt, dander, bacteria. All that stuff is recirculating again and again and again in the house. Lucky for you, Zero Res. Zero Res is there for all of us. Going to spread the love to you and your home with their Love Your Rug February special. Now, first off, Zero Res has over 5,000 Google reviews with a 4.9 rating, which is incredible. So this month, get three rooms, zero resified, starting at 119 plus a free hallway. And don't forget about your air ducts. That's a dirt and dander's favorite item place. This month, take 50 bucks off when you get your air ducts, zero res clean. So give them a call right now, 314-474-2020, or you can book online anytime, zeroresstl.com, so you want their ratio special. Spell forward or backward, it spells the same, it's zero res. Well, gentlemen, we will see you in St. Louis on Sunday. We are so excited to have Point Fest back and to have you guys be a part of it. But I want to kind of talk about this from a couple of different angles, all right? First and foremost, the crew that you have working with you in the Seether camp, I'm sure is scaled down uh, because of, you know, the craziness that is the pandemic. But can you talk about, like, sort of, what the crew is doing now, added responsibility that they weren't doing before to keep you guys safe for all these shows, just so you can play them? Go ahead, Johnny. Uh, actually, for us, our little, our little world, obviously, you know, venues will have different rules, mass mandates backstage. Our crew, uh, we're, we still have a full crew. We have our regular setup, oh, you know, our techs great. and front of house. So, uh, it's it's such a healthy thing and a great thing to be playing shows again, man. This time last year, we never, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, here we are doing shows again. And it's it was the first one was almost like a spiritual experience. It was a show in Ohio. And it was just so great to be on stage playing music, you know, being a band and doing what we do, man. I missed it so much. So uh, yeah, it, it's, I, it's, I, it's, it's a great thing. I've talked to a couple of folks, you know, like, myself that are in the industry and 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 we're very lucky to be able to go to a lot of shows you know but sometimes unfortunately in the job sometimes there's burnout that creeps in even for going to concerts and when i guess it was a couple of months into the pandemic i was like i don't know how i'm going to get through this without more live music because it had been the longest that i've been since i was like 15 since i had been to a show and when i finally got back to a show oh god that, you know, like just everything about it. I had a beer in the hand. It yeah. was loud. There was thousands. Of, it was Smith Systems. Check out a special offer now waiting for you at moonloveswoods.com because I do love woods. I love woods basement systems and all they did for me on my settling uh, front porch situation. My whole front porch was awful. It looked terrible. It was horrible for a uh, curb appeal. And to, to tell you the truth, it was an absolute safety hazard. The thing was hanging down and the it support, you know, it's it's supporting like a roof that was also coming down. It was bad. And I found out that Woods does, um, you know, concrete lifting and all that. And not only that, they do concrete leveling where they did, they raised a highway slab. So if they could do that, they could do my, uh, my driveway or my front porch. And they did. Not only did they do that, but they also installed piers so it's fixed forever uh, and of course they can do the same for you and of course all things basement -y. so basement waterproofing foundation repair crawl space repair mold prevention egress windows they are the absolute authority when it comes to all of those things go see that special offer waiting for you at moonloveswoods.com there's a special offer don't wait any longer prevent further damage because these problems they don't get better with time they get better with woods because the problem will be fixed forever. Woods Basement Systems, the all things basement the experts, special offer at moonloveswoods.com. Will there be celebrity guests on this show? Who does number two work for? Have you ever wondered what your boss's bathroom routine is like? Well, me neither. But we might find out today whether we like it or not on the number two show. In the wild ecosystem of the workplace, there's a unique species we've all encountered and have to navigate. The boss. Ugh. Just as David Attenborough would guide us through the behaviors of lions and gazelles on the African plains, let me take you on an office safari. You won't need binoculars. 
but perhaps a strong cup of coffee or a sneaky sip of the flask you keep in your top drawer, Frank. That's right, Frank. We all know about the whiskey. Get a handle on things. From the prowling micromanager to the elusive Captain Cryptic, here's a glimpse into a few of the bosses you're bound to run into during your 9 to 5 jungle adventure. Hey, can we get a cool graphic right there? Like a, I don't know, like a cutaway to like a guy in a safari hat that's like, Welcome to the jungle! And it's like, rawr, like a big jaguar noise. No. Okay, moving on with the monologue. The micromanager from hell. Stalks your every click like a digital big brother. If they could, they'd probably control your mouse pointer from their office. Personal space? They ain't never even heard of it. They want to camp out in your ass like it's Yosemite. The Ghost Boss. Paranormal edition. Woo! Sightings are rarer than Bigfoot, but their cryptic midnight emails haunt your inbox and are damn near as blurry and unclear. You may never see them, but their passive-aggressive notes are proof enough that the truth is out there. Woo. The parent boss, but not really. They drop outdated slang, dab unironically, and think that TikTok is a brand of smartwatch. They're hip, they're cool, and they're dying to tell you a dad joke that will toe the line of getting HR involved. In a world where your boss could be a friend, a foe, or a complete enigma, navigating the workplace becomes a dark comedy in and of itself. Each day is a roll of the dice, a game of chance, or a slow descent into corporate madness. Did you know that when you choose Hoppin Brothers for your home services, uh, the rest of this month and next month, March, you're not just improving your home, but you're also helping our furry friends at Stray Rescue of St. Louis. That's right, Hoppin Brothers, they partner with Stray Rescue of St. Louis, and for every home service appointment during these months, the rest of this month and next month, they will contribute to supporting Stray Rescue's mission of rescuing and caring for stray animals right here in our community. Whether it's heating repairs or maintenance, installation, plumbing, or electrical services, you can trust that Hoppin' Brothers, they will not only take care of your home, but they're also going to make a difference in the lives of animals in need. I have Hoppin' Brothers coming to my house on Monday. We'll be doing a little, uh, a little appliance repair. Yeah, that's right. I broke my stove. It's okay. Hoppin' Brothers will take care of it. So make your home service appointment with Hoppin' Brothers today and join them in supporting Stray Rescue of St. Louis. Visit them online, hoffmanbros.com slash rescue. That's Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N-N, bros.com slash rescue. Hoppin' Brothers is an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. All right, so uh, here we are uh, backstage, the Stiefel Theater. Mr. Nathaniel Ratliff, how you doing, sir? I'm great. I've heard there's been some uh, going back and forth about the pronunciation of the theater because this used to be the Keel Auditorium, right? It was Keel. Right. Then they changed it to the, oh gosh, what was it before this? It was the Peabody. Peabody. And now Robert the Stiefel. Howe. Okay, Stiefel. Well, what are you hearing on your side of things? I've heard people say Stiefel, Stiefel, you know. I also, until, you know, we got here, thought it was still Peabody. So. Right. Well, you know what? Welcome I back to the Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams, 1057thepoint.com slash Riz. The socials at R-I-Z-Z Show. Your emails, Riz Show at 1057thepoint.com. We'll talk to Chris Kerber later. Uh, Blues lost last night, unfortunately. They are out of the playoff spot that they once held last week. So, Curbs, what's going on with the Blues? We'll uh, we'll find out later. Also, we'll play Riz Show Password. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have a couple pairs of tickets left to, uh, to Riz Show Live, which is happening on Saturday over the pageant. Courtesy of Yingling and Hat Launch. Also, tickets to go see Jelly Roll, Primus and Coheed and Cambria, and sold-out tickets to go see Beartooth. Uh, people loved your karaoke yesterday, Lauren. Oh, thank you so much. I think You're they like the ducks, the geese the most. Sick karaoke. <laughs> it was sick. Sick karaoke. Sing uh, Mariah Carey, or you attempted to sing. Yeah. Mariah Carey. You sounded like an angel. Sick thank angel, you. but. Appreciate that. We love karaoke. I, when was the last time we heard from uh, Bev and Bob? How are they doing? Are they still uploading videos? Uh, I, a new one. I think so, yeah. Oh, they got a new one? Well, let's see here. 
I want to say new, but it's a couple months old. You know, you know we know Bev and Bob. Wigga, grab grab for the little nigga. I start to make with a shaker. Why you need to keep on the table? Here you go, create another fable. Grab grab for the little nigga. They're in their basement having a good time. I love that. Toby Keith, that's what it was. When he passed, they oh. Really- oh, they put a Toby Keith that's tribute right. up. right. Huh? How sweet of them. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, Bev and Bob's, this one. Oh, Ace. This is the one that. This is the one. This one. Oh, ah! Yes. Oh, ah! Ah, that's a song that put them on the map. Yeah, I love that. Somebody yeah, song good too. Somebody sent me a bunch of uh, drunk people singing karaoke. Oh, do you have the audio? <laughs> I do. Oh, great. I do. Uh, all right, you tell me what song they're uh, attempting to sing. Purple Rain. <laughs> what? I knew Prince was still alive. That was me last Saturday. What about uh, this one? We're on. I love it. Oh, what about this one here? I'm going out tonight. I'm feeling alright. Gonna let it all be. I am. I'm going to really raise my voice. Yeah, I'm screaming. Yeah. That's the uh, Alabama dirtbag. I can't with that one. How about this classic? Wow, dude. Hey, that, like rem- that. that reminds me. So, uh, so Alabama Dirtbags does like all country sing along. Yeah, you're, right? yeah, your cover band. Yeah, and we do, uh, and we do, um, man, I feel like a woman. Yeah, right. Because like it's I've heard a, you do it a million times, dude. It's a shredder song. It's so fun. Yeah. Just a few weeks ago, we actually figured out because, and it took us years. Years ago, we played like kind of like a like a country festival, like you know, kind of out in the not in the boonies. A, yeah, yeah, and. Um, we were supposed to play for an hour, I believe. Like the 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 country set was supposed to be an hour, and we played, uh, I think, about twenty minutes. And the event organizers were like, "That's enough. You're good. Thanks, man." And they, and they 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 were like, "You can go." And and we're like, "Okay, cool. Maybe we must have run over on the first set, right?" Yeah, dude. I think we figured it out just a couple of weeks ago because we, we were talking about that show. That was the last song we played. I think we played "Man, I Feel Like a Woman," and they were offended. And, and and shut us down. Oh, you think it was like a I think they shut transsexual us thing? I, like uh, I, maybe like a, a, some PC, <laughs> some, some, some political thing going on or something. I, I, <laughs> really? Dude, really? And we and we didn't even think about it at the time because like it's just a fun wait, song. I'm just singing wait, a song, wait, wait, man. You're telling me a man is yeah, singing and about I, being, singing a woman. About being right. a woman, and I didn't even think about it. We <laughs> uh, and we ham it up, dude. You know, because yeah. I mean, the, the whole band, like the uh, the Alabama Dirtbags. First of all, listen, you didn't have to tuck. Some guy came storming out of yeah. a unisex bathroom, like there's think, a line, dude. I think that <laughs> there's actually, a line. I think that did happen. I think that did happen. We put it all together. We're like, we only played five songs. It was our fifth song in, or maybe fourth song in. We played twenty minutes, and they killed us. And the, and. And we didn't even think about it at the time. Maybe that was it. And and here's the thing: like the whole point of that band is, um, first of all, to shred those country songs and yeah. like make them sound awesome. But, dude, no offense to every other country band out there, like all these country cover bands and whatever, they take themselves so freaking seriously right. that we wanted to be like the the band that's just a fun. It's like a fun party country band. And, Again, and you didn't have to tuck your penis between your legs when you sang that song. Maybe that was a bit over the top. I, do, I didn't even think, we didn't even think about it until a couple of weeks ago we were rehearsing something and uh, and it all, like, you know, it all came together. There it we, is. Yeah. <laughs> we offended somebody with that. What was the festival? 
I'm not gonna say it was a. Uh, oh, it was man. fun. It was awesome. It was freaking great. That was the thing. It was so, it was so cool that it didn't even dawn on us that we may have offended somebody. Yeah, like yeah. you know, really upset somebody. Ah, sensitivity, man. Everything was perfect. Dude, apparently not. And and listen, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe we did run out of time, it and they just curfew. wanted to get us off. St no, it was in the middle of the day. But that, yeah, coincidentally, <laughs> that song, huh? Interesting. Yeah, that happened to be the last song, and then they're like, "You're good, thanks, guys." All right, <laughs> All right what's, that's it. What's this song? <laughs> Uh, one that. more, one more. Who's this? Blame it all on my roots. Yeah. Man. I showed up in boots. This is when he played with Garth. And ruined <laughs> the Niners affair. Travis. Oh, boy. The last one to know. We were the last one to show. We were the last one they <laughs> thought they'd see there. And I saw the All right, Travis Kelsey, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, today is February the 28th, back in the day 41 years ago today, 1983, at the end of its 11th season, the final episode of MASH aired on CBS. The special two-and-a-half-hour finale was watched by 106 million people. Wow, it's not bad. 77% of the TV viewing audience watched the season finale of MASH. That is wild. Uh, 40 years ago, in 1984, Michael Jackson won a record eight Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year for Thriller and Record of the Year for Beat It. Police won for Best Song with Every Breath You Take, and Culture Club was the best new artist. 35 years ago, 1989, Coach, starring Craig T. Nelson, debuted on ABC. That lasted until 1997. Good run for that show. That was a good show. That was a good show. Uh, 31 years ago, 1993, a 51-day standoff in Waco, Texas, began after four federal agents and six Branch Davidians were killed during a raid as agents tried to serve warrants to David Koresh and his followers. Man, was that just a perfect storm of not good. Yep. 28 years ago, 1996, 22-year-old Alanis Morissette becomes the youngest artist to win the Grammy of the Year, uh, the Grammy for Album of the Year for uh, Jenny Little Pill. Hey, man, did you swallow one of those, uh, those whistles? <laughs> yeah. Those whistle things of... Yeah. <laughs> Sound like you got one in your... You want to lose? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, 22 year old Linus Morissette won for uh, Album of the Year for Jay Little Pill. She held the record until 2010 when uh, Taylor Swift was 20, when she won for Fearless. And 11 years ago in 2013, Pope Benedict XVI broke tradition and resigned from office. He was the first pope to do so in almost 600 years. Uh, now we have Pope Francis. Benedict was uh, Pope Emeritus until his death in 2022. Yeah, that was weird, wasn't it? What's that? My uh, throat the, whistle. The, the <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting over this cold. I, I, I was, yeah, I was concerned for you. I don't know if anybody could hear that or not. Oh, dude, oh, the man. planet heard it. Damn. I kept looking around in the different corners of the room. You didn't see all those cars swerve Damn. out there? Damn. <laughs> all right, <laughs> that's what happened back in the day. And... I thought I could just hear that. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your Crab on Celebrities. And it's brought to you by... Bright House Plumbing. Call the best. Flush the rest. Brighthouseco.com. 636-600-0188. Uh, with last week's news that Alex Van Halen is writing an autobiography titled Brothers, uh, Michael Anthony was asked while he was on the Rock Legends cruise if he's going to follow suit as well. And he said when Sammy Hagar published his Read My Uncensored Life in Rock in 2011, he was approached by the same publisher and says, I haven't felt that it's time yet. Um, here's a little bit of Michael Anthony talking about that conversation. Uh, Michael Anthony. I don't know, maybe I'm just waiting to let all these guys get all their s*** out, and then I'll straighten everybody out on what's going on. <laughs> no. You never know. I, I think about it quite a lot now. I haven't spoken with Alex in a while, but uh, I'm sure his book, there's going to be a lot of insight into his and his brother's relationship, because I'll tell you, I never played with two musicians that were more locked musically and spiritually in, in every way than uh, Eddie and Alex were. Sometimes it would be a nightmare. Other times it was like I died and went to heaven. Oh. Mostly died and went to heaven. But I'm sure it's going to be a great book. Hmm. 
Brothers will be out on October 22nd. It's 384 pages. And if you want to collect all the other ones, um, David Lee Roth's Crazy from the Heat ah, yes. <laughs> from 97 is another one. Okay, so Alex out. Van Halen's got a 380-page book coming out. Yep. And nobody's heard from Alex since Eddie passed. Right. I look forward to this. I look forward to knowing what's in his brain. And I what? will get the audiobook. Yeah. I hope it, you think he would do an audio version? I couldn't even tell you what Alex Van Halen sounded Me like. Me neither. <laughs> I hope he does it. He's like, this is my voice. I hope he does it too. The story Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Mr. Hanky. Yeah. It's kind of one of my favorite know. parts about Alex Van Halen is that I've never heard him speak. He's so and, I, and I don't want to. Well, you're gonna. We're getting you the book. I don't. I don't want. I don't wanna. Well, you're gonna. You're gonna listen to it. And you're gonna like it. And you're gonna like it. <laughs> the stolen lyrics trial of Don Henley has released never before seen details of the singer and drummer's 1980 incident when a teen overdosed at his home. Don Henley's been in court all this week. All right. Um, so he's always maintained that this teenager who overdosed during the Eagles going away party, um, you know. This was a wild story. So this is the 80s? This is the 80s. The, doc, the docs reveal that he told the cops he was lonely one night at his home when he called an escort service. The letter Henley wrote to the cops continues that a 16-year-old came to his door and explained that she was only escorting to pay off a $2,000 cocaine debt. The two shared well, cocaine... come on in. The two shared cocaine when Henley shared that he was snorting the drug every time he got up to get a drink or go to the bathroom. Then Henley wrote that when he tried to have sex with this teenager, she told him that she didn't feel well and began to have a seizure. He offered to get her medical care, but then the teen appeared to be okay by the time paramedics arrived. By the time Henley's friend arrived to take the teen home, the Los Angeles Police Department sexually exploited child unit was at his house. Oh. And reports claimed at the time that investigators found 22 grams of cocaine, five ounces of marijuana, and a still naked teenager was charged with prostitution. Yeah, that's not mine. All of this. That's Henley pleaded mine. no mine. contest to the misdemeanor charge of contributing to the delinquency of a minor, and he was sentenced to two years probation, fined uh, $2,500. He's also, he was in court yesterday, because um, this is all about the handwritten drafts of lyrics to iconic songs like Hotel California. That were stolen, yeah. That were stolen. Um... It's just a big old, Don Henley's in a big old mess right yeah, now. Yeah, that's always been a story of Don, of Don Henley, that like 16-year-old girl incident back right. in the 80s. My whole thing is, you're Don Henley, and you... What's going on, you need Don? need to get a hooker? Right. You're, you're Don Henley at the height. And what was this escort service? At the height of eagledom. Like it was, it was human trafficking is what it sounds like in the 80s. Well... Like what the hell? Man. I'm sure a lot like, of these escort services are not on the up and up. No, but I, but there are escort no. services. There's sex work services that are completely legal, completely of age adults. And you're legal? Don Henley in the 80s. You have access to high end prostitution if you so, if you if are you so, so lonely, choose. It just doesn't make any sense, and it's awful. Mm. Uh, Falling in Reverse's website is down. Fans have noticed that frontman Ronnie Radke's Twitter account has also been deleted. Radke has stirred controversy. He's been sharing all sorts of different thoughts that we've all had to endure on his platforms, including thoughts on transphobia and using laptops during live performances. He's also done some good, though, too, on the social media platforms, like he helped pay off some credit card debt for a fan and medical expenses for another. But no word on the big announcement expected from Radke or his band of what's going on. So if you go to their website, it's, you know, like a... It's a blank domain, so falling in reverse fans are kind of confused. Falling in right reverse, now. they're 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 out on tour. Or are they going to be out on tour this spring? <laughs> they have been like last year. They were out on tour. Speaking of tour, Willie Nelson's Outlaw Music Festival is coming to St. Louis, September eighth, the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. Yeah. Bob Dylan is going to join Willie on all twenty six shows. We don't get Robert Plant and Allison Krauss. I wish we did. Um, on the first leg, John Mellencamp is on board for the second and third legs. Yeah, we got John Mellencamp here. We get we get John Mellencamp. So we have Willie and family, Bob Dylan, John Mellencamp, Sweet. Southern Avenue, which I don't know that band, uh, September 8th at Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. Right, and Rafe. Alison Krauss and Robert Plant are playing down in Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah, they're doing the Lake of the Ozarks. <laughs> oh, that's right. Show. Yeah. Rafe, we have until September 8th to get you on Willie's bus. Well... You'll get no guff from me on that. Let's make it happen. Now, last year, there w I don't think there was enough time. Right. Mm. To make it happen. We had like a month. We have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Well. We have, plenty we? Of, we have plenty of time. Get the ladder ready. No, I think we can get this done without having to sneak Rafe in anywhere. Okay. Don't you think? I mean. 
this God, I hope so, man, because we're running out of opportunities. We're up against it. He's 90 years old. Yeah, we're, we are up against the clock here. Got to get on. Operation Honeysuckle Rose has to be. Got to green light it, and I got to get in there. Got to get on his bus. Now, when you get on the bus, do you want to smoke with Willie? Is that a Preferably not, but that's the one time that I probably will be like. There's a few times that even in sobriety, I got to say, yeah. Yeah, see, if he asks you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be the guy that told Willie, nah. <laughs> or maybe if I did, he, I'd be his best friend. What if that happened? He's He'd like, like no, finally. One's, no one's ever told me no before, man. Ah. You're Who my knows? new best friend. I know you love me for me. By September, <laughs> you'll have braids too, you know? Maybe. Yeah. I'll braid up. All right, let's make this happen. I've been let's so close, man. I just, I got to make it happen and... You are up against, yeah, you're I up against I kind of know his here. son a little bit from when he used to play Stagger in, and that's how I got on the other bus, but it's like, that's, I don't want to ask Lucas, because I know everybody asks him, right. you know what I mean? He's trying to have his own career and do his own thing, like, I, wanna, I want this Lucas to be a Nelson. Legit, yeah. Okay. And I don't think he would, he doesn't know me well enough that I think he would do that anyway, but it would be, man. You may have to use every avenue. Dude, I, yeah. I would think we can get me some. Station cred. Right. Give me some credentials. Yeah, get an interview. Give me some WIL credentials for a day. Yeah, we have WIL next door. Yeah. I mean, that's a country station. Just let me go. Get them on the bus. God, that'd be awesome. It would be awesome. Avenged Sevenfold have released a teaser for their Amaze VR concert that can be viewed through Apple Vision Pro and MetaQuest headsets starting today, later this afternoon. I looked at the teaser on YouTube. Essentially, this is going to be a new way of getting, I guess, on stage with your favorite bands. So artists are going to be taking out equipment to create a VR experience. So like Jane's Addiction, one of your yes. favorite bands. You know, let's say they do this in the future. They will have a film crew come out and film a part of their tour, many dates of their tour, where you can see what it's like being on stage with your favorite bands or watching them from the crowd. You'll be able to like walk out into the crowd or mm. be on side stage or whatever. I think it's kind of cool. Neat. Uh, Taylor Swift really knew how to win over Travis Kelsey's teammates. Uh, Kansas City head coach Andy Reid just revealed that she baked homemade Pop-Tarts for the Chiefs God, offensive is she can't do? linemen. Is there anything she can't do? Homemade Pop-Tarts. Uh, mine had a cat hair in it. Well, that happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Reid said... Uh, Taylor Swift bakes, too? She does She's it amazing. all. Perfect yeah. woman. Amazing. Uh, Andy Reid said he missed out on the treats because... The minute those those pop tarts went to the linemen, every last one of it. them were gone. Uh, Sony Pitch Pictures is moving up the release date for the Bad Boys Four movie. The movie starring Will Smith and Martin Lawrence will now open in theaters on June seventh. Uh, the first Bad Boys opened in nineteen ninety five, and Bad Boys Two is the one that's the best out of all of them. I don't sure. think I've seen any of them. I've seen one and two. Bad Boys Two is awesome. I haven't seen Bad Boys Three. Bad Boys One is fine. Yeah, it's good. That's good. Bad Boys Two is great. That's where it's at. Uh, Dave Bautista says it, his time as playing Drax in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is over, but he's not turning his nose up at future superhero films. He said, when I said I was done, I was really just done with my journey as Drax. I still have a relationship with Marvel. They know that I would be up for a role. I love the universe, the superhero universe. I love it. I'm a fan. Made so a lot of money off it. Marvel yeah, or DC, if they call, I would answer the phone. And if the role makes sense, I'd be all over. He was he's so great, good. Dude. He's great. So he good he was tracks. great in that uh, in that Blade Runner update too. Um, did yeah. anybody see that Shyamalan uh, the M, M, M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan movie he did? Oh, with where they come to the house, it's the end of the world thing. And it's the uh, no, I haven't seen that. Two yeah. guys. I really the, wanted uh, to see it, and uh, and I never did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that this weekend. I didn't see it. Either. It looks very suspenseful. knock at the door, knock at the door, or, or something like that. Knock, yeah, yeah. Knock, yeah. And it's like the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. But he's 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 got like a like a button up shirt and glasses, and he comes in all Dave Batista style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, man, I want to see no it. Neck. He makes me want to see it. So speaking of that, so um, <laughs> advice for actors. Leonardo DiCaprio told Timothy Chalamet one time two pieces of advice for his Hollywood acting career. He said no Never hard Never play drugs. cards with a uh, the guy named after a city? No. Never sleep with a woman with a tattoo of a dagger? No. Oh. No hard drugs mm -hmm. and no superhero movies. And so it's kind of interesting. And Timothy Chalamet says he doesn't know if he would take Leo's advice on the superhero movie thing, because I guess he's been approached a couple of times for different ones. I mean, 
Dune's pretty close. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've already watch. done Dune. I gotta watch that first one. Everybody keeps saying that this new one is is the best sci fi movie, sci-fi of, all movie of, uh, yeah. of all time. Dang. It's not. You don't think? I don't think so. No. Why? The it's, new one? Is it called Hype? It was good. No, the, the, the Dune 2. Oh, I haven't it's seen the dropping, new one. Yeah. The Dune 2. I think it meant the new Dune 1. No, no, Dune 2. They're saying is. Okay. The, I don't think uh, it's out like yet. The special Verdict effects are going to be amazing. The whole thing. Uh, Steve says that Taylor Swift's Pop Tarts probably have icing all the way to the edge. Oh. And that's a bad Chicken thing? Oh, that's no, that's so, great. No, that's the best. He's like just saying. You know, I had a coach in my past that told me the greatest advice. He said there are th three rules to live by. Never get less than 12 hours sleep. Never play cards with a guy who is, has the first name uh, as a city. And never get involved with a woman with a tattoo of a dagger on her body. You stick to that, everything else is cream cheese. Nice. And you know what? what? Coach was right. Oh, man. What's that from? That's Teen Wolf. Oh, okay. <laughs> Drea Dimat the best quote. De Mate De uh, Dr Drea DiMatteo. De DiMatteo. De Drea DiMatteo. DiMatteo. Excuse me. Uh, from The Sopranos. Gorgeous woman. Yeah. Says she's lost everything because she refused to get the COVID vaccine. At one point, she said she had only $10 in her bank account. She was on the verge of losing her home. And then OnlyFans came to the rescue. She says, oh. it saved us. OnlyFans saved my life 100%. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it really did. Just five minutes after she posted her first risque photos, Drea had dug herself out of her financial hole, and she's definitely not sorry. She says, anybody that wants to condemn me or put me down for it, go for it. I just hope that you never find yourself in a position I was in to take care of two little kids. Gotta do what you gotta do. Is she still married to Shooter Jennings? Uh, That's what I was kind of curious her part, about. No, a partner <laughs> is Michael Devon. Oh, right. Shooter she was, she was with Shooter Jennings. I'm married to him. Who's Shooter Jennings? Yes. Waylon Jennings' Shooter's son. Who <clears throat> looks just like him. Huh. She's beautiful. Yeah. Man, when she dies in Sopranos, man. Whoa, whoa. Hey, I, haven't got I haven't gotten to that point. Oh. Aw, oh, man. Enough time has passed. What a terrible <laughs> person you are. It's only been 20 some years. <laughs> Uh, are we John Waters fans in this show? Uh, sure, he's got some interesting movies. Cry uh, Baby. I love Cry movie. Baby. Pecker, Serial Mom. Pink uh, Flamingo. Pink Flamingo. Uh, it's the all-time classic. He's the best. Uh, I just love it. If you ever get an opportunity to listen to John Waters in an interview, it's fantastic. But he's getting ready to shoot his first new movie in 20 years. It's called Liar Mouth, and it will star Aubrey Plaza. So look forward to that. Holy cow, he looks identical. Just with... Silver hair. I know. John Waters, yeah. I mean, he has not... The pencil mustache. Yeah, he's got the exact he's same excellent. look yeah, going on. he's in his 80s, right? Here's me in my 40s. Here's me in my 50s. Here's me in my 80s. Oh, 19, I'd be like... uh, 1946, so he's uh, 78. Looks good. It looks good. Wow, yeah, has not changed his look. Martha Stewart got candid about her decision to ditch underwear and revealed that she prefers to wear bathing suits. She told Page Six, I like wearing bathing suits under my clothes just in case I want to go swimming. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm cool with it. I wonder if there's any um, bad, you know, like, what? Can you develop, like, a yeast infection from wearing a bathing suit all the time? Uh, Tell me, Riz. I guess as long as you change it frequently. <laughs> I like to wear a parachute just in case I want to jump out of a plane. Hey, you never know. And ending crap on uh, on a sad note, uh, Gary Sinise's son, Mac, died after a yes, battle with cancer. Uh, yeah, he was 33 years old. Gary said Mac was, quote, an incredible inspiration to those who knew him and loved him. And he faced his battle with grace, courage, and love. Uh, he says, even with one setback after another, he never stopped living and learning, creating, giving, and loving. He loved all of our family. So thank you, Mac. You did it. Resurrection and Revival will live on, and so will you in our hearts forever. So hearts and love to uh, Gary Sinise's family. Apparently, it was a good, he was a good drummer. Was so he? Yeah, you know. Uh, in his band? In yeah, dad's band? Lieutenant yeah, Lieutenant Dan, Dan band. band. Yeah. Uh, That's the best, yeah, best name ever. Yeah, they play a lot of USO stuff. Sure. They play for you know, troops overseas a lot, and his son, mm -hmm. his son was the drummer. That's really sad. I love Gary Sinise. Gosh. Anyway, that's a crap on celebrities. Celebrities celebrating a birthday today. Jason Aldean is 47. Allie Larder. Remember her from uh, uh, Varsity the, Blues? Oh, yeah. Well, she, She's the whipped cream. Yeah, the whipped cream girl. Allie Larder is 48. Amanda Abington, the spy who married Dr. Watson on Sherlock, is 50. Robert Sean Leonard, three first names. Uh, that's uh, Dr. James Wilson on House. He's also the... Uh, He's a dude in Dead Poet Society. He's 55. Pat Monahan, lead singer of Train, is 55. Ray Don Chong, Tommy Chong's daughter, also starred opposite of Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando and was also, also in Soul Man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, also in the classic movie Soul Man. 63. Cindy Wilson from the B-52s is 67. John Turturro. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
The Jesus. Oh, man. So many. <clears throat> you ever seen Quiz Show? Nah. Yeah, it's great. Uh, where he plays... Uh, Herb Stemple? Yeah. He plays the guy that cheated or whatever. Yeah. Oh, man. And the movie's in black and white. Yeah, it's great. Oh, dude. He's what a best. Johnny Depp's in that, too, right? Uh, Is that a Depp film? Maybe not. Uh, That'd be just Turturro. So, I thought Johnny Depp played the poster, and, and maybe. somebody else. Dude, He's what? also, let me change your socks, Emilio in uh, Mr. D. Yeah, dude. Great actor. <laughs> you said it, man. John Turturro is 67. Bernadette Peters uh, is uh, 76. She was in The Jerk, Pennies from Heaven, and uh, uh, Mia's Mom in The Good Fight. And Robin Hood, Men in Tights. <laughs> Wait, what? That's the same gal? Yeah. The redheaded gal? Am I, am I wrong? Maid Marian? I think she's Maid Marian. No way. Turturro was good in Barton Fink, too. The Barton Fink. The Coen Brothers movie. Wait a second. This gal, the Maid Marian from Men in Tights? Oh, my gosh. I think you're right, dude. She is 76 years old today. So gorgeous. And uh, Mario Andretti, the racing legend, is 84 years old. Yeah, that is that is uh, Maid Marion. Uh, today's wow. porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is Tyler Houston. And today's birthday girl has been in 62 fine films, including Atomic Vixens, Bigger, The Black or the Better, 2, Chubby Cheeks 3, The Goo Girls 14, Lesbian Training 5, Pantyhose Porn Stars, School Bus Girls 3, The Whore Up My Door 3, and Who Can Forget a Roll in 2005's Vacuum Hose 7 Amateur Edition. Tyler Houston is 55 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll play Riz Show Password. Okay, guys. Good phones. Let's let's get it together. Oh, All right, Rachel listeners. Don't look at us. We got it together in here. Okay, so we'll get you on the phone. I'm already upset. <laughs> uh, 314. I don't even know why. No. 314 624 3833 or 618-398-3833. Maid Marion is not that old. Maid Marion is Amy Yazbek. Oh, you're right. She was in uh, the all, John Redder show. Do all redheads look the same to you? How dare Come on, you? Riz. Tell me they don't look alike. <sighs> Wow. Do all redheads look the same yes, to you? Redheaded, question. curly, You need to ladies. apologize to the redheaded yeah, people man. of America. I think you Thank offended you. the whole community. No, you're right. That's you pretty embarrassing. Us, Amy us all the and I'm ashamed right. to be a part of it. Wow. That's yeah. John Ritter's widow. Yeah. Which which one? Amy Asbeck. Beautiful. Good Beautiful. Night. You really blew that one. <laughs> you could bad. see... You could see the mistake, right? No, I really can't. Okay. Very distinct. Stop it. Distinctly different. You believe me for a second. <laughs> I said it so convincingly. I believe you because usually you're right on these things. Well, thank you, Moon. I, I need to stop right, believing guys, everything what? you say. Password. Racial password. All right. We'll get some contestants on the phone. Um, you better you have guys, full bars, dude. Don't, full bars on your phone. Don't call this show unless there's five full bars. Full bars. And listen to the clues. All right. You guys will pick a Riz Show teammate. Myself, Moon, Learn, or King Scott. Rafe will then... Rafe will then give us the password clue. That is correct. We will then give you one word clues, <laughs> and you will try to figure out what the password is. Mm -hmm. Some of the rules. The only real rules are listen. Listen. Uh, there won't be any proper nouns. Listen for uh, the contextual clues as they build. This will be an easier game for you to play if you do that. And... Uh, uh, if you say something and I say form of, that means you're dancing around, you're very close. For instance, if it, the word was pharmacy and you said pharmacist, I will say form of, you get one more chance to change the form of the word. Otherwise, we'll go to the next person. When we reach five rounds of incomplete, I will repeat all the clues. And then a sixth yes. clue will be given. And if you don't get it, you will be branded in a heretic. Okay. 314-624-3833-618-398-3833. Uh, best of three during your matchup. <clears throat> you have a chance to win the uh, the tickets for Risho Live, which is this coming Saturday at the pageant. Way sold out, courtesy of Yingling and Hat Launch. We got tickets to go see Jelly Roll October 23rd over at Enterprise. Tickets on sale Friday at 10 a.m. We have tickets to go see Primus with Code and Cambria, co-headlining show Saturday night, August 3rd at St. Louis Music Park. And we have tickets to the sold-out Beartooth show Saturday night, March 10th, over at Pops. Racial password, God help us, is next. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. God help Ratio us password, God help us edition is next. <laughs> <laughs> It's the Riz Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather, moon coming out. Traffic you. is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We got delays uh, 64 eastbound between 40 Drive and Bellevue. Uh, there's also a uh, right-hand shoulder block due to a crash 70 eastbound at Missouri 79. Your point forecast, cold and windy, high of 39. Right now it's 26 at the Point Studio. Hey, 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 how's it going, man? Hey, good to see you, good to see you. Have a, uh, have a seat, man. Just wanted to have a chat with you, King Scott's virginity, just to, just to talk with you real fast and just to say, first of all, thank you for everything that you've done for King Scott uh, and for his lovely fiance. And uh, I also wanted to say that you've been such a big, big, big part of our lives, you know, whether it's the show or just in our personal lives and relationships end and it's time for you to go. And I didn't want you to be shocked, to be surprised or anything. So I wanted to give you an idea of what's, what's gonna be happening on the wedding night, what's to come, so to speak. So. When two people are in love, they get married, but and then after they get married, they normally go away somewhere, someplace beautiful, and then they, they get... Thinking about buying a new home this year? You know, it's going to be spring, and you're going to see those four sale signs, uh, you know, up on... Up in, uh, up in front lawns on a million different houses this year. Uh, if you're thinking about buying a home, join local top real estate professionals for a free panel discussion on effectively navigating today's unique market. The panel is tomorrow. It's a free home buyer workshop tomorrow over at the Lodge in De Pere. It's from 7 to 8.30. If you want to get in, space is limited. You got to call Kevin Putney at 314-862-0123. He'll get you in. They will provide helpful tips and essential information on how to become the most successful kind of buyer, which is an informed buyer. There'll be a Q&A. They'll talk about preparing to buy a home, working with a real estate agent, home buying uh, do's and don'ts, you know, the roadmap, financing down payment assistance options, applying for a mortgage and documentation. Listen, buying a home, especially a first home, super intimidating, especially if you don't know what the hell you're doing. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to make any mistakes. So the home buyer workshop tomorrow, the lodge and the pair from 7 to 8.30. Call Kevin Putney. He'll get you in. 314-862-0123. Online at 123mortgage.com. Kevin Putney, equal housing opportunity. All loans subject to underwriting approval. Restrictions apply. Call for details. Cross Country Mortgage, LLC. NMLS 3029. MLSConsumerAccess.org. 123mortgage.com. 314-862-0123. of pain on 105.7 The Point. You are live with Liv, and I am backstage at the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater with Breaking Benjamin getting all of our swears out uh, so we don't do that on the air right now. Gentlemen, how are we? We're, We're good. Great. great. It's good to be good, here. Good. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. And I'm going to start off by saying something I said to Brent Smith a couple years ago, a couple days ago of Shinedown. I'm a fan before, you know, being a DJ and having a cool job. And I'm sure you guys can relate to that, too, that you're a fan first with so many of these acts. What does it mean for you guys to be out on the road with Bush and Alice in Chains? Well, we grew up with them, you yeah. know, so it's like surreal, you know. Um, they go back before our musical endeavors mm -hmm. into our real life as, sure. you know, whatever you want to call that. So it's really surreal to be talking to them and hanging with them and they know who we are like yeah. as people like, oh, hey, Ben, or hey, Jason. We're like, oh, my God. You know, yeah, it's, it's still getting used to it after. Two yeah, months. and it's been like yeah. two months. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a moment that of breakdown, I would think, between like being a fan and they seem so distant and now they're a peer. And I think that probably takes I a while to say digest. I, that's your word. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it took some liberty with that word. But, uh, <laughs> Closer yeah. than maybe the, the average. It's, it's awesome, yeah. <laughs> Quiet and respect. We're getting all the fans set up here because it is it's toasty. It is hot yeah, as. Good thing it's not hot today. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Because that fine. would be uncomfortable. It's fine. You can you can still get your tickets. It'll cool down when the sun goes yes, down. True, true. Hot sun and, and no swearing. 
<laughs> Where's all the fun Why in that? Why am I here? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm no, just kidding. I will say, again, as a fan, some of my favorite concert experiences have been at Breaking Benjamin shows. Yay. And I saw you guys last winter for your Unplugged tour. And that was cool as hell to have such an intimate experience with you guys after seeing you guys on such a huge stage like this. So what is that like from you guys to go from a tiny venue to a big venue? Like, what's the pros and cons of each? I think every band will say the same thing, you know? It's uh, more intimate, like mm -hmm. you said. And then this is just like, who wouldn't want this? You know, so it's totally different animals, but they yeah. both have their allure, and we like to do it all. And yeah. we like to play acoustic because it's like bare bones and, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, it, it's I mean, it's more raw. stripped down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's it really It's something is. we enjoy doing. We get to kind of be ourselves a little bit more. There's not as much of the pressures with productions and time frames and budgets. and. Yeah, it's more like, like hanging out. It really, that's yeah. how it felt as somebody that was at a show. I remember, I think, Ben, you were like, I got to take a piss. You walked off stage, and then you guys <laughs> just yep. busted into Hunger Strike. When that's you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But it's not as easy to do that yeah. when you have, you know, 15,000 people. I still would do that. <laughs> <laughs> so if Ben disappears from stage, uh, you know, I ha you know I have no. Yeah, yeah. you know I'm. I, you've seen us enough to know that I have no filter. It's, I just keep it real. If I got piss, I, hey guys, I'll be back. I take a dump. <laughs> Same time. I love that brutal yeah. honesty. Another thing I love about you guys. That, that hasn't I've, happened yet, thank God. Yeah, today, tonight's a new night, man. <laughs> yeah, to me. <laughs> no. I, another thing that I really love that I've seen you guys do and a handful of other bands do is, and I know you don't do this at every show, so if you're coming tonight, do not expect this, is halfway through the show, you'll just start bringing kids on stage. Now, what, what goes into that? Why, why is that something you guys do? Well, I've been doing it lately towards the end of this one because I've been seeing kids like singing every single word yeah. and just like having the greatest time and I think that they would if I think that they would like to because some people and I get it some mm -hmm. people are some kids are like oh, no no because they're sure. scared but I can tell the ones that are super like into it and want to and those are the ones that I like to you know, if they want to, they can. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's something you'll remember forever. Exactly. And, it, and they're already singing every word. They're already, like, with us, you know, so might as well be with us. Yeah. That's incredible. And it's a spontaneous thing. It's not something that... Yeah, I don't really plan it anymore. <laughs> it's all, I, I didn't really plan it before. It just, the mood strikes me. I sure. just, yeah, every show is a mood feeling thing. I don't like to be a machine of just like sure. repeating the same thing all the time sure that's one thing you get with a breaking benjamin show you get authenticity definitely good or bad thank you or bad hey <laughs> you gotta take the good with the bad yeah now looking forward uh plans for the future uh new music in the works anything that you can tell me we're always working okay so it's not like we're not working okay we're always working okay uh, but there's a lot of moving pieces too i, I yeah, think it's I safe have, to say i have a we get asked this question a lot and yeah. i have a, i have my answer to this one down <laughs> which is we're always like as individuals writing a lot of music okay and there and we do have a lot of songs whether any of those make it on to <laughs> what becomes the next album we don't know so sure. either we have the entire album already written or we have zero songs written <laughs> one or the other <laughs> yeah i love that and that's a good way any to put it collaborations plan i know you guys have a really incredible history of teaming up especially with female artists uh you that with Diamante doing Iris, Lacey, Valora, any chick collabs coming up? Well, those are not really, I, um, those aren't really like that's what we're aiming for. Sure. It just happens, you know. Sure. Um, me and Lacey and Jay, we all know Lacey, like a sis, she's like our sister, you know. <laughs> so that's like a. Citing St. Louis City SC News from our friends over at Schnooks. Now, the St. Louis City, Pla uh, City Player Pal Sweepstakes by Schnooks is back. It was such a hit last season, Schnooks bought it back for 2024. So player pals, if you didn't know, are the kids who walk uh, out onto the pitch with the starting lineups before the game. And your kid has a chance to be one. So all you have to do is be a Schnooks Awards member. Just download the Schnooks Awards app if you don't have it yet. And you'll see the sweepstakes right there on the homepage. And you clickety-click, and you're good to go. The sweepstakes is open now through March 5th. There's going to be 30 winners for three possible matches. Winners will win a player pal spot for their 7 to 11-year-old plus a player pal spot for a friend or sibling who is also 7 to 11 years old. So 45-year-old Creepsters, you are not eligible.
You just picture a 45-year-old guy walking out with a uh, City SC player hand-in-hand. That's weird. Uh, with Schnucks Rewards, you'll never walk alone, and neither will St. Louis City SC with the Schnucks Rewards Player Pals. Enter to win the STL City SC Player Pal sweepstakes today in the Schnucks Rewards app. Come on, City! This is King Scott, Ways of the Blades. Today I'm going to teach you swords. First, you want to start with the holiday special, the great way to start an attack. They'll never see it coming. Next, you want to use the Festus backswing, especially if they use the Matthew Perry. Now you want to finish with the Canterbury Slice. It's a great follow-up if they're using the Crom's Delight or the Miniature Poke. Thank you for watching. This is King Scott's Ways of the Blades. Now you know swords. And if only you could make a deal with God I know he'd places been running up that road Welcome back to the program, Rich Show, presented by the Fast Lane. Let's give away some stuff. All right, we're playing Riz Show Password. Okay, guys, here we go. It's time. Buckle up. Buckle up, buckaroos. Riz Show Password time. Okay, here's how it works. We get you on the phone. You pick a teammate, myself, Moon, Learn, or King Scott. Rafe will then give us the password. Mm-hmm. Your partner will then use one-word clues, and you will have to guess the password. Please pay attention. Oh, man. Okay, uh, two out of three wins, you win your choice of prizes. Racial Live tickets sold out Saturday, pageant, courtesy of Yingling and Hat Launch. Jelly Roll tickets, we got Primus and Cody and Cambria tickets, and tickets to go see Beartooth, sold out show, Saturday night, March 10th, over at Pops. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, Stacy in Farmington. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning. All right, Stacy, pick a teammate. Uh, let's go with you. Okay. Stacy and Riz sitting in a tree. Hang on one second. I'll lock you in. Uh, Mike and Fenton. Good morning, Mike. Hello, Ted. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Hello, Ted. All right, Mike, pick a teammate. Got to go with Moon. All right. All right. Mike and Moon. Stacy and Riz. All right, so Stacy, since uh, you picked me first, we will be going first as far as giving the clue. Rafe will now give us the clue. When you guys, whoever wins, what can play or pass from this point forward? Pay attention, for first, Mike. This will be your first word. Okay. All right, Stacy, you ready? Yes. Book. Book. Jungle Book? Okay, this is going to be a long day, I can already tell. Mike, fine, fine. Your, no, clue, your clue is fiction. Mm, fantasy. Okay. Okay. Romance. Ooh. Fifty Shades of Grey. Boy, it's gonna be one word, Stacey. guys. One word. One word. One word. <laughs> one, one word. The password. Very first thing Riz said when he explained the game. It's one, one word. Right. Word. Uh, Not we'll, a phrase. We'll here, Stacy. Because Moon and Mike ain't getting it. Mike, your word is new. Genre. Okay. This will be the fifth clue. Ah. Uh, <laughs> get it here. I will repeat them. Okay. Uh, Stacy, you with me still? Yes. Okay. Sci fi. <laughs> is it a cat or a kid? And sci fi uh, is one word. Sci dash fi. I'll allow it. Thank you. 
Uh, novel? Yes. Hey. Oh, the word yeah. was novel. Yeah. That's how we do it. That's how fines, we password. Baby. Wow. That's how we password. Yeah, that's Get great. The siphon that gave with, it away. It's a hyphenation of two words. I see. Oh, get the hell <laughs> out of here. Kidding. Oh, I'm kidding, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just okay. glad we got there because I was like, I, we thought we might have overshot it with new, and I was like, now we're in trouble. Okay. You want to play your pass? Rizzuto sure. has been given the second Stacey, password. Stacey, sure Mike knew the. Uh, you see the word? The synonyms. Oh, yes, I saw the word. I saw the word. Okay. Okay, uh, Stacy, I'm going to choose to pass. So Mike and Moon will get the first clue. Okay, Mike. The first clue is shades. Shades. Sunglasses. Yeah, baby. That's right. That's Damn. how you right. That is friend. right. That's how you Sunglasses. Password. That was the per that was the perfect clue. <laughs> was the perfect clue? It was the perfect clue. Well done. Mike, you rule, dude. Well done. Well done. All right. Uh, my, my no bad. moon, you rule. My bad for <laughs> passing there, Stacy. Comes, comes down to this. Comes down to this. Ooh. Moon, you may play or pass. Ooh. Final word in today's first password challenge has been administered to the... What's your cat's name? I have so much faith in Mike. I, oh, Leo. I will go ahead and take... Are you going to give the first I'm, clue? I'm going to do the first clue. All right, Stacy, pay attention. Mike and Moon are going to go first here. Mike, the first clue is Beats. Beats. Feet, F-E-E-T? No, Beats. B-E-A-T-S. Beats. Um, drums. Okay. Think about what he just heard. What are you talking Stop about? Stop talking and play the game. <laughs> what are you talking about right now? No, Moon had such a look of disappointment because oh. he thought he had it. No, no, I wasn't That's disappointed. Moon thought just, he had I'm it. Just, I'm just bummed. All right, Stacy, ready? Yes. Radio. Headphones? <laughs> yeah! Wow. Hey, Good job, Stacy. You, you wow. had it. He yeah, had it from Beats. He had it from yes. Beats. Yes. Beats. Yes. That's incredible. Wow. Dang. Radio. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, man. All right, I, thought, I thought we had it. All right. Good job, everybody. Dang. That was, that was good. I wasn't disappointed in Mike. I was just bummed that the second clue was going to get it. I thought I blew it. I thought you blew it, too. I I blew you it go, too. radio? <laughs> yeah, that's, honestly, <laughs> I did, too. Uh, I said radio, and I'm like, damn it. I, I was I disappointed. How did he get headphones from from radio? Well, if he if beats was not like drums, right, right, right. I was, and I said radio. You're that makes sense. That makes that sense. First clue. Man, dang. Well done, everybody. What, what clue would you have given? Cans. I, I don't know. Somebody out of I the industry know. would not. I don't know. I thought beats was gonna do it. <laughs> like in the biz, guys. You know, I didn't we're, think wearing, about we're wearing, you know we're all wearing headphones. We call them cans. Yeah, man. Our, let me ask you this: Is AirPods one word? Yeah. No. No. I don't think so. When you uh, type it in. Right? I, I thought it, it was a one word. And that was kind of the one I was like, this will be the unlocker. Yeah. yeah, it's one word. It is one word. All right. Someone said AirPods. It was going to be yeah. over. Bing bong. <clears throat> you got it with radio. Good yeah, job. Oh, I'm not listen. sure, though. If I would have heard beats and then Air AirPods, I would have been like... Music earbuds, or EDM. Right, right, right. Spotify. Like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure earbuds what direction been I would have been. One. That's a good movie, too, about a dog that gets mm. an NBA. And well, <laughs> that, was, that was, was good. Done. That was a good competition. Right. Good job, good Mike. Competition. Good job, Stacey. Good competition. Nathan, Sorry, hello. Mike. Yep. All right. Nathan, pick a teammate. You have uh, you have either uh, Learn or King Scott. Let's go Learn. Learn. All right. Nathan and Learn. All right. And Bill, hello. Good morning, Ray Show. All hey, right, man. Bill, you got King Scott, okay? Bill, is this Lucky. the Bill that's been asking for tickets? Yes, it is. All right, All right Bill, Bill. Here it is. You biffed it yesterday. Let's see what you got today. <laughs> Your chance. Oh, Redemption. Redemption. All right, pay attention. I believe guys. in you, brother. All right, so Rafe will show Learn and King's got the password. Uh, Nathan and Learn are first. Password is Rafe. Is okay. All right, the first password has been administered to both Learn and King Scott because Learn was chosen first. Learn, you will be first. Please tell Nathan. Can I play or pass? No, 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 you have, I have to, to play. play? No. You got to play right. this time. Then you can pass on the next one. Right. You cannot pass. Sorry, I don't know the rules. <laughs> All right, Nathan. Um, 
rain. Water? What did you say? You said water. <laughs> okay, Scott and Bill. Poppins. You said Poppins? Poppins. Poppins P O P P I N S. Umbrella. Hey. Oh, yeah. Umbrella yeah. was the word. Thank the you. word? Man, Rain I, Poppins. What was uh, my, uh, Mine would have been Rihanna, and I th probably yeah. would have... Mine would have been <laughs> Rain Cover. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it was Cover. Yeah. I thought Here, of both of those uh, words. I don't know. Man, that was impressive. All right, I'm very good impressed. Right, yes. Bill's got nice one. Word. Okay, next password. Hold on, I lost Poppins. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> dude. Thank you. All right. Okay. No, a password Edward. being given. Being administered. <laughs> King okay. Scott, you can play or pass. What would you choose? Um, I'll pass. King Scott chooses to pass, so learn. You will be first up with Nathan for the new password. All right. I'm going to say... Uh, ooh, I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> That's a tough one. You got this. Um. Okay, Nathan, I'm going to say the word janitor. Okay. Mop. Okay. I feel you. <laughs> you know what I'm too. talking about. Um, okay, I'm going to say locksmith. Watchman? Locksmith. 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 <laughs> uh, custodian? Okay, and we are off. All right, here we go. Nathan? <laughs> Unlock. Yep. Unlock. Oh. Man. Um. Come on. Five I'll seconds. Three, two, one. Yeah, okay. okay. No guess. <laughs> Scott. All right. We got it right here. This is the one. There's Fob. Oh, sorry. Fob. Fob. Key. Form of. Uh, lock key. Uh, oh, my God. Lock. Okay. Lock. Here we go, Nathan. Yeah. Jangly. <laughs> That's... I don't know about jangly, but I was going to say skeleton key. It's two words. Okay. okay. Oh, shoot. Dang Rafe, it. My bad. Rafe, <laughs> going to repeat five. the five. Janitor, locksmith, unlock, fob, and jangly. Jangly. <laughs> it's back to Scott. <laughs> back to Scott and Bill for the win. Key ring. Oh, Rafe. Uh, form of. Form of. Here. Would you like a clue? Key ring. Key ring. You finally got your tickets, man. Congratulations. Dude, that He's was been a all week. tough one. That, yeah, that, right. That's a good I password. Know how to do that one. That was wow. a good password. Fob. Nice. Hey, nice and honestly, password. excellent clues. They, those were, uh, that was so yeah. hard. Yeah. I thought Jingly was it. I honestly I, thought you didn't think those were good? I said Jangly. I don't think that's a word. So. Oh, yeah, it is. Those were the best clues you could have given. Every time it came around to somebody else, I was like, what word one more round? did I say? And then you guys came around if, if you're ready. Do you, you have words? Okay. I got words. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, I got words. Great job, guys. All right. Cammy, you there? Yes. All right, Cammy, pick a teammate. Everybody's up for grabs here. Um, I'm going to go with Learn. Learn. All right, Cammy. Right, girl. And Learn. Tammy. Girl power. <laughs> Tammy or Cammy? Oh, Tammy. Tammy, yeah, I got the gunk like Lauren does. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Tammy. Tammy, Tammy, so. Tammy. Okay. Marty, hello. Hey, good morning, guys. All right, Marty, yeah. pick a teammate. Uh, Moon. Oh, thank God. Yeah, Marty. The M&Ms. <laughs> I, right. I like to... I like to... You like to quarterback. observe? <laughs> <laughs> you like to yell at us? I like to yeah, yell at you. Like to yell at us. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay, here we go. The first password being given to the crew... Okay. There it is. There it is. Okay. First password has been administered because Lauren was chosen first. She will go first with Tammy or Cammy. Oh, there's one word. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, 
<laughs> You're moving so much right now. Uh, I'm going. <laughs> uh, I think I know the word. Hang on. What am I saying? You know, write, to write it down. Write it down. Right. It is. Um, connect. That's it. I'm an idiot. Connect. You got it. This is stupid. Right, connect. Connect. What you got, Tammy? What was that? Um, connect. Connect what? Connect. Bad connection? Is that what you said? Connect phone lines? Phone line, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay phone line. Which... Okay, Marty? Let's not lead the witness yep. anymore. Your clue is swing line swing line um god what do they call that um <clears throat> oh boy come on oh man. my gosh come on man. <laughs> come, come on, on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh my gosh i know it dude uh, five man. seconds marty no, marty no. swing line uh, no, marty. Uh, oh my gosh one second marty oh my gosh no, marty. <laughs> Okay, okay. All right. Tammy. Tammy. Office. Computer. Okay. Can't believe we're going to a fourth year. Uh, <laughs> you too. Okay. Um. <sighs> fourth clue <laughs> for the first password is... Fastener. Hmm. Landline. Oh my God! Here we go. Um, I'm out of here. See you guys. <laughs> what was his guess? I don't know. Landline. Land, land 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 which is it's two words. Um, I think. Okay. Sure. Hey, hey, this is Tammy. Don't this listen to these boys. Off. Tammy. Oh my God. Tammy. Tammy. Hey. Snap. Snap. We are now off the path. No, stop it. What'd you say, Tammy? What'd you say? Stay for. Oh, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Oh no, she's on the oh, chat. She's on the, she's on the we chat. On the path. She's on the chat. The They're on the same cold meds somehow. She's on that the chat. Connected. Stapler. Thank God, Ow. Tammy. Marty, come that on. Makes no sense. Line. No one would have got that from Snap after that. I don't think anybody put it in we the We are on chat. the path. Yeah, you it's, never it, saw it's in the chat. Space? Oh, yeah, someone did. Conveniently in the chat just before the answer was given. Okay, Tammy and Learn. Come on, chat. Okay, next password. <laughs> All right. Good job learning, Tammy. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, Tammy and Learn. Learn, uh, you can play her pass. pass. What would you choose? I will pass. Learn has opted to pass <clears throat> to Marty and Moon. The second okay. password. Yeah, Marty. Have a connection. Here we go. Marty. Marty Moon. Ooh. Yes, sir. Come on. All right. The clue is coach. 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 Sports team. Sports. Two words. Okay. okay. But um, sports team was the guess. All right, Tammy. Right. Right. W R I T E. Tammy. Tammy, if you say something. I don't know. <laughs> what did she say? I don't have no. She's no guess. I don't even know what I said. Okay. You don't even know what it said. Okay. Moon All right. and Marty. Hmm. Man. Everything's on the line here. This is a tough one, yeah? Okay. Um, so password. Let's see. Hmm. Playbook. Hmm. Playbook. I'll allow it. I'm not sure if that's one word, but we're going to I think it is. I'm going to allow it. It's already out there. Um, teach. teach. Teacher. Okay. Um... <clears throat> 
uh, portable. Mm. Portable. <laughs> Coach, no, that was. No, I think she was saying back the words that have been said. Oh, what was your what was your yeah, Tammy? Sorry, Riz is being kind of an a hole right now. <laughs> You're free, you feel free to repeat the words to yourself yeah. and then come up with a guess. Yeah. What was your guess? Did you have a guess? She said coach. Okay. We're moving she on. She said coach. Oh, she did say coach. We defended you, Tammy. Yeah. How, dare, how dare you, Rafe? We okay. defended you, and <laughs> this you is the fifth clue. Here we go. <laughs> okay, Marty. Clue. Notepad. Mm. Scrapbook. Ooh. That was five. I'm going to read them back now. Your clues were coach, write, playbook, portable notepad. Learn. Yes. I believe it is your turn. All right, Tammy. <clears throat> um, manager. Oh, boy. Referee. <laughs> She's sitting on that one. Referee. No. Marty, the next clue is holder. Holder. H-O-L-D-E-R. Holder. Holder. Mm -hmm. I got nothing on that one. All right. I believe after seven, we scrap the word. And no, we no, no, we're, no, 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 we have to, we like to, we have to, okay. we're going, we got to see okay, this okay, okay. You know, I got, I got, I'm going a different route. I'm going, here oh, we go. This will, help. this will be helpful. Here we go. Um, doctor. God, the silence in Tammy's phone is oh. deafening. <sighs> Feel good. Moon and Marty. What did she say? Feel, Feel good. good. We're, we're off the <laughs> It's off the rails. Oh. Ah. Okay, oh, let's say... Um... <laughs> ah. Okay, let's say... <laughs> Man. <laughs> Football. People got it because people are are, are are texting in. Oh, oh my gosh! Um, playbook. That was already a clue, brother. That was one of my clues. Oh, clue. All right, may I suggest a pen? <laughs> um. <laughs> you love this, huh? Let's see. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You said oh, oh oh like you had something earlier. You had fake, I keep going faking? back to stupid Microsoft. What? No. Okay. No. I, I, I will not allow Shush. that clue. Shut up, Bruce. Shut up. Oh Microsoft. <laughs> it was going so well today. And then this one just really sucks. This is a terrible. You don't have a clue. Oh, okay. No. All right. I have a we're clue. at 10. I'm going to repeat. Well, we're now at 10 okay. clues given. Write them down. <laughs> Write these down. God damn it. <laughs> Coach. Write. Playbook. Portable. Notepad. Manager. Holder. Doctor. Football, and for some goddamn reason, Microsoft. <laughs> okay. Now, Marty, Marty, you'll be given a clue by Moon. Paper. <laughs> Come on, lock in, Marty. Lock in, Marty. <laughs> Scoreboard. Scoreboard. Oh you know what? No. I'm going to say form of. <laughs> oh. What? No. no. Yes, it's in there. Huh. Okay, it is. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. It... I'm going to say form of because I want this to be over. <laughs> Marty, he's scorekeeper. No. God damn it. I was looking for one word. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Learn, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> pull your, pull your 
to stop gathering data. Oh, my God. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, this is the longest password. <laughs> we're, no, we're going until we get it right. Yeah, I don't care man. if we go to 10 o'clock. We're going we're gonna Donnie. We're gonna uh, run I need a bigger Donnie, paper. <laughs> Uh, I don't care if we go to 10 o'clock. We're, we're getting this. This is a point of contention now. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> office. Clipboard. Clipboard. Oh! She said it. <laughs> she said it. Where is it going? Tammy. Yes. Tammy. Oh, God. Thank God, Tammy. Oh, Hang on. they won. Imagine we had to do another one. Wow. Clipboard. Oh, dude. Clipboard. Clipboard for the win. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Good job. You guys did. I thought you guys her, no, no. Clue I, givers. I, I thought her paper. I thought her. I said paper. I thought her, her Microsoft clue is actually pretty easy. Yeah, Microsoft you always, clipboard. You know, yeah, control C, you, clipboard. Yeah, that's, yeah. It goes to your clipboard. You should have started with I get paper, that. I think. We had I paper in there, man. Yeah, there's the last one of the last clues. Do you think they were high on attention? You think if I would have started with paper, they'd have gone a clipboard? He said scoreboard. I said swing line. He said scoreboard earlier. <laughs> what? He said scoreboard. Yeah, what does that have to do with paper? Well, he's thinking coach football. Scoreboard. Paper, writing things and write, down. Uh, I yeah. mean, coach, playbook, hey, notepad. Doctor. We doctor got that. Doctor. That was the longest. No, no, I know doctor. I think that might have been the longest one we've ever done. Yeah, for and sure. I don't know if wow. you've ever been to ER, but they always have a scoreboard up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doctor, <laughs> scoreboard. <laughs> Surgery. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Wow. Oh, no, man. That was a good time, huh? Yeah. No, that, was, that was All good. Right. <laughs> scoreboard, Chris Kerber. Next. We'll chat uh, some blues hockey. It is uh, 828. <laughs> it is <laughs> Wednesday. I think Tammy's my soulmate. I, I think I just met my soulmate. <laughs> like, Riz Show like, presented like, by the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather. Moon coming. Perfect out. partner. Traffic oh. is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. Two lanes blocked due to a crash. 270 northbound at 44. Uh, we also have uh, left lane blocked due to a crash 170 southbound at Airport Road. Your point forecast, cold and windy, high of 39. Right now it's clipboard at 27 at the point studio. Hey, everybody, it's uh, Jeff Burton from the Rizzuto Show. Thanks for uh, tuning in to the Facebook uh, Takeover with, my goodness, Taylor Momsen. How you doing? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm going to get the geeky fan side of this out of the way first, which nobody watching is going to be surprised about. But I've been a fan for a while. You and I have chatted a handful of times. And the last couple of times that we did it, I, I'm sure you don't remember this, but we do a picture together and I started collecting them. Can you see that? Oh, shit. Look oh at how, look at you. I think you're 17 in that first one. I, baby. I am a baby in that one. Look yeah. at you. Is that the I know. I was, I'm, I'm, you were a baby. I'm still an old man. So. No, no. Yeah. It's, uh, that's great. That's R&R Tire Express. R&R Midwest.com. That is the website. Everybody needs a little R&R in your life, especially if you know, and I know that you know, if you know. That your tires are just uh, unhealthy. They're dangerous. You are taking kids to school every day. You're taking yourself to work. Uh, like the only part of your car that's touching the ground are the tires. Make sure that you have the tires that you need so you can stay safe. Pay-as-you-go programs over at r, &R Tire Express that fit your budget. They'll even fit your time budget to get you in there. Uh, you can call them. You can text them. You can visit the local store. You can Google them. Uh, they will work, again, with your time and with your uh, pay. You can pay weekly or bi-weekly with your paychecks. Pay monthly. You can pay more than the minimum payment to get it paid off quicker and save money. And tax time is deal time. r, &R Tire Express is going to match payments all month long. That that is huge. Again, flexible payment options, peace of mind coverage that includes free tire installation, free rotations, free flat repair, and more. Everybody's approved. Check them out now. rnrmidwest.com. Four area locations. Again, call them. Everybody needs a little R&R. rnrmidwest.com. Well, here we are, music record shop, and uh, it's Donnie. We've got Giannis, we've got Jimmy, and we've got Alex, our grand prize winner. And quite simply, gentlemen, for the next little while, we're just going to go record shop. Wicked. Well, which sounds fantastic. So we'll check in when uh, when we get done. Let everybody kind of get after it. But like, do you have a plan when you're going into a, a, a no, record shop? No, I'm just going to go at it with a frenzy. All right, yeah. very good. Well, we love that. All right, so here at music record shop, we're getting after it. We'll check in with you in a bit. Did 
you ever stop collecting vinyl, or have you just always? I've, done it? Yeah, I mean, from when I started buying vinyl, largely because sh- a lot of the shows I went to when I was younger um, were like punk. You know, they were like punk shows. So the only the bands that I liked, they would just put out seven inch. Mm-hmm. So I, I was like, I, and I wanted the music, so I was like, I bought it and then I, I bought a crappy turntable. I've kind of started going back and buying a lot of punk vinyl, oh, cool. um, of stuff that I never had before, and bands that I've just now kind of rediscovered that everybody says are great. Yeah. You know, like Minutemen, where we're a band that I've known of but never really knew. Yeah, the on tour, it's a reason to go out for a walk, to go to the record store, and like, you know, what I mean, it's like, it's, I like the, I like going to actual record shops. Is it a pretty fairly common thing that you do? Yeah, on, yeah, yeah, on tour definitely, and in London I go I go record shopping, yeah. Bit. Just so we know, I'm getting this from Moon. But I mean, I would put it into my collection. I'm just not saying. I'm just saying I'm getting this from Moon because I think he loves this movie, if I'm not mistaken. And then if you don't, I am going to keep it for myself. I saw an article today that your record is the second biggest seller on vinyl in 2019. It's the biggest in the UK. In, in the, the UK, UK, it's the biggest. It's the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. The official chart. Put a tweet out yesterday. Right? Yeah. Unless it's been, unless something's changed in the last few years, it's the biggest. What was crazy was it was like you guys, Queen, Pink Floyd. Yeah, like, like it, it was, was all like catalog stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Are you a big David Bowie fan? Uh, yeah. If yeah. I were to buy a non greatest hits David Bowie record, what would you recommend? Uh, my favorite's Low. Okay. He, he, I mean, he's just another one of the ones that um, you know knew of as I was growing up, but yeah. it just took me until I was a little bit older, I think, to kind of appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And like we devour, we have like the greatest hits, like we have two volumes of the greatest hits, and like every time we have it on, we're like, why do we not have it? Like yeah. we know these songs and they're great, but there's gotta be flipping tons more out yeah, there. Yeah. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves Absolutely. and enjoy uh, yeah. searching, but Pleasure. I just wanted everybody to kind of go with, maybe show a couple things in which that they got, and I'm gonna start. I've been looking for David Bowie to get that was an actual proper record and not a greatest hits. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so Jimmy told me to get this one and recommended this one. And then for uh, comedic purposes, and I couldn't leave it alone, the Martin Mole stand-up record for $3.99. I just figured we'll give it a go. What what, what the heck? What do we got? Alex, what do you got? I started out with some Leonard Skinner. I think that uh, the Leonard Skinner greatest hits was stuck in my dad's CD player for like 10 years. So (laughs) I know every word to every song. The Gorillaz. Uh, album and it's I gotten a lot of praise since picking it out, but <laughs> I enjoyed it growing up. Um, it was a great like crossover between alternative and hip hop and you yeah. know multiple feels. Yeah. Very happy to see that they had some brand new here. Brand new is my favorite band. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, Sweet. I love brand new. I got a few things. I got an Afghan uh, pop compilation. Which is I've heard one of the tracks before. It's great. Ooh, talk, talk, talk. BBC sessions. This is probably our band's favourite band. Yeah. And I didn't tell Jimmy as I found that one because I knew that he'd work. <laughs> and then I just got some classics that are overdue for me having on vinyl, like Radiohead Kid A, uh, Cigaros, Paul Simon. I got Devo's first album on Picture Disc, which is great. That's awesome. I got a King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard album, which I really like, called Oddments. It's a slightly weird one. Uh, got the new Earl Sweatshirt album, which is That's really good. That's great. It's a great That's record. very nice. Uh, Moon Safari by Air. Absolute classic. Simon and Garfunkel, Wednesday morning, 3 a.m. Very good. That's nice. And then an On Your Tricks Point Never record that I think might be all right. Well, guys, I-, I hope we all had a good time. Alex, hope you had a great time. Yes. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Yesterday, spending time out on the deck. My deck, courtesy of Chester Fence Deck. When we bought our house back in... 2018? Yeah, I think 2018. The, the, the deck was in, in disrepair. And we we're trying to put band-aids on it. Like the railings were loose. We have to tell people, please, for your for your health and safety, don't lean against the rail because you could plummet to your death. Uh so we, we eventually had to do it. We had to we had to bite the bullet. We had to call on Chesterfield Vents and Deck, and they did a tear down of the old deck and put up a gorgeous new deck. They used their own crews, they used their own tools. Um we did the underdecking. We did the uh, the concrete patio. They did it all. Everything was in house over there, and we couldn't be happier. Chesterfield Fence and Deck in business for fifty six years. Fences, decks, sunrooms, screen rooms, patios, retaining walls, windows. They're a company you could trust with your biggest investment in your home. Locally owned and operated. All the products are guaranteed by a five year labor warranty. 
When you mention the Riz Show, you'll get 20% off your next outdoor project. It's Chesterfield Fence and Deck. They're online at ChesterfieldFence.com. Chesterfield Fence and Deck, after all, who doesn't want a bigger deck? We're the Interrupters, and we're here with our new friends Sarah and Donnie from The Point. We're at Music Record Shop, and we're going to go get some records. Reg and Ska. This record Has some is going to change your life. It really is. It, this is a nightclub, gangsters, Rudy, a message to you, rat race. Man, Ghost, Ghost Town. So we come, Interrupters, before we come out on stage, we play Ghost Town, and it's on this. You, you just have to get, you just, this is, I insist that you get that one. Okay. If you were gonna get a Ramones record. Hey, Riz. Carver? Not yet. Did you try them? Yeah, I've tried and uh, texted him. Texted him. What's going on here as well. No, no responses. No response. I know uh, they were in Winnipeg last night. They're Wait. in. Uh, oh, maybe Rogers is down right now. Winnipeg last night, they're in Edmonton for a game tonight. Maybe so Rogers is following AT&T's lead. Did he text you? I don't know if Scott's trying again. Did he text him? Thumb, I don't he know. He's got his thumb in the air. Oh, thumb? Thumb mean? in the air? That means... He's doing the Terminator. King Scott sign language. Is that good? <laughs> is that, uh... I don't know. That's good. All right. Oh, that's good? Good news, good news guys. He's not telling you to sit on this? Why don't you just sit on this? Maybe. <laughs> uh, you know, I... Uh, in the past have said that I've gone down to the pageant, had tickets to an event, couldn't find parking, and left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has anybody else done that? No, but I'm proud of you for doing that. Yeah. I've done that in other events, but not. I've never gone as far as the pageant and done that. Yeah. And, in fact, maybe I'll, we'll talk to Kerber about this, too. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Amadeus Kerber. Back to me, Amadeus. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, Chris. Now, now I've got. Now I've gone to song to a uh, a brilliant writer, but uh, music, but loses his mind and goes insane, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to try to come up with a new nickname for you every week. Hmm. Or a new, uh, you a new middle name. Yeah. Last year, you, last week you were Tiberius, uh, Chris Tiberius right. Kerber. Uh, Chris. Right. Uh, question for you. Have you ever skipped an event to avoid dealing with parking? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean skipped an event that I am scheduled to be at? Well, let's say, I mean, a pleasure, a pleasure event. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I definitely, uh, I mean, I, I definitely have skipped event. I mean, the, listen, out, out at the uh, out at the amphitheater, like I, I and, until I figured out about that Hollywood shuttle. Yeah. Right. Uh, I got to the point after going to a Maroon Five concert and then at Chris Stapleton concert, I said, "You know what? Not doing it again unless I figure out the parking because it took too long to get out." So, uh, yeah, I, I, I've done that. Yeah, I, I've, uh, I've in the past that I've said this on the air. I've actually had tickets to an event down at the pageant, uh, couldn't find parking, and just went home. Huh. <laughs> I circled. I give, I give myself four times circling, and then the fifth time, I am out of there. I'm out. So you mean okay? I apologize because you you mean you actually had tickets for it and then said nope, I'm just not going to show. I'm not. But that I haven't done. If I, if I got tickets, I, I find a way to get there. That's me too, Kerb. <laughs> no, no, nothing's worth the hassle. Oh my god, they're probably no. free tickets too. You're they're bad. Probably, they're, You're they were bad. free tickets. <laughs> no, but in, in all honesty, seventy five percent of Americans have skipped the social event because we knew parking would be a hassle. Yeah, oh, I, I I fully believe that. That, that, that makes. You've got to listen. I even taught this to my girls. You, you got to have an entrance and an exit strategy, and sometimes the exit strategy is, is a lot more important. True. And and most because, agree that you know city centers tend to be the hardest place to find a spot. And I, I do enjoy I do go enjoy going downtown. But if somebody says, "Oh, you want to come to so and so?" I'm like, oh, "Yeah, where's it at?" Oh, it's downtown. I go, ah, mm. it's not the <laughs> it's not, not you got to prepare yourself it's to go not down the drive. there. It's the ah, uh, it's the parking. Yeah, the the, par the parking scenarios are definitely. Uh, it's actually you know sports teams, uh, events, you know venue halls. That's something that is probably, I'd say, one of the top three things that you have to deal with for any event. 
is you've got to understand what your customers are going to go through parking wise. And in the case of like, like in the case of, and it's gotten a lot better, I think, uh, through the hard work of the Blues, you know. But the Blues don't own the parking garage; it's attached to the building, right? Oh, the Kill Center garage so, is not uh, is not owned by the Blues. I didn't know that. No, it's it's not. So it, it, it's completely run by the city, and and so th- th- there's been you know just challenge after challenge after challenge, just trying to get things. So they finally got it this year, where at least like the the parking passes are digital, you know, going yeah. that route. So. Um, but yeah, you, you gotta have an, you gotta have an agent strategy where you're going to park and, and, and how you're going to go. I'm telling you, like I, it is something that is, and, and it's, I know it's great because the parking is free uh, out at the amphitheater. Uh, but you, you've got to have a, a plan and, and realize that for a big show, you are going to sit in that parking lot for a long time afterwards. Cause it's a gong show to get out. So when I, when I discovered that Hollywood, uh, casino shuttle, it was like 15 bucks a head. That was an absolute no-brainer and, and game-changer for me in terms of going to events out there. Uh, the first time I went to a City SC uh, game down at Soccer Park or City Park over there, mm-hmm. uh, man, pain in the ass parking. But then I <laughs> discovered that you could Uber from <laughs> from one of the mis- uh, municipality. It's a lot easier. You, you know what? If uh, uh, They've got now, that's when they've got the Kiel Center Garage open during those. So I, I park in that. It's an easy walk. It's a great exit strategy. Good amount of people park there, so you got safe walking uh, to and from. Yeah. So think about that one next time you go down there. All right, Curbs, uh, last night Blues lost to Winnipeg 4-2. Uh, to two. Uh, That is a season sweep for the Jets over the Blues. Uh, they pretty much got out to a quick 2-0 and lead and, and didn't really look back last night. Not a great game. Yeah, you know what? The, the Blues are not a good come-from-behind team. Uh, they, they've gotten better under Drew Bannister. Uh, I, I, there was a lot of good. I know this is going to this is going to sound awful to a lot of people because you at this point you need wins because your season's starting to unravel. You're six points out in Nashville. While, while you've played some really difficult teams to beat, uh, the Nashville Predators have had uh, have gone on one of those runs where they played San Jose, Anaheim, and then Ottawa. They played like three of the worst teams in the league and continue to win. So they, they've jumped out to a six-point lead now. And you still have two games in hand and a head-to-head, so by no means are you out of it. But the Blues are going to have to find a way to get wins. They've got, you know, over the next stretch of games, the five-game road trip coming up in the Northeast, you got the home game against Minnesota tonight. We've got Edmonton. Every one of these teams are within a couple points of a playoff spot or in the thick of things, and everything has meaning. So uh, the Blues are just going to have to find a way to be successful. They have no more room at the end, if you will, to uh, – to mess things up. And I thought that they played a good game. And, and here, here's a reality. They played a really solid game. There were just two critical mistakes and it's the same mistakes that they have been making all year. And if you're a coach, you've got to be pulling your hair out. If, if you're a GM watching it, you've got to be scratching your head right. because I promise you, the coaches are not telling guys to cut through the middle of the ice and pass the puck to a marked man at the blue line. And, and the plays just keep happening that way. And so it's a frustrating scenario. It, it's one of those where, it, like, one of the plays was inside the offensive blue line, you know, uh, or I'm sorry, at the, the defensive blue line. Pavel Bichnevich has complete control of the puck. He tries to make a pass to the middle of the ice to, to Jordan Cairo. It gets picked away. It comes back into your zone, and they end up scoring a goal. These are really good, skilled players that are making those mistakes. And I think it really has just come down for them trying to do a little too much. Instead of keeping it easy, trying to make that play that, that could be a big one, and, and sometimes the execution isn't happening. And normally, you go into that scenario with as good as the Winnipeg Jets have been, or tonight with as good as the Edmonton Oilers are, right? And you're like, okay, those are games you could lose against teams that, are, you know, honestly are deeper than you are. Uh, but the problem is, is you really haven't given yourself any leeway for error, and that that that's why it just magnifies everything right now. Well, people are talking about the trade deadline is next Friday, so next Friday, March. Yes. 8th. Uh, what do you think the Blues will be doing? Well, first off, I like the fact you said next Friday versus this Friday. Yeah. So that, that keeps it clean. Uh, I think you know. Five games ago, the Blues had a four-point lead over the Nashville Predators and, and, and in complete control of that second wild-card spot. As a matter of fact, looked like they could overtake the L.A. Kings for the top wild-card spot. Since then, they lost four out of the five games. And in doing so, well, now, now, it's, now it's five out of, out of six. 
And in doing so, instead of on that one Saturday afternoon game, two Saturdays ago, instead of increasing their lead to that wild, that wild card spot to six games, they now find themselves six points out. That's a 12-point swing. It's unbelievable how, how quickly that happened. Yeah. I think I think five games ago, you're thinking, okay, there may not be a big move to make to improve the team, but we're definitely not going to just take a UFA and move them for a third or a fourth round pick that won't impact your team for four or five years. And uh, this scenario that's happening right now, if it continues, you could go back to move some of those pieces and, and, and get some assets. So, uh, unfortunately for the Blues, it's, it's just, it's going to be four or five games that's going to really dictate what happens. And, and if it does, it could mean a couple more guys getting traded out. And, yeah. But that's that's the natural process. Here's, you know that Doug Armstrong is not going to sit still. You know that he's not going to. Uh, he, he is he's, he's proven this so so many times over the years. If he doesn't think his team's got it, or they don't have, uh, you know, getting in doesn't look like it's going to happen. He, he's going to build for next year. Yeah. Uh, the NFL commissioner Gary Bettman was up there in uh, Winnipeg last night. This was a pretty big story. Are they having problems up there? So Gary Bettman was up there, pretty much to. Uh, give a rah-rah speech for the city of Winnipeg uh, saying they can still support a team. Are there rumors of the team leaving Winnipeg? Well, what happened, so when the Winnipeg Jets moved uh, moved up from Atlanta, and they you know they basically announced, shoot, I mean, it was like on June 1. It was, or no, actually it was right around March or April, they said they're not staying in Atlanta, they're going to Winnipeg. Yeah. Right after that, their group did a, a season ticket drive, and basically everybody jumped on board, and they sold out the whole building. It's only a build; it's a building that only holds just over fifteen thousand. Mm-hmm. So they sold out everything, and they made people buy three and five year, you know, uh, season ticket leases. They haven't treated, according to people I've talked to, they haven't treated their season tickets very well. They haven't given a purse. They, ha- they haven't shown that they're valued, for example, like you are if you're a blue season ticket holder. And when those leases came up and the team started to struggle just a little bit, they and they bounced out. back really well, uh, their season ticket pace dropped you know, down by like 4,000 people. Well, because they sold everything to individuals and it sold out in 15 minutes, which was amazing, there really wasn't much corporate support needed for the team because there were no tickets for them to sell. So they haven't done a great job up there of engaging the corporate community and and expanding some of that base. So last night you've got a team where that was literally with that win they moved into first place in in the in the central. They've got the best winning percentage in in the Western Conference, and it was not a sellout. There was only a crowd of thirteen thousand one hundred. Their owner came out and basically said, we've got to do something about this. We've got to get, you know, the season ticket base back up. And if we don't, it's not sustainable. Well, that's basically threatening your, your, your fan base, the way I look at it. And I think the NHL saw that and said, uh-uh, that can't. And I think they came up and basically did a lot of damage control. And Gary Bettman was like, we're not moving the franchise. I, I don't know where people are coming up with this. Well, those fans had already had a franchise move from them, right? So it's not... It's not inconceivable uh, for those fans of that word and the Princess Bride. Yeah. It's not in, it's not inconceivable that fans would think that way. And Gary Bettman went up there and basically did uh, did a lot of damage control, saying yes, they've got to fix it. Yes, they can. Yes, the team and the, and the franchise has to involve. No, I'm not up here to announce that the team is going to move. Uh, we're up here because we visit every team every single year, and uh, you know, and he goes and things will be fine. So. Uh, some spin work done by the National Hockey League on, on basically what I don't think was a real smart comment from an owner. Uh, hypothetically, what is there another city you think could support a hockey team or should have another hockey team? I think there's I think there's three. Okay, uh, in the United States, for, to, but, no, well, no, actually, maybe you could look at it at four in this sense. You've got that three that don't have it, one that does. One Canadian city that doesn't is Quebec City. There's still a feeling that you could put a team back in Quebec City and uh, and, and and it would be fine. Because where did the okay, Nordiques so, go? So Quebec Nordiques, where did they go to? Avalanche. So the Nordiques became the Colorado Avalanche. Avalanche. Okay. Right. And then the original Winnipeg Jets became the Arizona Coyotes. Okay. The, uh, uh, the two U.S. cities... Uh, one, it's it's clear that the owner of the Utah Jazz that also has a stake in uh, um, Real Salt Lake, uh, it's clear that he wants an NHL team. So there's a lot of talk about putting an NHL team in Salt Lake City. 
Uh, the other U.S. city that you just keep hearing, even though you know no one stepped up and said uh, that I know of and said, "Hey, I want to put a team here," but uh, there's no NHL team in Houston, and with as big as that city is, uh, and they've had hockey, and they've had hockey forever from the WHA to minor league hockey. Uh, that's one. The other, the other city that they always keep talking about is you always keep hearing about whether or not they put a second team in the Toronto area. So there are still options for teams to go to, um, you know, or expansion if the league decides to expand again. There are a few cities that still are looking for NHL teams. That's interesting. All right, so tonight it's uh, it's the Blues up in Edmonton. Don't forget to download the Curbside podcast after the game. And, uh, Chris, we love you. And uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll see you on Saturday at the pageant. Yeah, we're hoping that the timing works out for that, so I'll do my best to get over there. All right, there he is, Chris Thanks, Amadeus man. Kerber. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right, see there you later, buddy. Thanks, buddy. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Uh, Moon, we'll read some of your very salacious emails. Oh, salacious is the word. Nice. I don't know. <clears throat> Any salacious ones? Uh, I have like 600 pages, so okay. I'm sure we have I'm salacious, sure salacious ones. ones in there. <laughs> uh, it is uh, 8.52. It's a race show presented by the Fast Lane. Traffic and weather moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. We have severe delays, 270 eastbound between Tessan Ferry and 64. Average speed, 25 miles an hour. Your point forecast today, cold and windy, high of 39. Right now it's 27 at the Point Studio. Okay, so Rafe has our official bucket list list. Yes. That's right. We've talked about bucket list on here so many times. We thought, and we're, we're getting ready to implement a new, stay tuned. We have a new contest with punishments coming up. And we thought maybe as a, as a flip side to that, we talk about bucket list so much that we would, instead of just being in competition with each other, we would also have a series of videos where we actually try to help each other check things off our bucket this list, is all which is a nice thing. Lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. That's right. To help us check things off our bucket list. And to soften the blow of the horrible things we're going to do to each Absolutely. other in the other competition. Yeah, come the fall, which we have a big Riz Olympics announcement uh, mm -hmm. to make come the fall. Uh, yes, let's lift each other up first. Yes. We build up, and then we break down. That's right. Okay. So, so yeah, okay. So yeah, I forgot. Eat a golden corral was on my bucket list. We'll check that off next week. Mm -hmm. That's right. Next Monday. Which, by the way, is it Monday or Tuesday? I think we changed it back to. Did we change it back to Monday? I'm gonna murder uh, all of you. Let me check the calendar. <laughs> Tuesday. Well, no, we were. It was a Moon schedule that was the wacky one. Yes, it was my schedule that was the wacky one. It was supposed to be on my Gotcha day. Well, but I thought we were also kind of celebrating Jeff. Um. Let's see. You know what? Just tell me what to do, guys. Well, you're the one that's you're the one that was the was the uh, weird schedule. Well, yes, but remember, I also said, hey. Yesterday, I got to go over to Mountaintop Motor Company, and I love going out there because every week, it seems like they have a whole new lineup of cars. I mean, they move through them so fast, and that's because of you all. I mean, they have over a 1,000 five-star reviews for this reason, and folks from all over the area, I mean, they're driving hours to come out to Mountaintop Motor Company because it truly is the best of the best. No pressure, easy going, just a fantastic experience, and it's, it's unlike any other. And you get to go inside their lodge there, absolutely beautiful. But here's what's awesome is they have a ton of great cars right now with low mileages and late models. Like the 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited X, this thing is beautiful. And you talk about loaded, it is loaded. And it's only 33 grand. Absolutely amazing. This is going to go very quick. So you got to swing over there and, and, and give it a test drive. Plus, they have a ton of great trucks, a lot of sedans, all kinds of great vehicles over at Mount Top Motor Company. So swing by there. And if you're trying to sell your car, Go to mounttopmotors.com. You can do it right there on their website, and it's going to be safe, and they're going to pay top dollar. So go to Mount Top Motor Company's mounttopmotors.com. Everywhere you look at me, you can see I'm in a brace. Yeah, you got a giant halo right there. Your face, and every time I look at you, girl, you know it's true. Yeah, you got a giant halo right there on your face. Hello, hello, hi. Uh, howdy, hello, hi. Um, that was Beyonce's Halo.
105.7, the point. A.O., let's go. It's Liv Maddox, broadcasting live from the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. And I am joined now by the one, the only, Jelly Roll. Yeah, How baby. How are you, howdy. sir? I feel like I'm back home, man. I love St. <laughs> Louis. It's one of my favorite cities in America for dozens of reasons. Mm -hmm. And then the last time I was here was just sheer disappointment because Point Fest got rained out that day. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, we're still just... we're still mourning that. And, and the crazy thing is, is that, you know, I, st I wasn't here yet when that happened, but I keep hearing that when that announcement came out that it had to be pushed out and then you couldn't make the scheduled show, people were so upset. You've got St. Louis in the palm of your hand, man. How no, does that feel? No, no, I just, I just love St. Louis and they love me. I've just, I've been coming here for years. We used to play Pops. Yep. I probably played Pops 30 times in my life. And now here you are at the Hollywood Casino this is Amphitheater. Awesome. Well, yes. I With know. limited tickets. You like limited is in get in your car and come on. And exactly. Got to get here. Box office. The music doesn't start till seven. You still got time to settle in before Jelly Roll hits the stage. Now, what's really cool about you, Jelly Roll, is that, and I promise you, this isn't a commentary on your size, is that you don't fit into a box musically. Right. You got the hip hop, you got the country. You got the rock all in one. So if somebody comes up and they're like, Liv, what kind of musician is Jelly Roll? What do I say? He's a music man. He's a music man. Right? Listen, so in the 90s, I was listening to Corn. Okay. But I also knew every single word of Gin and Juice. Okay. And secretly, as a Southern boy, I knew every single word of Time Marches On by Tracy Lawrence, mm -hmm. right? So that was the 90s country music era. And this is stuff I've just known since I was a kid. So it wasn't. It, it, I don't know. I just always judge music on whether it was good or it sucked. And a sure. lot of music has sucked over the years. So anytime we get <laughs> something that's pretty good, we should hang on to it, not categorize it and alienate it. We should embrace it, you know? Sure. So what music What, what music doesn't suck right now? What are you listening to? It depends. Uh, across the board, I'm, I'm still listening. I'm stuck in the 70s. Okay. Right? Because I have a rule when I record, I don't listen to much current music because I don't want to be influenced. Okay. I hate that when sound, the sounds become... So I'm really weird about that. But I do love Crown the Empire on the rock side. I don't know why they just do it for me. I've sure. always thought a lot of that band. Uh, listening to a lot of Greta Van Fleet still. Yes. There's a kid named Bailey Zimmerman on the countryside that's just absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. Just young, raspy voice, just wild. Sure. It's probably what I'm listening okay. to now. Co Wetzel. I got Co Wetzel on repeat. Good old party music. Yeah. So you were touring with Brantley Gilbert, and now you're out here with Shine Down. Do you approach the shows differently, country versus rock? Are you still... Same guy, same show, same energy. Same guy, same show, same energy. Everywhere you see me, whether I'm sitting at church with a pastor or out drinking with the boys, I'm the same bubble. <laughs> you can count on that. Take it to the bank and cash it. If you like me, I love you. If you don't, that's fine. At least I know who, I'm, who I am. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's something I love about you is that you are who you are. You're not shy about your past. You share that openly, and I think that's part of why people are drawn to you. It's like, this is an authentic dude. And he has shown that he can break the cycle, you know, in and out of incarceration as a youth and into adult. What was that moment? About my son's eye doctor, that's Dr. Vercella over at Fenton Family Eye Care. Now, Dr. V, great dude, one of only two pediatric specialists in St. Louis affiliated with Treehouse Eyes that does myopia control for kids. Now, my son, he is nearsighted. And his prescription keeps getting worse every year. And I'm always reminding this kid, dude, wear your glasses, wear your glasses. We go to the movies. Oh, I forgot my glasses, Dad. Oh, come on, man. So with, with myopia control, which uh, Dr. V offers, uh, these overnight contacts, Dr. V has not only stopped this prescription from getting worse, when my son wakes up in the morning, he doesn't have to wear glasses. He doesn't have to put in contacts to see all day long. It's, it's amazing. And everything, every parent, I think every parent should know about this. He's great with kids, uh, great office down there. The consultations are absolutely free with no obligation. So if you want to pause your kids, uh, you know, prescriptions from getting worse and, you know, where are the glasses, where are the glasses? No glasses anymore, at least during the day. Go see Dr. V. FentonFamilyEyeCare.com. That's FentonFamilyEyeCare.com. <laughs> Well, here we are at the uh, Chaffetz Arena, gigantic show tonight with the Killers, joined by uh, Brandon and Ronnie. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah. I love the album. 
Wonderful, Wonderful is out now. It is, uh, it's, it, it's such a great record. Um, I think very much worth the wait. I want to know first things first about Jackknife Lee. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, hey, Riz, you big fat dude. Yeah, thanks. Riz Show presented by the Fast Lane. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's very hip now to microdose. Yeah. Oh, it's the new thing. Right. Microdose. It's a small two, right? Yeah. So, Scott, tell everybody if they don't know what microdosing is. <laughs> um, small two. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's when you take a drug, a psychedelic, and you barely take any of it. Right? You take a small little but tiny what kind? amount. What Mushrooms, kind of? Mushrooms, right? Mu mu right? Very good, Mushrooms, Scott. Yes. Point for you. Scott. Point for Scott. Thank you. Outstanding. The only one on this show who d doesn't know a thing about that. Oh, I know Scott a lot about that. Yeah. I have some friends that like the Grateful Dead. <laughs> really? That's cool. <laughs> Scott's microdosing. He, he's he's microdosing silly Sybin. I, yeah. I <laughs> silly microdosed Sybin. at Lollapalooza one time back in 09. Yeah. Well, so microdosing, <laughs> oh, nine, never forget. Uh, you know, microdosing is basically taking a, a very small controlled amount of usually psilocybin mushrooms. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what What are the benefits? You just get happier. You just are better. Take the edge off, man. Is that what it is? Uh, Everything burns know. a little brighter, you know? I really did. I, so... I was at Lollapalooza in two. I think it was two thousand and nine, um, and music sounded better. Somebody man. Yeah, had dude. mushrooms, and I didn't have them, but there were the little crummies in the bottom of the bag, and I go, you know what? Let's just so you, try this. You were before your time. The I was <laughs> the crummies, like the little like mushroom crumbs. And I gotta tell you, I tried to get into Lady Gaga's after party, and I had a great time. Did you yeah. get in? No, I did not. But <laughs> the cab, I had a great time trying. <laughs> the cab ride there, <laughs> and awesome. the app, my friend Mike and I were like roaming around Chicago. We had a great time. Well, calls to U.S. Poison Control Centers involving uh, mushrooms have uh, rose sharply after the oh. whole microdosing thing caught hold. Yeah. So you know, there are a lot of cities and states that have uh, you know begun decriminalizing. Yeah. You know, psilocybin, uh, magic mushrooms. Well, a lot of that was in due uh, due to the um, the research that was being done with PTSD and all right. That. So a lot of the oh yeah, Listen, a, a lot of the pushing to decriminalize it was because they were trying to work on this stuff, and it has I, great effects. I on understand. PTSD. Yeah, they're, they're I, I trying to they were trying to figure out the medical uh, uh, benefits to it, and I'm sure there are a ton, but they were like pretty handcuffed, from what I remember, because it was so criminalized. Yeah, was it Schedule One drug? I don't, know. Solid, I, I, don't so. know. I don't know. I'm, 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 I don't know the details. There's some pretty uh, hefty penalties for transporting in some states. We go to uh, to um, Colorado. You can actually book your microdose with a professional place where they essentially have a We're guide. Going on a journey together. A medical guide that will walk you through. So if you are somebody who struggles with PTSD Sweet. and you've wanted to possibly go you know, get more information. There's tons of information out of Colorado. Well, psilocybin-related calls to poison control <laughs> have more than tripled, and it's among teenagers 13 to 19. Oh, my Lord. Uh, doubled between ages 20 to 25, and I guess just people are either taking too much or having doing them and trip. having bad trips and yeah. not knowing what's going on. And, oh, what is this? I don't know if that's microdosing. That's me though. eating, by the way. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> macrodosing. Yeah, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. I, I, so don't get it twisted. Like microdosing, you're not taking like a full bag of mushrooms. You are, it's a smaller dose. So the people that are having poison control out, they're obviously having a bad trip. They probably have too much. It's also just the popularity of mushrooms, period. Well, microdosing... Not just microdosing, it's just the popularity of available. Them. If you're microdosing, you shouldn't be tripping anyway, right? It right. Shouldn't, it shouldn't be for the second Yeah, you shouldn't be having hallucinations. And, and they're saying, by comparison, 10 years ago, I mean, just basically, it's just been the same amount. Hmm. But... Uh, I don't know, I'm not talking about that stuff. Or, not for me. I, isn't Oregon um, looking at what they did? Because they decriminalized everything. So Oregon did, yeah. Because they're trying to combat the fentanyl overdosing. Mm -hmm. And what they have found, unfortunately, is the reverse effect. Like, it has not helped as much as they thought it would. Un for people going out and actually doing drugs and overdosing on drugs mm -hmm. in Oregon. The people that are reaping the benefits from PTSD and stuff are doing well. But they, they're, they're probably going to put that back on the ballot in the future. Because they're like, I don't know if this is doing as much good. Or maybe, as well, yeah. 
maybe worsening the problem. Yeah. There were a lot of people microdosing for like work productivity for a while too. Like yeah. It was really kind of big in 2020, like a, in acid and psilocybin. I actually had a friend here in town who gave me a a little dropper full of microdosing LSD. <laughs> And oh, he's like, hey, man. this is a micro dose. If you want it, I had to get rid of all my, my wife caught me making it in the garage. She said, I can't make it anymore. Making it what? in and the garage. I was garage dying LSD. laughing. I go, no, I think I'm good on your garage LSD, man. Thank you. <laughs> what could go wrong? He goes, no, I followed. Yeah, what could he go goes, wrong? I follow. I went, he goes, I've done it. I've been doing it. I follow. I got a recipe. <laughs> I follow it down to the T. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to be the Dukes of Hazard of micro dosing LSD. Buddy. GLSD. Yeah. Yep. I boiled oregano. No way. This yeah. motor oil. I made this but in But a lot of people were using it for, you know, not just PTSD, but also just like creative productivity, you know, because it does kind of, they proved in like this Netflix doc that like certain parts of your brain that doesn't normally communicate with the other, those synapses get opened when you're on like micro doses of... Dude, you're Psilocybin. unlocking your mind. Dude, yeah, you're man. connecting your heart <laughs> and your brain, man. To the universe. Not <laughs> honestly. <laughs> For me, I, I I tried this once and it's a bad it's bad trip central. And I'm next thing you know, I'm I'm naked running down. Yep. Well, yeah, it's again, not micro dosing. On the news, again. again. <laughs> micro, but not micro dosing. That's not micro dosing. Seems like a young man's game. Would you oh, ever uh, go to like uh, Peru and no. do ayahuasca or anything like that? I, oh, I, like my wife wants to. Like a guided yeah. shaman thing? Yeah, like I don't like the idea of pooping in a bucket, but I kind of want to go. Yeah, I know? got a good pair. No. Like, you get that, and also he's a parasailing uh, captain. No. So good <laughs> to use. Yeah. Here, 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 drink this tea. Come on, you got to lick the butt of this toad, and you trip for like 10 minutes. No thanks. Drink All this right. tea and strap this parachute on you. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me. Be awesome. <laughs> be awesome, Holy man. smokes, that would be life changing for sure. Yeah, it would. I don't know what what it is because I'm, I, you know, I'm totally totally sober uh, with everything. But like, I, there, I do have an interest, and I don't know how far I would actually go mm. if if given the opportunity, being yeah. in Peru next to a shaman. I'll be honest with you, I'm afraid of I'm afraid of what I might find. Yeah. I think <laughs> it, yeah. I'm afraid right. of what I might find. I would like it if you did it because everyone. The thing I find fascinating about specifically like ayahuasca. I had some friend. I had a couple friends do that. You get violently Peru. ill, right? Before, yeah. But then yeah, but I mean, you get cramps on psilocybin too. Uh, that there's like a shared experience that everyone has, like meeting this mother, oh yeah, universe figure. Like there's a, it's a shared. It seems like people are having all over the world are having the same type of experience, and that's fascinating to me. And I would love it if you did it, <laughs> yeah, just man. because it would be the first time mother universe was like this man was just complaining the whole time. <laughs> I was trying to give him the secrets of the universe. He was complaining about the line. He didn't he was, like the stomach. He, was upset about he the thought parking. his shaman was rude. Yeah. <laughs> very with the she of just it. decides to stop showing up for everyone else. She's like, you know what? She taps that. Forget Sign it. up for this guy. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah. You, you, you ruined Mother Universe's experience. <laughs> Forget it. Dude, there are, there are like <laughs> full-on articles and probably documentaries about guys like huge, you know, New York businessmen and rich guys and all that going down there and doing that with a shaman and then just like never coming back and being like, nope, I'm going to give I'm gonna give up all my possessions. I'm living here. Okay. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work for Habitat Idiots. for Humanity and build stuff in Argentina. Mm. Like there, there are stories about guys giving up entire lifestyles. Yeah, I do it once, yeah. you know, I'm going to Burning Man every year. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Love to meet that guy. <laughs> that guy doesn't. Maybe that guy's in here. Maybe He's I just need to take ayahuasca and unlock, there. unlock the door, and that guy pops out going, "Hey, hey, hey buddy, how are you? Man. <laughs> I've also read stuff about, and this can be. This is where it gets kind of dicey, especially if you're not doing it with a shaman or somebody that's like, you know, is experienced. What makes them a shaman? I don't. Study I mean, th literally in Peru, it's a shaman. Yeah, they go out in the woods and they pick guided. things yeah, and they yeah. make it. Done it for Native ages. people like teach. There's things that get taught down. It's don't not, knock yeah, a shaman. I mean, is there a certificate on it's the not wall? A don't office. knock a shaman. Yeah, it's not a shaman in Denver. <laughs> yeah. It's not a shaman in a man bun. Okay, this is legit yeah, that's native. A, no, folk. <laughs> and that's, that's what, what you're I mean. Thinking. Like, what are what are the? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a guy. Well, Quan Skyler. I am a certified shaman. Yeah, no social media shaman. Yeah, me too. It's not a guy who's doing your whitewater rafting in Colorado during no. the season well, and then goes and shamans is, down in Peru. Native people <laughs> Namaste, my flat. brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Skyler. I'll be your shaman today. <laughs> hey. It's your worst nightmare. Yeah. Here at Microdose Denver. And I just want you to know that you'll be well taken care of. And you are laying on 1,000 
count Egyptian cotton Eddie Bauer sheets right here's now. Here's your uh, <laughs> here's your kombucha. Everybody gets a complimentary kombucha. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're at this table. I feel like you're imagining the teacher from uh, Beavis and Butthead. Yes, like the lesbian seagulls. That guy. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> no. Here's your complimentary Peloton cycle. Mm. <laughs> mm. But there I have, so like, there's a dude named Tim Ferriss who's a, a writer and has a podcast that did it and had, like, repressed memories come up, and they were not good. I had somebody uh, do that uh, just on a float uh, recently, last couple last couple years. On a float? Yeah, no, oh, no, just like in a float not, tank? Not, like not a float, float trip, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like, they're on the who's on, they're like, no, oh, no, man. No, no, that happens, too. <laughs> Triggered. Dude. This stag is unlocked You hit something. me in the head with that Keystone light, it unlocked something in there. No, buddy and I went and did a... We're jello shots did. We did float STL, which is incredible, and I've you've done the float. Yeah, 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 I've yeah, floated a couple times. I've done it a couple times, and each time has been completely different for me, and this, this one time went with a friend, and he had, like, some full-blown, yeah. unlocked stuff happen, and was was... Emotion, you know, emotional afterwards. Sure, it was heavy. It was awesome. I've floated yeah. three or four times. You know, the sensory deprivation tanks. I've done it. Uh, I think I just fell asleep every time. So I don't know if I really was really at a benefit. It was different for me every single time. That's kind of one of one of the reasons that I loved it. I love the Pink Floyd. You can listen to Dark Side of the Moon at Float STL, the whole album, and you can just be in there, and it's. Amazing. Yeah, I did no, I did no music any of the times because it does like a fade out music mm-hmm. for the first yeah. like eight minutes or something, and then it was just zoned. Yeah, uh, Johnny zoned. says like a pilot, five thousand hours of tripping, and you are certified. They're you are sweet. <laughs> yeah, Captain Skyler you your, here. You get your wings. <laughs> yeah, I got my wings, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the shape of a I don't know. My wife wants to do it. Just take her. Where? Take her where? Peru. Take her. We're not going to Peru. Risho road trip to Peru. Take this show on the road. We're not going to Peru. That would be yep. cool. And then we'll Little, get you on that. I bet you could get, make it happen like New Mexico. I bet there's a... Yeah. Probably someone Sedona. Like Sedona. I bet yeah. someone in DeSoto. I'd do it. Probably has Sedona. a Sedona. <laughs> Come to Sedona, Sedona with us. You sit down at one of the vertices. Mm-hmm. I'll go to Sedona and get weird in the desert. Uh, I love Sedona. Yeah. Oh, that's I'll so be your shaman, dude. I'm in there, there, dude. Dude. <laughs> All right, let's get to uh, some of your uh, emails. All right, emails brought to you by Kloss Furniture. Lowest price is guaranteed. We have something for everybody. Okay, let's start with this one. Since this isn't even an email, this is an actual postcard, and it just says, "Please wish, Ka- uh, please wish Kathy Ewing of St. Louis a happy birthday." Oh, shoot! Sunday, February twenty fifth. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, happy, take it back. happy birthday! It's they said it's a postcard. Sorry, it? yeah, it's a postcard. Wild. Where's this at? Postcard. They sent it all the way from St. Louis. Uh, happy birthday, Kathy. Sunday. We're not on the air Sunday. All right. So these three emails all came in this morning. <laughs> Wondering if when I see Learn shaking, is that Learn with her legs crossed, kicking her leg? Can we get a pay-per-view Learn under the desk legs and feet cam? How much would that run a month? Sincerely, your first subscriber. Then the next email. P.S. Add a learn under the desk cam during the show cam to your only feet page, and I will be... Maybe that would fall under the category of creepy. Subscriber. P.S. There's also Feet Finder and stuff like that to sell it on. Oh. Then the next email. Is P- this the guy that's obsessed with your feet? P.S.S. I'll buy learns burnout socks. Finally, somebody to take my, bur- my burned out glories on my feet. Signed, Is this the guy? Feet Lifter. Oh, that's the guy. That's well, your buddy. He, he loves I, your feet. He's not the first person that's been like, oh, you shake a lot during the show. I have a nervous tick, which I'm sure drives people nuts if they watch us on the cams, where I'm always shaking. You like, shake I'm your always, foot, right? Yeah, I always, like, I'm always, like, tapping to a beat. And, I, you know, and or I'm curled up, and I got my, I'm, you know, sitting cross-legged in the chair and stuff. So, I, I mean. A guy I, wants an under-the-desk cam. You got cam. feet lifts again. Yeah, it's a bit odd. Burned out socks, I'm down. <laughs> Under the desk, Cam, I'm out. Well, if Tim gives the okay, I mean, maybe we'll... Yeah. We need a new desk. We have one. Hey. One, two, three, four, We've got an extra five. camera. We have an extra camera. Six. There. We could take that one from up there and put it under the desk. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Can uh, you all have crotch cam? cam? Crotch cam. No, it's sure. essentially what it is. I've had one for a while. <laughs> maybe, everyone's, and maybe every once in a while, like once during the show, just when nobody knows, we go, oh, crotch cam. Crotch cam. Crotch cam. Crotch cam. Crotch cam. Crotch cam. All right. Okay, creepy next. In your guys' opinion, name something that off-brand tastes better than the name brand. Example, Clover Valley peanut butter cookies versus Girl Scout tagalongs. Clover Valley cookies every day. Oh, man, that's a good question. What's... I think the Trader Joe's Honey Nut Cheerio things, their version's way better. But is that, 
I mean, it's not off-brand. Well, well, Isn't it off-brand? I mean, generic. Yeah, I guess right? so. It's not I don't know. Either. Trader Joe's has some some pretty good Trader Joe's brand things. Yeah. Those those Joe's O's. Yeah. The peppermint ones. You know what? Joe and Joe's? a lot of those, God, what would you call off-brand or generics, are the actual brand, just <laughs> other labeled. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, do you, I don't know. That's a good. That's a good question. Yeah. I don't even know what brands I'm buying. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the, I will say this. I get Velveeta shells and cheese. It's a hard, it's a hard line. Like I'm like, no, I'm not getting the off-brand shells and cheese. You're doing pretty good then. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm afraid so to say good. the one that I'm thinking of right now, just because it's so hard to come by, and when I find it, it's it's the greatest treat in my house. Oh, just tell us. It's the Target brand dried mango. Oh. Gosh. Wow. Nobody's going to do that. Crazy. I'll be flying off the shelves this afternoon. I, <laughs> su I swear oh, to goodness man. it will. Rod I swear oh, to goodness it will. Just car crashes in the street right now. Oh. Alerts have just gone off Y'all don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> we need to restock. You're I'm right. scared to see it. You're right. Your jokes are on, on brand, uh, and, and you should stay away from it. I'm don't touch will. it. I'm staying All right. You guys okay. don't like dried fruit? Uh, okay. I, I do. Oh, no, I do like I think just because you mentioned it on the radio show, there's going to be a run. Oh, man. It's a good road trip thing. Y'all are wrong. Target brand S'mores Trails mi Trail Mix is the is best. Ah. S'mores Trails Mix. Yes. Trail Mix. What's their brand good. called again? Because uh, this one's Good and Gather. Good and Gather. Whatever the Target brand, they have a ton of good stuff. Yeah, Archer Farms. All right, somebody mm -hmm. says uh, Great Value brand bacon is better than Oscar Mayer. Okay. And that's the Walmart brand, right? I buy that. Dude, I don't yeah. think there's anything worse than Jenny O. I think that's the worst <sighs> stuff ever made. Uh, yep. Let me see here. Nabisco Oreo is uh, is just as good as the Great Value Oreos. The off-brand cereals are usually as good, if not slightly yeah. better. They know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Like the, cheaper. the Lucky Charms has a off-brand one that has star. I think it's just called like Stars or something like that. And it's really good. That's Lucky good Stars. Question. Lucky Stars, yeah. That's a good I one. I got to think about that. Next. Okay. Do we want to go to food? Uh, or entertainment reviews. What do we you think? We can do both. Okay, food. Riz, an asteroid is hitting Earth in five days, and in order to stop it from wiping out all of humanity, you have to eat. You have to eat an Emo's cauliflower pizza. We already know there's no chance of that happening. So my question Sorry. is, <laughs> what would your last meal be before we are all wiped out of existence? What about everybody else on the show? Love you guys. All Pam. right, last meal. Dude, spaghetti and meatballs, man. Spaghetti and meatballs. Give me specific, my last for my mom. Yep. Okay. My mom's. Mom's spaghetti. Ooh. <laughs> All right, Marshall. Last last meal? Yeah, last meal. Last meal. My mom's meatball recipe I cannot duplicate. I would have to as be... As much as I've tried. A twofold. It's Grandma Ima Jean's, her barbecue chicken wings, big old vat of those, and then her tortellini soup. And her Italian bread. You gotta pick bread. one. You gotta pick one. Oh, my God, really? Why can't that be a I meal? I picked one. You know what? Since I'm... Not having, I'm off the. Bur I'm I'm going those chicken wings right now because I really want some. <laughs> oh, I got so, so many days. The end to of go. the earth. End of the earth. And you're like, ah, I'm not on chicken this year. No, I'm taking the chicken. Okay. I said, <laughs> the bird is back. I'm gonna add a day to the entire universe's existence because uh, I want one day old lasagna, mm. reheated. Neato. Ugh. That's my last meal. What if you go, dude? Target brand. <laughs> dried mango. Dried mango. <laughs> That's all my snack on the way out. Rafe. This is tough because I would like some TJs on the way out, but... There's probably Taco John's in heaven. That's what I assume. <laughs> I assume they're serving that <laughs> at the gates. So... I... <laughs> Everybody gets potato Everybody. olays and, uh, <laughs> while they're waiting for St. Peter. Yeah. That seems like... If that ain't heaven, I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't even want to go. <laughs> Keep it. If I don't get a sombrero full of potato oles in line, oh. forget it. Uh, that's tough. You know, there's some homemade stuff that I think would be, like, comforting. I want to, But I'll say I'll go Taco John's and then I, um, my grandma's bread pudding. Nice. Homemade okay. bread pudding Scott? for dessert. Yeah, I think, man, this is tough. I want something that's going to take a long time to eat. Uh, I don't want to go through it too quickly. I want to help Earth out a while. So ten horse meal or something. Party sub. I think I'm. I'm just going to go straight up, like that gritty, gross looking Chinese restaurant that you know everyone always goes to. That kind of place. That's the one. I want one of those meals. Yeah, but I need a specific place. Uh, the one down the street. 
Okay. okay. I don't know. It's right. Whatever's on the corner that looks gross, and you're like, I can't eat there. It's probably, probably not healthy. Probably a lot of roaches. Yeah, yeah. You know it's delicious. It's got and a king or a queen in the name or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Or I want star. that one. It's a good old American to, uh, Chinese. For those of us who lived in South City, Panda Pavilion? No. Is that place still open? Panda Pavilion. Panda. It's in what South is Pavilion. Chinese. That's what you would have? Last meal? Me? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying, is it open? Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's Panda still Pavilion. Nice. Um... South nope, City. Permanently closed. Get out of here. Uh, Chippewa. Chippewa, yes. Said, uh, settle, like, settle no down one with, mentioned it on radio. <laughs> yeah, settle down like with a, delicious dumplings. That was like one of those kind of places, like dirty. Yeah. Looked like the signs kind awesome. of run down, dude. Dude. Yep. Yo, three and a half out of five stars. I mean, right in line with Fine. us. Uh, all right, one more moment. All right, let's go to entertainment reviews. Uh, let's see. So, growing up, me and my wife didn't watch a lot of movies, and especially what would be considered classics. Over the last couple of weeks, we started watching some, uh, including Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2, and Pulp Fiction. In the next couple of weekends, we've got Godfather and Scarface lined up. What are some classics that you guys would recommend that we should never miss? Thanks. Love the show. By the way, you can skip Scarface. It's total garbage. You know what, though? I almost think you have to see Scarface to realize it's total garbage. Okay, then watch Scarface. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's very hyped. Yeah. It's got a scene cool or two. And it's poster. okay. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's got a scene or two, but it's not a classic. The Scarface posters are better than the yeah. movie Scarface. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way better. Buy the this poster, house is really cool. Light it on fire. Right. And you save 15 I mean, bucks. Right. There are some scenes in there that are classics. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. But it's it, it's not the best movie ever, for, like, for sure. It's way overhyped. Mm -hmm. I think the cool scenes when those two guys are going up the stairs and he drops the big paint bucket down and it hits them. That's not the movie. Oh. <laughs> uh, classics. Uh, did they say Goodfellas? Cause Goodfellas is not on their list yet. Seems to be a big uh, gangster theme. What's their specific question? I kind of missed it somewhere. In Classic there. films. They both grew up not not watching films or any of that kind of stuff, and they're, they're getting into the ones that, you know, the don't misses. They, oh, you All haven't right, you seen give that? Give one. One. One? one? Oh, one. my gosh. Um, I know uh, somebody's going to say Citizen Kane, and I still haven't seen that. It's garbage. So I'm not going to say <laughs> You think it's garbage? <laughs> no, it's definitely not. not. No, it's Rosebud, not. get out of here. No, it's, not, it's not garbage. It's fine. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Um, oh, oh. man. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, wonder, I wonder if they've even missed, like, uh, Wizard of Oz and, like, the, re you know, the big, giant, everybody's seen them classics. There's a list of the 100 most classic movies out there, like TCM put it out years mm -hmm. ago. Shawshank. Yeah. What Christopher Nolan movie should they see? What, the Prestige. Ooh, all of them. Uh, yeah, I would say The Prestige. It's Prestige. not a classic, but The Prestige. Well, is, it's a is classic great. in your head? For sure. I, I go to The Crow. Great soundtrack. The Crow. Everybody loves Brandon yeah. Lee. Your friends will like that you've seen it. Great. Yeah. And listen, you get the AFI's top 100, you know, list, and that's all the... Cl but right. The Crow's not on there, and you love it. That's I a, that's love a classic it. Yeah. for you. It is. I'm going to echo Carlito's Way, because if you're going to watch Scarface, it's the it's inferior to Carlito's Way, which is also a Brian De Palma Carlito's follow Way up is with amazing. Al Pacino, it's, and Sean Penn Sean is Penn. great in it. It is a very, very underrated great great movie and i would say forbidden planet from 1956 scott Ooh, that's a cool one obviously no country for old men but i think if you're gonna dive deep and you haven't seen casablanca yet that's a really cool awesome movie and but that's but that's a bit like they'll say that on the list i want something that's not on the list. okay so then Scott's also list. the other classic that probably is not on the list it might be but cannibal the musical came out in the 90s that's a must see is it that's, funny that's the South Park Class guys. It's a classic. It, it, that movie is so stupid. What? Well, Honestly, what? That's <laughs> it's incredible. That's his favorite movie. That, you the you have to admit alone. That, you you have to admit, Scott. That movie's ridiculous. Well, uh, it's what, what it's, it's ridiculous. They have like a ten thousand dollars. You budget. want these you people think... to like? All right, now the Riz Show guys said, you know, I'm going to start with King Scott's movie. They get to watch Cannibal the Music, and they go, I'm not watching any I more take of it back. Movies. Mine is 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> oh, come Again, on. that's on a list. That, that is probably oh, on the I list. Mean, Would Grumpy Old Men be on that list? Grumpy Old Men is a great, yeah. great movie. Both I love No Country space for movie. Old Men is his movie. That's a great Scott movie. Which one? No Country for Old Men. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the ideal. And that might be that's on a list, because it is a really space great Balls. movie. No. No, that's good. Um, Spaceballs ooh, is your movie. Something else, no. But if I said Blazing Saddles, which would would be my suggestion, that's probably on the list of the greatest movies. All right, of I'll all give time. you Spaceballs. And falling, falling Down is a must. Great. Wow. 
And what's Wayne's the uh, Arlington Road? He says he Arlington says baseballs, and you said. Uh, and you said falling down. Yeah. I feel like the Scots are reversed. Uh, Arlington Road. You guys, we're in the upside down. Hey, by the way, I'm a sucker for all things space movie or uh, TV shows. And by watching this new um, uh, Numi Rapace show called Constellation, no. it's freaking sweet, dude. What is that on? It's on Apple TV+. Plus. It's like a full-on space, like, is it time travel? Is it ultimate, right. you know, is it uh, alternate universes? It's awesome. So it's Constant, what was it? Constellation. Oh. Check it out. All right. Well, thank you. I hope I hope we gave some suggestions. Uh, that you could take and put in your pocket. Good luck. <laughs> Have fun with that. Have fun with that. Cannibal the musical. <laughs> That's a classic, man. You're looking for haters there, Honestly, Scott. Honestly, Scott. I mean... <laughs> Somebody's going to watch that and come back and... It, 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 sky. A certain type of person likes oh, that movie. They're going to take some... It, it stems out of your tires. I've seen it. The sun's as warm. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. As a baked potato. That's not a really... That's not a movie everybody's going to watch, Does anybody Scott. get eaten in it? Kind yeah. Tune oh, in. Yeah. It's based on a true story of <laughs> Alfred Packer, and you could read all about it. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Ray Show presented the Fast Lane Sports after the break, 927. Wednesday, traffic and weather moon coming up. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in your NASCAR Cup Series tickets now at www.raceway.com. All things clear. Your point forecast, cold and windy. High of 39 right now. It's 27 at the point studio. How are you? Good, sir. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, uh, I'm doing well. We're uh, chugging along on this tour, and it feels pretty good. Yeah, well, for, first and foremost, all right, uh, how's the knee going, man? Are you, are you doing okay? And I would assume that Josh has done a lot of apologizing since this all went down. But are you doing all right? Josh is very sorry, and <laughs> my knee is still kind of oozing liquid. But we'll be fine. All It'll right. <laughs> it's very nice and i appreciate Free men's health boys let's talk about it maybe you're not feeling as good as you used to feel you're getting up there maybe you're in your 30s your 40s or beyond and you just don't feel like you got as much gas in the tank yeah it could be age or it could be something else you could be off you could have your hormones out of whack you could have a vitamin deficiency go to victory men's health they'll figure it out for you and they'll get you back on track it's easier than ever to go because they have now four locations instead of three. They have the town and country location that Learn King, Scott, and I all go to. There's one in O'Fallon, Illinois, one in O'Fallon, Missouri, and a brand spanking new facility right there in Sunset Hills, Missouri. So you got to be close to one of them, and don't wait. Schedule an appointment. Go in. Talk to the <clears throat> talk to the physicians. Get in there. Figure out what's going on with you. They'll test your blood down to a micronutrient level. They'll give you a customized treatment plan that is specifically designed for your body and its needs. They got all kinds of services, and it's a good hang, and it smells delicious in there. Nobody talks about that. That place smells great. You go in. It's relaxing. Everyone's cool. They treat you like family. For more information, go right now to VictoryMensHealth.com. That's VictoryMensHealth.com. And it's Riz. We are backstage at Point Fest and say hi to P.O.D. Hello, fellas. Hello, hello. What's up? What's up? I could hear him right now saying hello. Uh, welcome back to St. Louis. Welcome back to Point yeah. Fest. Yeah. St. Louis. St. Louis, indeed. In the house. You like it here? Oh, yeah. We've been yeah. coming here for many, many, many years. Any, uh, I want to say a few decades. Yeah. It's been a while. For any, sure. uh, any memories, special memories of St. Louis? Mm. Um, it is, but it's not a good one. We actually went to a, we were, we were touring in a van back in the day and we went to the movie theater by the train station. Uh huh. And it was like the only movie theater on the planet that's ever ran out of popcorn. Really? I didn't even think they yeah, had popcorn. They didn't have popcorn. Yeah. They didn't have popcorn. Like, and we, we were had like, a theater this is how no St. Popcorn. Louis does it, no popcorn. What's up with that? Our, uh, our radio station used to be down by that movie yep. theater, by yeah. the train station. Yep. And somebody got axed to death in front of that theater. Axed to death. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, there's no good memories right there. You know what I mean? And popcorn, that, axed. To death. Popcorn, no popcorn, and axed yeah. to death. I think there actually is is something that you know right. a connection there yeah. but uh that theater right now is still empty i think it's been empty for 15 years now Venue? I think, come on wow i you know think the, you know the downfall of that theater was no popcorn no popcorn i think the the poster for dr doolittle 2 is still hanging what a trip <laughs> <laughs> in in that in that movie theater but all in all you know what i mean we've been coming to, to st louis for a long time you know pops we always play pops, oh, pops stuff is like great that. well yeah. we love we exactly. love having you here yeah. i mean it's been a long time for pod doing your guys thing how have you survived all this time wow 
Well, you know, we take our vitamins. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> lots cardio. Of wa- lots of That's water, right. cardio. No, actually, you know what? Just uh, learning how to uh, get along and, 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 you know, our our friendships, you know, respect and all the years of touring the world together. We're either on a bus, train, or an airplane together. And... Um, just respect and like we're like brothers we mm-hmm. we get along and sometimes we don't and learning to accept each other for who we are and stuff like that i think that helps i mean there's not many bands that can actually say that the original core yeah is together and, yeah. and we are 27 years later that's a long time 27 long years 27 man. years yeah that is a long time i mean we've done a few oz i think we hold the record here yeah. Yeah. we actually yeah. hold the record for playing in this parking lot Huh. The main thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe you. How do you guys still make? How do you guys still stay motivated to to play the you know to play alive still or Youth of the Nation still or some of the really old stuff? Well, people people still come out to the shows worldwide. It's not just here in the states. And regardless if they speak English or not, it they, they across, sing yeah. it, and it just makes a connection, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and plus, I mean, there's no greater feeling than getting on stage and seeing a sea of people of that you do completely don't know on a personal level connecting with the music that you created and we're, sing along yeah, yeah we're definitely a, a positive band too so a lot of our um <clears throat> music i think has definitely helped people get through some hard times and a lot of times we get uh, people come up to us and tell us how much our music may have inspired mm-hmm. them to get out of drugs or yeah and it keeps on and it life, keeps you know on I mean? impacting like the youth like so the the parents of the parents now like they they love the message of our band, so they 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 pass it on down to to their kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Their kids grow up listening, and then it just keeps going. Yeah, and going, you know what I mean. So that's it's all. So cool it's a generational thing at yeah, this to point. See that I circle. Mean, yeah, yeah. It's a trip because at shows we'll ask how many people have seen us before, and you'll see hands. Good people in bad circumstances. If you need a car, now I'm talking about uh, you know bad circumstances financially. Nothing nothing too too bad, but like a you know a credit ding. So you need a new car, so you're thinking, all right, I gotta go to the car dealership, I'm gonna pick out something a lot, fine. Next thing you know, you are whisked into a finance office and you got some guy sitting across the desk from you talking a mile a minute and he's throwing papers at you. Sign this, sign this, sign this, sign this, sign this, sign this, sign this. And next thing you know, you're, you're sweating, you don't know what the hell you signed. Then, then you go, how much am I paying a month? Oh my God, <coughs> anyone can sell you a car it takes a pro to do it right. So my suggestion is getting in touch with my buddy, the Auto Loan Pro. Making a big purchase with finance, it's complicated, especially if you've had a hiccup with your financial situation. The Auto Loan Pro is going to help you get back on track. He works with over 50 different lenders to help you get the very best financing. Little to no money down, he's going to work his ass off to get you the best rate possible. Financing a car, there's only one thing to know. Choose the Auto Loan Pro. AutoLoanPro.com. AutoLoanPro.com. All right, here we are backstage, Way Back Point Fest, uh, with uh, the boys from Lit. Gentlemen, how are you? It's great to see you again. We're doing great. See Good to see you guys. Okay, uh, first and foremost, I hear that there is illness sweeping through the Lit camp. Can we confirm, deny? Gone. It's already 9.34. A lot of fun today, guys. Thank you. A lot of laughs. My, like, rib hurts mm-hmm. from laughing during Password. Good. <laughs> I almost walked off the show. <laughs> I said, I'm out of here. I took my headphones off. I was almost out the door. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate that. All right, let's do sports. All right, Moon, what do we got? Sports brought to you by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Call to book your bracket bash watch parties at DraftKings Sportbook now. And just like that, one goal was enough to do in St. Louis City SC on uh, Tuesday as it's one nothing loss to Houston Dynamo FC. Knocked it out of the CONCACAF Champions one Cup. one nothing, huh? Goodbye. Rafe. Whoa. What it's, a shootout. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was awful. The only thing that we didn't want was a 1-0 one, one nil loss. If and that's we, it. They're done. Yeah, because uh, so it was 2-2 it was two two on aggregate with the series, but the tiebreaker is away goals, and they scored when they were in St. Louis, and we did not score Season's when we were in over. Houston. Season's over, guys. Well, uh, good run. Thanks for the jersey, run, guys. Though. Thanks for the for thanks for the new away jersey. We'll <laughs> yeah. see you next season. It truly was a bummer. They were totally flat. Game. It was not. It was not good. Soccer. 2025 is our year, right, Scott? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Horrible possession. Hey, no creativity, and the defense is ball watching. But that's just my notes. 
Uh, Ball watching. We will do a, uh, a Soccer 101 episode on this and the weekend's matches uh, in the next day or two, so look out for that. Okay. Thanks. So the MLS, uh, now, okay, that, that was the tournament, CONCACAF, so that yep. doesn't count for the MLS. I understand that. It so. counts for City, though, and it, it, it takes a lot of potential revenue away from the team, from the city, all sorts of... I mean, that's, that's a huge tournament. It's basically like... Right. The it is the Champions League for our hemisphere. But, yeah, it's got nothing to do with the MLS, though, like as far as standings no. go. No. So when is the next MLS game? Saturday. Saturday. Here or... Uh, I believe that one's away. Let me let me look that up. Saturday's right. supposed to be good weather. Uh, you know what? Actually, it, it may be here. It's supposed to be 72, by the way, on Saturday evening. Nice. Uh, so if it was at home, that would be, Boy, that would be, be great for them. It's going to be one of those. Downtown, it's going to be, you got a Blues game at 5. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's at City Park against New York City. What time? 7.30. <laughs> you got the Blues game getting out, the soccer game starting. Good luck. Yeah, the following weekend, sorry, they're in Austin. Good luck. But this weekend, yep. <laughs> Get your exit strategy now. Exit strategy. Total bummer. Thanks to a 4-2 loss to the Jets on Tuesday night, the Blues find themselves falling back off of a playoff spot. Uh, the loss was the Blues' fifth in the past seven games as the momentum built by winning seven in the last eight was dissipated. Uh, the Blues finish a brief road trip with a game at Edmonton tonight when Jordan Bennington is expected to start for St. Louis. Wrestling legend, is it, is it Ollie or Ole or Ole? Anderson. Potato Ole. Ole. Ole Anderson. Good old Anderson, uh, who helped the uh, f form the Four Horsemen in the 1980s. Yeah, right, Ole. He passed Ole. He passed at 81 years old. Uh, the uh, WWE confirmed sad news Monday evening, remembering Ole. him in a statement as a prolific and decorated tag team wrestler who had a hard-nosed style and gruff demeanor. WWE extends its condolences to the Anderson family, friends, and fans. Cause of death not revealed. Uh, his 81, though, good run for a wrestler. For yeah. sure. His real name was Alan Rogowski. Began his career back in the 60s. Rogowski. He made his made his mark in the squared circle. In the 80s, he, Ric Flair, Arn, uh, Arn Anderson, and Tully Blanchard created the heel stable, the uh, Four Horsemen. Yeah, legendary group. Uh, let's see. In addition to his time on the map, Anderson also worked as a manager, promoter, and even an exec in the wrestling world. So he was a big, uh, big force there. A Canadian family has turned an unopened case of hockey cards into a multi-million dollar profit. Over the past month, serious hockey card collectors were in a bidding war on the Heritage Auctions website for an unopened case of 1970 to 1980 OPG hockey cards that a Regina family found in their basement earlier this year. So oh. earlier this year, they find this in the basement. Bidding closed on the weekend, and the winning bid came in at a whopping $3.72 million Man. USD. Wow. Nice. Or more than $5 million Canadian, which includes a $620,000 buyer's premium on top of the $3.1 million bid. Since the case is unopened, what's inside could not be confirmed, but it's ex expected that there's going to be several Wayne Gretzky rookie cards. <laughs> In the auction listing, the case was called, quote, the greatest unopened find of the 21st century. <laughs> 16 boxes, 48 packs, 14 cards per pack. That means there's 10,752 cards in the case. The buyer hoping that... Um, there will be as many as two dozen Gretzky rookie cards. And you know the gum is still good. <laughs> Dude, it's pretty wild. They, uh, in December 2020, Heritage Auctions sold a Gretzky rookie card for $1.29 million. Nice. So that's where, like, the, the real value is. If they're, if they're getting a half a dozen Gretzky cards in there, they're getting <laughs> half, a, half a dozen $1.3 million cards. Wow. I'm Moon, and that's your sports, because doing the bull dance, feeling the flow, working it, <clears throat> working it. And that is sponsored by... That is sponsored by Moritz Royce Jewelry, the official jeweler of the Rizzuto Show. So today's headline Hoosier story is not so much about somebody, it's about an event. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the inaugural Florida Man Games happened <laughs> in St. Augustine, Florida this past Saturday. And it was a huge success. The Florida Man Games, if you haven't heard of it, uh, it's basically the Olympics for Hoosiers, uh, Florida crazies. Uh, events included a mullet contest, a mud duel with poo noodles, and an evading arrest obstacle course <laughs> 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 where actual cops chased people down. Oh, that is awesome. Cops and gators. Uh, I don't know how many people showed up, but tickets cost around 50 bucks, and they were uh, expecting over 5,000 people. Wow. Uh, here is uh, a couple of the participants and the organizer chatting about it. Drinking beer, having fun with our friends. 
and then jousting somebody. Wild, messy, and hilarious. Alligators, nudity, and drugs. We couldn't get nudity and we couldn't get drugs. But we definitely got alligators out there, for sure. Man, honestly, because I love God and I love America, and I'm here to be a Florida man. <laughs> wow. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's my people. Uh, the only real issue was no women's division. The only event for women was a Florida ma'am. Pin up contest. <laughs> uh, one of the judges. We're at good. The, <laughs> <laughs> one of the judges at the games was Lori Fetrick, who played Ice on American Gladiators. Oh, nice. Oh, they went all out, man. She suggested they add actual events for the ladies next year or hold a separate Florida woman games. But there you go. Great success of Florida man games. That's today's. Headline Hoosh. Woo All right, one final break. We'll come back, wrap her up. How are you, everybody? Donnie Fandango, and I am very lucky. And I know I'm nervous because my hands are sweating like crazy. I got Pete and Sam from Chevelle. Gentlemen, welcome back. It's really great to see you. Hey, it's good to be seen. Good yeah. to be here, Donnie. Well, and it feels like there was a number of years where we were running into each other a couple of times a year, but now it's been, I would say, probably three years. And it feels Anton's Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Energy Experts, the saviors of my home for sure. Uh, I've had them in my house to uh, do a, a couple different things, installs, repairs, and I... Um, an energy audit. We found out exactly where my, my house was being inefficient. I also had a new water heater put in. And recently, I was just on the maintenance program, you know, just making sure, having it checked, having my furnace, my AC units checked by uh, Anton's to make sure everything was on the up and up. And there was a big old crack that could have actually started a fire or released carbon monoxide into my uh, into my house because it was an older furnace. It was like the OG furnace in the house. And I wouldn't, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know, you know, I wouldn't have ever known that that was there. Thank goodness I was on the Anton's maintenance program and, uh, and they were able to catch that. Really did save my home. And winter season's winding down. Make sure you take advantage of that end of season special. There's an end of season special going on. Anton want, wants to spread the love. Get a combined AC and furnace tune up for only 129 bucks. That's only going to last for what? One more day, maybe until the end of February. So 129 bucks. Anton's going to show your system some love with a full system tune up. Call them today. I cannot stress that enough. <clears throat> have it looked at by the best. That's Anton's Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Energy Experts. Online at AntonsHVAC.com. That's A-N-T-O-N-S H-V-A-C.com. It's Lux, and I'm joined by Josh from Bad Flower. Dude, what's up? Cheers. How are you? Cheers. Cheers. I'm doing so well. I'm so glad we're getting to chat here. What is that? You're going are... stickers on your cup. Oh my God, I got so many stickers. My vaccine sticker, I got my uh, cannabis sticker. I got all my good stickers. <laughs> nice. I'll hook you up with some stickers when you come here because we'll be seeing you in less than two weeks at Point Fest, which is very exciting. Wow. And then after that, you got a record coming out. So we got a lot to chat about today. I'm excited. Yes. So That's where great. are you in the world right now? Because I know you guys are currently on tour. Are you like in a bunker somewhere? No, <laughs> no, we're not on tour. Right? I mean, we've just been doing like weekend festivals. Well, you start shows. on the 10th or 9th, right? You start this week. Yeah, something like that. I'm a, I'm in a barn. This is where I live. This is my home. Still on the, far still on the farm. How's farm yeah. life? Farm life is great. I mean, it's been like very sparse. Like we've been doing shows over the weekend for the most part, or like just these random things. So it's go do a big drive, come back, spend like two days at home prepping for like the big headline tour, go leave again, try to come back and like get more stuff done. And like, it, it's, it's chaotic for sure. Um, say, so who's I'm not, keeping I'm not... track of Maggie? Who's keeping track of the uh, we have other, farm we have animals? Other people, other people here who are watching okay, this. Okay, good. Also, yeah. <laughs> And, and were, you able, were you able to um, do all of the recording for the new record from the barn? A lot of it was done here, yeah, in this room. That's exceptional. I mean, I, the last yeah. time we talked, you had just bought it. You were literally, like, moving in. Um, 30 had just come out. Uh, your birthday, July 2020 is when it came out. So yeah. happy belated 31st. You've now, you've now bypassed that. Hey, man, I'm still way above you, so, like... 
primary girl, right? <laughs> It's all down but I'm, just, I, I'm wondering if, uh, you know, the last year on the farm, getting to actually do some of the record there, what that was like as opposed to having to go into studios and whatnot. What, did, what was that like? Um, it's the same. Yeah, it's, it's the same for me because, like, e even when uh, when we started this record, we, I started it at the house I was living at in, uh, in California. So then we, like, went into a studio, a different studio in California to, like, track drums for a couple songs and then came back and did basically everything else there. And then I moved and the second half of the record got done partly in a studio in Nashville and then partly here. So it's kind of like split between four different places. All right, well, the new record is called This Is How the World Ends. We are in a uh, interesting time. For Unprecedented the world. time. <laughs> I have been trying to find ways around that as a radio DJ because the amount of times I said it over the last year, but yes. We're in unprecedented times. So what did the title, what does that title mean to you? Um, to me, the title is, it's less about like, you know, the pandemic and stuff like that. And it's, it's more about the way that we talk to each other now. And um, I don't know, it's a combination of things. Like, the, have, do you have the record? Have you heard it yet? I have sneaky copy of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, see, I never know. I've been doing all these interviews and I'm like, oh, there's this song. And they're like, ah, oh, I've heard it, I've heard it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's actually a lyric from, from the song Machine Gun, which is not about that at all. It's like a, it, that, that song is about something else. about mentality health. You know, the goal is to feel great. The goal is to feel like you're on top of the world every single day. You wake up, you got energy, you're feeling good, energy up, and you attack the day. Because you only get one life, man. man energy one life, is... one chance, one crack at February 28th, 2024. And you want to feel good, right? That's the goal. Energy up is really what it's all about. Exactly. You may be, you know, feeling sluggish, just not yourself. We all want to have, you know, all pistons firing. Yeah. You want to feel great? All cylinders. You want to feel great? You go to the people with the best resources and the best experience in men's health. And that's mentality health. Yeah. And listen, you could be not feeling great because, you know, it's the testosterone thing. Maybe you're looking for peptide therapy. Maybe you're looking for semaglutide. All you have to do is make an appointment, go down there, uh, get a blood draw, and let them customize a plan for you. Yeah, man. Very easy. Schedule that appointment. You can even do it online. Then talk to the board certified physicians, have that blood draw, and then get treatment. It's easy. Mentality Health. MentalityHealth.com. He is kind. He is supple. He is magical. He is stainless. He is sensual. He is raw. He is power. He is limber. We have another day left in this month of February, so take advantage of this because February truly is the love month. So wherever you call home, First Community knows that there's nothing better than being there with the ones that you love, especially this month because February is love month. And to celebrate, First Community is offering a special deal for people who are house hunting, so that's you. So if you apply for a home loan with First Community right now until you got till tomorrow, at the end of February, the cost of the appraisal will be on them. So if you close, uh, if you close that loan, and this could save you 400 bucks or even more. So whether it's your first time buy, uh, buying a home or you're looking for the home of your dreams, go over to First Community. That's who I used, and I'm so glad I went there to buy my home because they walked me through every step of the way, and they will you as well. And if you don't know anything about this process, they're the ones to go to because they're going to save you a ton of money, and they're absolutely amazing, and you actually get to talk to people. And it's, it's fantastic. And plus, there's one almost on Henny Street in St. Louis. So anywhere you're at, you're near a First Community. Swing by there. Ask them about their sweetheart deals this month. So go to firstcommunity.com. That's firstcommunity.com.
All right, first big summer show of 2018. We've got 30 Seconds to Mars and Wellesley Arms and Walk the Moon and k -Flay. How are you? I'm doing great. It's really great to see you. Uh, I got to tell you this, though. Uh, it kind of changed up the interview from where I thought it was going to go. Uh, I want to know about the fitness regime in which <laughs> that you have, how you do it out there when it's 105 degrees, because I need to. Okay, so we've just started something. We're calling it Witness the Fitness. Okay. Good, good branding, right? Right, right. We're off to a good start. Um, but basically, like, with with a tour like this too, we have a lot of downtime. Sure. So we're trying to we're trying to take like times when we could do bad things and do good things. Oh, very good. So you're just kind of keeping yourself busy more or less. Sort of. But then also doing something very good for your mind and for your body as well. Exactly, because I feel like one of the things there's like a weird cycle that can happen on tour where mm -hmm. you get locked into this like never changing like Groundhog Day thing. Sure. And this is a good way to disrupt that potentially damaging cycle. Absolutely so, but I mean, and also too though, I mean, you're, 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 you're kind of, uh, you know, able again to do something for the body as well as. Yeah, you know, and it's good for the mind. Yeah, yeah. It's very good for the mind. You don't do well with downtime, I'm assuming. Like as far as right. like, you get bored probably super easy. I'm I do get pretty bored, yeah. Well, what do you do like when you're not, when you're not working, when you're not touring, I assume, I know I, you, we've had this conversation before where I know you write a lot where you're always doing something, mm -hmm. but, but I would think downtime would almost be your enemy to a certain extent, just for you personally. You know what I mean? You probably don't dig it. <laughs> this is like a therapy session. Yes, yeah, yeah, um, I'm good at that. I have, <laughs> I have trouble with quiet. Um, so yeah, I'm working on that. I mean, yeah. for the most part, honestly, this last like couple of years has been pretty much work stuff, right? Pretty relentlessly, which is, I mean, I also just like making music mm -hmm. pretty fundamentally, so that that feels like it, it's always worthwhile, even if it's not going to be a song for me. If I'm just like trying to get better at guitar and recording riffs in my bedroom or something like yeah. that. Um, but I listen to a lot of podcasts. I read a lot. I do a lot of crossword puzzles. Yeah, yeah. Big crossword puzzle fan. Um, I turned to the crossword puzzle game here recently, which is because it's never sort of been my thing. Okay. But then my two youngest like really got into mm -hmm. it as the school year went on. So I found myself like actually buying like a crossword puzzle book at the grocery store in the checkout. Yeah. Now I'm only a couple in and I'm not very good at it, <laughs> but it's a nice little challenge for the brain. You know what I mean? Like I find yeah. myself like actually probably using parts of my brain I wouldn't be using otherwise. Yeah, it's we, we've been talking about this. Crossword puzzles are like an interesting skill, a, like a very specific skill. I was raised, I was sort of like trained by my father to do them and be good at them. Mm -hmm. um, and he, so I started doing like the New York Times Sunday puzzle, not like I needed help, but as a young kid. And you kind of learn like there's a language to crossword puzzles. Um, that you, you develop over time. So you, you kind of have to do them to be good at them. How, like a lot of really smart people aren't that great at crossword puzzles if they haven't done a lot of them. How young, like when you say you're doing this, like how young are you saying that you started doing it? I mean, well, he was always doing them, so I was around them, but I probably started helping around like, you know, seven or eight or something like that. I wasn't My very goodness. good. But, but still, I mean, yeah. but to be even to able to, to be a part of that process and help in any way, shape, or form at seven or eight is pretty stinking impressive. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah, absolutely so. I want to go back a little bit about the whole Grammy process. And I know you had a chance to talk to Lux mm -hmm. about this. Um, but I want to know, like, how do you find out about something like that? When you do find out, what are those first couple minutes like? And then I can imagine the calls that you're making after the fact have to be some of the most fun and exciting phone conversations and calls that you've ever made. Yeah, um, actually, Brandon, who's not pictured here, but he's standing in this room. Um, he, <laughs> he's, off, he's off camera, he's here though. Um, he, you called me. At like what? Oh, well, he tried calling. Oh no, Lauren. Right. Okay. So I live with like one of my best college friends um, in LA in a house, and so she came into my room, and I'd just gotten off tour, so I was like trying to sleep in a little mm -hmm. bit, or not even sleep in, just like sleep till nine or something. Right. Right. And she came into my room and was like knocking, and she's like, "I'm really sorry, like." You have to talk to Brandon. <laughs> so Brandon had tried calling me. I didn't pick up because it was on silent. Right. Because I'm not a monster. I have my phone on silent while I sleep. And, um, and he was like, yeah, you got nominated for two Grammys. Call your mom. And then you have to do a radio interview. <laughs> so I, <laughs> that, I did that. That I is that's just challenge. unbelievable because yeah. I mean, and I didn't know they. Were, I had, by the way, no awareness of them being announced or any. I didn't know I was submitted or anything like that. You know what I mean? I can't even. I just can't even imagine because then it's got to be even as you're telling these people, it's got to be kind of surreal. Like, wow. 
yeah. this is amazing. It's very bizarre. I mean, as someone who has always kind of had the like DIY indie yeah. background, you, I guess some of those like kind of like mainstream things feel like in a separate world. Absolutely. And so it was it was quite quite shocking. But I'm good, you know. But I also nice. think for the Grammys, I mean, I think it adds legitimacy when they're putting some really great artists on there that might be still bubbling a little bit underground. You know what I mean? Because totally. I think sometimes sometimes some of those awards like they don't at least even for me as a music fan, they just seem kind of far off. And so then when, you know, some of my people are yeah. nominated for those yeah. as well, it seems to kind of relate a little bit more. I want to talk about collaborations real quick because yeah. the one that you did with Robert DeLong is absolutely oh, phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Where does that come up? Where, where, how did that come up? Because the first yeah. time that I heard that song, and like a lot of times with music, and I talk about it with interviews a lot, like it, even if it's something that I like, it takes me a minute to really kind of grip it. With that song, that was not it. I was about halfway through when when Robert's rep was playing it yeah. for me that I was like, oh man, I can't wait to put this on the radio. Like, it's just so good. How did that come about? Thank you. Um, it actually came about very organically. So um, Rob and I are like neighbors. We, he lives like a couple minutes away from me. I can walk to his house. I actually, unbeknownst to myself, I was walking by his house. I just didn't know him yet. But um we we had gotten introduced and we we're like oh we should work on something but it was kind of like never nothing was happening yet or I was on the road or he was on the road or something but I was having a party at my house and so I invited him and everyone drank a lot um, of alcohol <laughs> at the party imagine that <laughs> imagine that at a fun party in my backyard and we were we had set up we were gonna write the next day just at his he has a studio in his garage um, and we both woke up like. Str struggling big right. time but we're both very reliable people so we both showed up we got breakfast both felt terrible um, and just went to his place and I, w I was like in a fugue state personally like I was like having some kind of like manic episode um, and I actually believe that hangovers are pretty creatively productive if, if you choose to view them with a positive lens sure um, and so we just like wrote that song in a couple hours. We were just like in a crazy state of mind. And I think we had, we'd had like the bonding experience the night before. And what's actually really cool is since that time, he and I have become really good friends, like actually. So it's amazing. Yeah, it sparked a real thing. When it's somebody that you know, but you don't like really know, mm -hmm. you know I mean, I would have, that has to make it a little tougher for when you're in the studio or something, right? Or, or is it the exact opposite of that? Because you, at some point, you right. got to be the one to be like, eh, I don't particularly like that part, or we need to redo this, yeah. or, or what have. I think there's, you know, and I've thought about this a lot because when you're, you know, as a solo artist, you know, I'm not part of a band, so it, the producer that I'm working with is often like that other person. So I'm always kind of thinking about that relationship and that collaboration. I think, I think there's some kind of like apex of uh, intersection of like familiarity and tension <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the, the two words are exactly but where where you do feel comfortable to say like no that's we can do better right. or you can do better in a nice way um, and also feeling Arch Madness, archmadness.com. That is the website to go get some deals on your tickets. Arch Madness tips off for the 30th consecutive year. Enterprise Center, Thursday, March 7th through Sunday, March 10th. The final weeks of the Missouri Valley Conference regular season. Something to keep an eye on. you got five teams within the reach of the regular season championship and the number one overall seed in Arch Madness. We get to watch at Arch Madness one of these teams earn its spot into the NCAA tournament. Here's just some of the deals. I've talked about the American Heroes package for U.S. servicemen and women and first responders. you got deals for you at archmadness.com. There's deals on Deuces Wild packages that get you two single-session tickets, two regular beers, two hot dogs, only 120 bucks. The Hoops Hooky Package, 35 bucks a ticket for sessions one and three on Thursday and Friday, March 7th and 8th. Uh, you can present the uh, Hoops Hooky coupon at the Enterprise Center box office to receive the discount. Check it all out at archmadness.com. Get all the details on the tournament and the ticket deals. Archmadness.com. All right, so... Uh, All right, that is it for us. Donnie Fandango is next. Uh, today's wrap-up is sponsored by... Sponsored by Jack in the Box. Jack wraps a little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence, only at Jack. All right, Moon, what is today's podcast title? The podcast title is Don't Knock a Shaman, Man. Ah, Don't yeah. Knock a Shaman, All right. Man. <laughs> that was a uh, late... 
That was a late title. Oh, a late title for late sure. Late title indeed. We had a good one today, but... All right, we got a lot of stuff to do after the show today, so uh, we got to get out of here. Moon, what else? Uh, energy up, man. I just wish you a good day today. I wish you good fortune. You know okay. what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah. Learn. Follow me on the socials, Learn versus Radio. Rafe. At I am Rafe Williams on all things pertinent. Scott. Everyone stay up very, very late tonight because at midnight, I think, I don't know what time, but what? on the 29th, the Free the Two SG's new album officially drops everywhere. So go check out Action Figures right. and stream it like day. crazy. It's going to be, uh, it's just going to change the world of music. Oh and we're the gosh. new Jelly Roll. It's pretty exciting stuff. Okay. Exciting. The, the new we're Jelly the Roll. Jelly. Yeah. All right. We're taking but, over, yeah, dude. I just read that. <laughs> I read Jelly that. Roll better watch his back. Are in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the reviews are in. <laughs> I read that in the Fenton Times, which is the new Rolling Stone. That's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> great report. The Do News had it. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Craigslist Freak of the Week, three brand uh, new ads for you. So listen to that. I will leave you with a selection from our team. Remember the day, which is brought to you by Hot Shots. St. Louis is home for blues hockey from Arnold, Missouri. Jake Bierman is our yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. Jake wants to hear this song. Here it is. Enjoy. We'll see you tomorrow. Dining X. Bye. Energy up. Let's bang it. It's Donnie Fandango for 105.7 The Point, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Dan Auerbach, the uh, front man of the Black Keys. And Dan, we got a lot of stuff to talk about with a single and a, and a new record coming, but I wanted to bring up a couple of things first um, that, that you have done in the last year that I just loved. And Two of the things specifically, the covers record that the Black Keys did, I just adored because it introduced me to a bunch of songs that I didn't know, and I loved that. And then also, too, I know you produced the Robert Finley record, and I loved that one, too. I didn't know anything about that man until, you know, I, I saw that you had, had, you know, had worked with him. So 